when you want to get off that darkest ground the gravity pulls you straight down earth from a bird's eye view you should grow feathers and see this too Back from the dead. I'm 
and hopefully everything's working. Hello everybody, we've got a brand new light. I'm here with Nathan. Your thing did fit in there, so you can always find him even though it is a lowercase i, not a not a straight line there, but it was a nice little bracket. It looks good. Nice. First turn from Geek Fortress. Round one is about to start because we're fixing some things and getting this brand new yeah, thing going. Now everything is powerful. Uh, that doesn't sound like the this most doesn't interactive. Sound interactive at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna find a match for you guys. All okay, right. and apparently someone's finding a match for us. So we have a newish co-host today. Day. Yeah, we've uh, we've cast him before, but never a full tournament, I don't think. I no, filled in. You showed up when I was on my own. Yeah, and you happened to be in the chat and jumped in and, and saved yeah. my life. Quite metaphorically. Not much of a superhero, okay. but I'll take it. <laughs> but you did, um, Karen Green. See, we didn't even get the HD camera yet. By the way, Eric, thank you so much for the for the host. But we haven't even got the HD camera. That's showing up tomorrow. But we did get some studio editing. Well, wow. annoying. <laughs> Sorry. I told you. Now we're on. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that you didn't know. I didn't pay you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just said something. I did. <laughs> he's just, I guess he's used to be playing all the time. So. Ah, well. So, have all kinds of fun there. It is going to be four rounds, and I cannot wait. Me neither. We're going to have some fun. Oh, absolutely. So, you were one of the... Uh, a dedicated Fortnite who showed up to LA with us. I did show up to LA. You had some fun. You showed up with a sweet I deck. I had some fun. Now, they might know you as the player who has been playing what recently? In Modern or like <laughs> In Modern. <laughs> uh, I was playing Brain in a Jar and then I'm going back on King Cord more recently. But you were our Jess guy Brain in a Jar player. I was. Brilliant. It was doing all right. It was doing... But uh, not so much at GPL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, had, it hit a rough patch. It had some very interesting... I mean, at least you had... Your Alex versus Warp World. Okay. Oh, my God. Is this Donovan? <laughs> I don't know. No, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Okay. okay. Who's on which side? <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're getting seated. You compete. Right. So who's right. on... Is it James on uh, Elsie? Uh, no. It's, it's is it Logan? No. Is it, is it a new guy that we don't know? Just... I don't know guy's name. Okay. Apparently David can't remember the name and doesn't want to go find out, so we might send Nathan. <laughs> no, I, sent, I sent David. Is Wayland. Wayland. Okay. And he is on... So our first round, I've, I don't really know what to expect from this. Uh, we have got we have got Warp World on the left, going up against Elves in the hands of Waylon, and uh, Hold, I'm expecting some goodness. I'm expecting some sweet things to. Of course, Coleman. Of course, he gets out of the booth and shows up at that. Sadistic, it's great seeing you. I am back on this side of the uh, screen. I was over there last time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm anyway. When so you're only here like once, this is the side. <laughs> this is the side. <laughs> this is my side. All right, Dick, uh, Dictator, it's good to see you. Uh, Noble Hierarch, it's good to see you. Peter is in the room. Let's get started. We'll see you down there. All right, and these players are underway. So, the Elves deck. I think we've seen it in Wayland's hands before. Um, this one, if I remember correctly, which means, of course, that we can't hold it. To, hold me to it. Is a little bit in the unconventional side for the Elves deck. I playing Beck and Call? No, no, that's Logan. I think this is the one that he was running. It's almost a little bit closer to a legacy port um, than it is okay. like a modern okay. elves to where you're you're running some of the more one drops and doing it'll just look a little bit different yeah i felt like i should ask about the beck and call because i'm kind of a fan uh beck and call <laughs> is a pretty sweet <laughs> card a little different combo when i use it but <laughs> absolutely now coleman on apparently at war world or world which i kind of want to keep <laughs> even though it's just war world i kind of want to keep it too <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a like a little swirly like a warp Thank you very much, JJ Ness. I have got that fixed. Sad, is it Sad LK, Sad LK 2004? It's great to see you. And that should have been fixed. Nettle Sentinel, you're going to be pretty excited. Dictator for Life, what does the Warp World deck do? You might as well just pull up the cards. It's let's a pull up, lengthy. Okay, let's pull up the card. Because, frankly, we have no idea what this deck is going to do. I know what Warp World does, but it's, it's, it's two words, I believe. Um, Easier said than done to explain it all. Coleman has we'll mentioned once or twice the fact that he was playing, potentially brewing with the card. I have 
no idea what's coming in from so this. So I'd assume he somehow floods the board, and then he gets to shuffle all his permanents in play, and then essentially put that many cards from the top into the field. I would assume he's not playing too many instants or sorceries otherwise. No, I'm going to be so curious to see what happens here, because even like enchantments can come in afterwards, so possibly it's just going to be like... Could be a token stack, actually. It'll be interesting, too, because uh, Wayland's going to have a lot of permanents as well. Yes. And going for, like, giving new permanents to an elves deck seems uh, uh, inadvisable. Yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> but uh, I have no idea what to expect from this deck. I. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends just on uh, how big Coleman's bombs actually are off of Warp World. Like, yep. I don't know what he's playing. Coleman doing the better Elves deck impression right now with an Arbor Elf, though, with Waylon dropping down an Essence Ward in turn one. Going up to 21, but uh, the interesting thing is Waylon might have no idea what he's up against, and he's got to be thinking he's up against an Elves deck right now. Maybe Mono Green Devotion, something in that realm? Yeah, my guess would be uh, there's a there's two different styles of decks I see online a lot with this, and uh, one of them's more of like a Tooth and Nail style, mm -hmm. and uh, the other is... Uh, stuff like land destructions, and as they play like Blood Moon, mm -hmm. and so they try to have uh, Utopia sprawls and stuff, kind of combo off with that in a sense. I'm really looking forward to. Oh, is that a Lotus Cobra too? That's what it looks like to me. Tell me we're gonna fetch. Tell me we're gonna fetch and go for a three drop. Do this for me, Coleman. I don't see another land in his hand. Let's I, see. Well, that's a. Uh, yep, there is a fetch. Oh yes. Oh, we're floating mana. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting excited right now. <laughs> this is so cool. So, he is going apparently to 18. Uh, uh, down to 18. Wayland. Yeah, he's had two fetches. Up to about, 20. Right? 23 sounds correct, too. Yeah. Three. This is where was the first creature played. Yeah. Oh my. Super attacker, it is great to see you. We've got two mana floating for Coleman. Is that in a... I think that's the one that searched for a legendary thing. No, 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 no. Gator 32, it's great to see you. I don't know what that card that's is. That's one of the ones that, like, you put it onto a land, but I can't remember the name of it. If you just want to... Oh, is it's it... It's an like enchant land to make it produce extra mana. overgrowth one? Just go ahead and ask him the name of really it. What's the name of that card? Brutal Brown. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's what we thought. We are just, you know, spelling and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brutal Ground. <laughs> Uh, enchant land. Oh my goodness. So whenever it's tapped, you get an extra additional mana. Someone in chat knew it. Dictator for life. He's on top of it. Clearly, that's how they elected him to be a dictator for life. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh yeah, Nathan is super smooth. So. We have got... Now, see, this is one of those unconventional elves that he's running. Oh, uh, I think that... Isn't that the one where another one comes with it? No? I don't I know. I don't Cards think that that's a join and delete. Apparently I only know regular... Apparently. <laughs> 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 that and uh, Just Guy Brain in the Dragon. You know that list. Yeah, yeah. So Waylon dropping down a Lanoir elf as so I well. I that one is. And then... I don't want to be that guy. If it becomes time. relevant. <laughs> if it becomes relevant. That Someone in chat will figure it out. Exactly. And we have got four mana for Coleman currently, and are we going to be dropping down? Is that a Siege Gang? No. Is that really? I can't tell either. That's totally a Siege Gang commander. Yes! The promo one or whatever they have? <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's Nissa's Chosen. Oh yeah, it is. He's running Nissa's Chosen. So that's a 2-3 two, for 2, which means that it's probably... I mean, do you think he's running Nissa then? I don't know what what does Nissa's Chosen do again? Uh Nissa's Chosen is a two three for three. It has no no abilities. Um well it might have some other things, but I remember that Nissa's card itself searches it up. Oh, and when it would be put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, I would assume it's mostly there for the devotion. Ooh, could be if we're seeing like an elves devotion thing. Yeah, kind of? we already see the Nick though, so uh the Siege that'd be my guess. is looking pretty nice right now. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Gets enough, and actually, I think he's sacking one of the goblins now. Um, so, puts in the land, uses the red and the lotus cobra to throw one of these goblins to take down the essence warden. Yeah, and these these are going to be really nice against elves because a lot of their uh, the creature base isn't necessarily strong by itself. They just everything feeds off of like one or two cards. So, oh yeah, very able to take out certain targets. Very centered around a. There's Speak and you shall see. So. <laughs> Nissa joining the party. I am I am beyond thrilled right now. 
So Nissa Ravain, plus one, search your library for Nissa's Chosen, and put it onto the battlefield. Uh, with a pl another plus one, if you gain two life for each elf that you control. His life total? Possibly going to be getting out of hand over time. Because <laughs> we are currently up to 33. And the other option is uh, that you search for all the elves in your library and put them all into play. Yeah, I didn't uh, think about that line of play at the beginning of the game, but I guess that works. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Interesting. This is this is gonna be. Sw I love seeing Siege Gang Commander out. Like, man. Yeah, a lot of cards here you don't see too often, so it makes for an interesting uh, matchup. All right, and we are gonna be adding a total of six mana off of this forest now because of the Arbor Elf. So you should be able to play Warped World next turn, I believe. Oh, that's so cool. Because he had to pay for the Utopia Stroll. Sprawl this turn, so he didn't have the mana. Now, one thing that's really cool about this deck that I'm noticing is that it's really based around getting some tokens out for the value off of Warworld, mm -hmm. but he's doing it in a really cool way. Sea Screen Commander and uh, the Mom and Pop Thopter Shop, both extremely cool utility things that create those plus those uh, tokens, while at the same time acting as removal against some of these more aggressive decks. Yeah, it definitely fills a lot of uh, roles in this deck. So... I can I can appreciate it because it's he's generating a pretty good just value game plan against these elves. And so, oh, absolutely, JJ Ness. I I can't even imagine like it must be miserable to go up against this with Jun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wouldn't be too happy about it if I was Jun unless I had uh, something like sideboard Night of Souls betrayal or something. But look at but the game game one, not so much. Are we up to forty three life right now? It looks like it. <laughs> Oh my god. Coleman's being generous and uh Coleman's got some work ahead of let him. Let him get some life early on. <laughs> so that is a swing for four. And uh he has the key okay, just gonna be taking it. I think Coleman is planning on casting this next turn and yeah, just seeing what happens. Off of the warped world. And the cool part is that all of these token producers, if they get to come back down, he's gonna be again producing more tokens. Mm -hmm. So I'll be really curious if <laughs> if Willen puts in an essence warden off of this warp world. <laughs> The amount of triggers that he's going to get are going to be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and there's stuff like uh, Shaman in the back if he's running that. I doubt it because he's going green devotion more. But <coughs> you never know because it seems like it would be good to ultimate Nissa and hit that. That would be So something like that could uh, just be game as well. Oh my goodness. Are we going to see Coleman go for the warp world? Yeah, I'd and like he... to see Coleman attack first in the air at least. Um, getting a couple points of damage, I mean. It all adds up, even though his opponent's at 43. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Oh, my goodness. I am I am just in awe right now. The other problem with that in Dreams of Dragons is that there's no way to demonstrate a zero in there, except maybe a ten, but I don't know. Right now it's manageable. If it gets any higher, then we'll have to do something like that. Um, so yeah, I would have liked to see it. Unless he's got out things with haste, you would think he would want to hit with the Thopters first, at least. I think he does. I think he might be running, like, Hellraiser Goblin or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, to Gogans, we are actually discovering with you how this deck... How many is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I believe. To his, op side. to his opponents, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, I don't think Planeswalkers actually count. I believe oh, no, you're right. was uh, printed before Planeswalkers were a thing. I think that it's equal to the permanence that you had, but you don't get to put in Planeswalkers. Oh, yeah, yeah I believe you're correct. I yeah. You're correct. But um, this is looking like a pretty interesting... <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I like that it's, uh, it's not a one-sided warp world, so it can make it interesting. No, no, this is symmetrical effect, as always. <laughs> So, welcome to anybody just joining. We're seeing, apparently, David got us quite a spicy round one. Yes, he did. Warp World versus Elves. And uh, each player right now shuffling their <laughs> their board states, all their permanents, into their library. And then they're going to be uh, putting some more back into the game. <laughs> yeah, we'll also see if uh, this three man is relevant. I know he can throw stuff, at least, with it. He would at least... Uh, I'd like to see, you know, if he gets, like, the Essence Warden. Maybe you let one of the th things resolve, uh, the token producing mm -hmm. triggers, and then with the other one still on the stack, remove that essence word. And just to prove it, 
if he yeah. has nothing else to do, it could end up saving him, you know, preventing Waylon from gaining an additional, maybe upwards of like 10 life. I do have a question. Okay. I don't know if you know the answer to this or not. I, I uh, of course I do. Which player, answer. it probably says on the card, but uh, doesn't one player resolve the warp hold first? Each player puts all artifact creature and lands revealed this way into the battlefield, then does the same for each enchantment. So. Uh, you have mm -hmm. Apnap to where, like, if you have abilities going onto the stack, then you have the active player, then the non active player. Mm hmm. So, okay. But I was just thinking for, like, Essence war Warden purposes. They are all coming in at the same time, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I think it's just that the triggers um, yeah. jump onto the stack in Abnap, but as far as, like, resolving it in a different order, I think it is the same order. So we are revealing... Looks like there's a Huntmaster as well. Eternal Witness? Is that that Lotus that is Cobra is going to get so much mana. Yeah, well, oh yeah, because he gets all the lands <laughs> coming into play. Is that an Elvish Piper? Uh, I see an Elvish. Oh, no, okay. Visionary, it looks like a Harbinger. I can't tell if that's the Nissa's uh, that's a Nis that we saw earlier. That's a Nissa's Chosen. chosen. And, and, an uh, and an Elvish Harbinger as well. Yeah. Okay. So he'll draw a couple cards as well. So, this is awesome. <laughs> Tireless Tracker, Eternal Witness... He's, he's going to get so many clues and have tons of mana to crack. <laughs> oh, yeah, because all the lands hit. Yep. Yes. And then the enchantments go off afterwards, so that mountain able to produce an extra mana right now. And now we have got... This is so cool. And he will have the Kessig Wolf Run. Does that get paste as well? There's that. The Kessig what? The Kessig Wolf Run. Does that get paste? I can't remember. Um, I don't... I think it's just, just, just trample. trample. Yeah, I think you're thinking of... Um, You've been playing against Mason uh, too Slayer much. Slayer Stronghold. You've been playing against Mason yeah, too much. Yeah, I have been. Okay, it's just trample. <laughs> um, Soul Dragonbane, it is good to see you. So he, Coleman's actually going to have to draw into something, or else he's dead, I think. Or yeah. I guess he can he can turn a witness. Oh, no, everything gets shuffled into your library, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because the uh, Elvish Champion's giving all of uh, and the Elvish Wayland Archer. stuff um, Forest Walk. Oh. Interesting. And he does have a forest. <laughs> yes. Oh, he did get an Ewit. He could technically warp world again. Yes, he could. And he has the mana to do it. The clues. The, cl the clues do count. The clues count as permanence. Yep, because they're. We uh, could just see him chain together warp worlds. <laughs> I, I, I want to see the chained warp world. He has to. That's it looks the like he's going to. He definitely yep, he eternal witnessed it. Yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is so cool, and this just feels like a. Red crazy version of his uh, taking turns. <laughs> Look at all the clues, Nathan! Look at all the clues! Uh, it's dirty. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's like Encyclopedia Brown! I wonder if he just if he draws off of any of the clues or if he just goes straight warp with all of them. I think he'd just rather have the stuff on the battlefield. Oh my god. He, yeah, he just has to keep hitting a tireless tracker, right? And this essentially just keeps going. <laughs> Until he wants it to stop, until he gets all his permanents. As long as he can, but he's gonna have so many permanents at this point that the fa odds of him missing a Tylus Tracker and That's an Ewit yeah. and a Lotus Cobra, slim. Oh my yeah. goodness. <gasps> oh. Well, and he's, he gets to float so much, so he can just keep warp worlding until. Because as long as he keeps getting clues, tokens, right? He just builds and builds and builds every time. <gasps> this is so cool. I can't handle this. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> What happens if you have more permanents on the battlefield than cards to draw? You don't actually draw them, so you'd have an empty library, and hopefully Coleman has some way to give him haste. He's, he definitely does, or a Banefire or something like he that. He has to he have can, a Perforos in there. Yeah, he's he's got to have something. Oh, a Perforos. There's a, no way he doesn't, yeah. A Perforos would be, if there's not one in there, then we're going to have to have some words with him about mentioning that. Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm going to get this list. I can tell you right now, I am getting this list. So how many? <laughs> so I think I think Waylon, I don't I don't think he's playing Shaman of the Pack, but that would be a win still for him, right? Possibly. Oh, because actually he might be just shy of permanence, but if this is gonna get keep cast, like if it, yeah. it, it keeps getting cast, then it, that's definitely potential. Well, he would he would need to get probably a Shaman of the Pack, and then it, also actually, not have two of them, not have Coleman die or hit two of them. If yes, hitting two of them would would. Yeah. Do a pretty good job of it. Yeah, but depending on what it would be, he could also just win the next turn, so Coleman might still have to keep going anyways. <laughs> I love everything about this right now. 
Uh, correct it wrong, but instants can be used after blockers are yep. declared. Yes, super attacker. That is correct. Whew. Oh, let's see, you just went to a game today, declared you were attacking the person, uh, blocked, you used an instant, your third, three, uh, that is, that is allowed, you, there is a, basically, declare blockers happens at the beginning of the declare blockers thing, but before going to the, con like, the actual damage, the Yeah, they are separate steps. Between that one, priority is passed. So, you, uh, you do have the ability to cast an instant there. So... Yes, you, uh... I wouldn't think that would be a disqualification anyways. You are still a super attacker. You were not a misunderstanding attacker. Yes. Huh? See? I, I, play, like I played it with their name a little bit there. But that's pretty incorrect. Huh. It, either way, there should be a point in time after blockers where he should have priority before damage is dealt. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what happened, but he should at least have a chance to do it. It didn't sound like he did from his um, dis description of the event. Mm hmm. But, um, I don't know. That strikes me as unusual. Hello to the 70 people in here. My name's TJ. Uh, Nathan slash Harry. And we, which one you, would you prefer? Actually, I usually go by Harry. Okay. Then we'll start doing that one. We'll switch but it. I don't really care. I kind of just go by whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Enough people call me Nathan. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. Oh my! Two tireless trackers and a thrag tusk <laughs> and two lotus cobras, a P and Kieran Nalar. Oh my goodness! Everything is right about this. <laughs> uh, it won't be decreasing as long as he hits tireless tracker because he'll get. A, I think he was talking free. about Wayland. For every instant that oh. Wayland hits, his board shrinks slightly. Oh, okay. There. Re okay. <laughs> I missed part of the conversation. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. But uh, welcome. We're starting from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington, doing some modern. This is absolutely absurd. Yeah, Wayland doesn't look too excited about it. <laughs> Probably wasn't too, uh, too sad about the first one, but the second one. Did we get the Eternal Witness? We did get the Eternal Witness. So we get ten clues, we're cracking some more. I mean, more. honestly, he could just, he has so much mana, too. He could probably just search through his deck with the clues and hit an Eternal Witness and play it, too. Oh my goodness! I'm so beyond myself right now. Are you me? Because I'm beside myself. <laughs> I am. I am, in fact, TJ. <laughs> So, this deck, what is the win con here? We are hoping for a Perforos, but we haven't actually found out yet. A one of Perforos seems like the right uh, card. It seems really... I mean, you could even go for an Impact Tremors, really. Yeah, there's there's a couple options, but with the Tireless Tracker, you're going to get all the way through your deck, I would think. Oh, no, never mind. The enchantments would come in after everything else. So you would want to do the creatures. But Perforos counts as a creature as well. I, yeah, I believe so. Oh, no, well... Well, yeah, because you could stack it, essentially, right? So that would be... Oh, I don't know exactly, but... This is, uh... How it works, but it's a, cre it's a creature if he has enough devotion. But I don't know how it exactly interacts if he has devotion to the creatures with the, um, warp world. I'm so excited right now. We'll find out. So... Huh. He just declared... A win with Huntmaster the Fell? Yeah, you get to choose when you put it in. Yeah, he should be at 18 as well. He's been getting off of these Huntmasters. Not that it's uh, necessarily relevant at this point. Yeah. No, I was talking about for Impact Tremors when I was talking about yeah. the enchantment. Yeah. No, this is not a scoop. This is another resolved warp world. <laughs> so we're doing it again. Except how many permanents do we have this time? There were at least 10 clues. No, I'm sorry. There were like... There's two clues. tireless trackers. I'm not even sure. So there might have been 14 clues, plus all of the lands, plus the amount of creatures and the tokens from the yeah, PC and the Yeah, the Master that time. I think he had the Siege Commander as well. Oh my... I'm gonna go with a lot. Oh my... goodness. <laughs> I, would, I would assume <laughs> he finds something that he wants. So he, yeah, like I said earlier, he's just gonna draw his whole deck if he hits that first tireless tracker. And, but he just needs some kind of way to win with that. Like as long as he can still win with that. 
Um, well, he has to have a win con, right? It's, it goes infinite. Eventually, he's going to keep being able to warp world until he has more permanence than he has a deck. And then he's got to have a win con. Oh, my. There's no way he doesn't, right? So if you're brand new to the stream, and this isn't guess, the reason to hit the follow button, then I don't I know guess, what is. I guess, technically, you can just keep going forever and just uh, use Siege. Uh, commander or Because you have so much you have, mana. You'll end up getting essentially infinite mana. So does the Perfos just act, become redundant at that point? Yeah, you're probably you, not, you're oh, we haven't seen it for Perfos. probably not even running it for Perfos. Because once you are doing your entire deck, yeah, then every just, time that you resolve it, you're absolutely correct. You're getting extra mana. And you float the extra mana? Yeah. The only, and like throw the tokens when you still have enough to actually get the entire permanent Yeah, it's just it's interesting. It makes sense, though. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Because yeah, for Frost there's not really any need. You don't need to build up. You just do it all. Yeah, and then you just uh, like you you demonstrate the loop and say you so. Just, uh, you just keep warp building, right? You're just yeah. always gonna have essentially more permanence than. Uh, technically, it's not a yeah yeah. It reminds think... him of Infinite Turns. That's why I said this deck feels like a Coleman deck because he plays the uh, <laughs> the taking turns blue deck. Oh my. Goodness. Essence Warden is a pain. Oh, I can <laughs> has to keep track of his life total with this. I think once Coleman gets to the point of demonstrating it, that we're going to see Waylon pick up the cards. Yeah, and Col but Coleman's he has actually gonna started have going for this. Essentially, infinite life as well. Be yeah, Thrag off of his Thrag Tusks. Things. This is the infinite coolest. Infinite draws, infinite life, infinite damage, <laughs> infinite mana. Oh. My goodness. So, as long as this chain, like, once he demonstrates the entire deck, then this is just... I think he's demonstrating the win right now by point yeah, two. Yeah, he that should be explaining right it. So... It's not actually <laughs> beneficial for Waylon to go to time at all, because he still has to win two games to one. That's only beneficial if you won game one. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when I used to play Lantern Control. People would stay in the game way too long. And it's like, you're only hurting yourself, because... <laughs> We'll go to game two, and I'll be up again. <laughs> oh, man. We were the worst at being Lantern Control players for a bit. Tapped Sphere, we just saw a Warped World deck that... So what is the loop? The loop is that once you have enough permanence through your clues and your tokens, well, you can basically... I think you should go through each card. I don't know if you saw all the cards, like Tireless Tracker's how he gets the clues sure. and stuff. Let's start with Tireless Tracker. So initially, you cast a Warped World. Mm-hmm. And then you get permanence from your uh, from your library into play, and there are three main cards that are that he's looking for. Four, uh, let's say four. One of them is yes. a tireless tracker, which gives you clue tokens, so a, a token producer mm -hmm. for each land that you put in. Two is other token producers, so siege gang commander, uh, P and Kieran Millar. That's why I interrupt you real quick. The clue stones also count for more uh, yeah, permanence. Warp, yeah, warp world permanence. Yeah, as well as possible draws. Um, and then uh, you're looking for a Lotus Cobra as a way to generate mana off of those lands. Even though the lands are coming to play and you can generate that, it gets you a near infinite amount of mana as well. Yeah, as long as you get to keep going off, you keep going off and uh, you finish the loop with Eternal Witness, and Eternal Witness keeps getting back <coughs> to the Warped World. So eventually you'll be able to have more permanents that, than are cards in your deck, and you're just going to keep loop and putting every card into play. Uh, over and yes. Over again. And then as your permanents grow each time through those token producers, whether it be clues or... Mm -hmm. And then eventually you have your entire library coming in each time that you cast it. You're never drawing a card. Mm -hmm. So you never actually lose to that. And you just eventually, with your infinite mana, get them with the tokens. That's brilliant. I love it. Well, you can, uh, yeah, you get them with the uh, King <laughs> Karen or the Siege. Oh, man. Uh, is Relic a good sideboard against this combo? How about Crafting's Cage? Relic uh, can stop them possibly for a turn. You have, you have to hope that they don't have it, but yes, it's Rel Gra uh, Graf Digger's Cage will not stop this. It's interesting, too, because um, he will have the Eternal Witness come into play. Like Everything's kind of like after. Mm -hmm. so, um, let's see here. Turn with Noble Hierarch, we are actually working on getting stuff online. But um, we had we have not yet. However, if there's anything that you're looking for specifically, message the store owner either at facebook.com slash geekfortress or at geekfortressgames.com and ask. And if he has it, he is more than willing to uh, to go for it. And as far as that, actually, eventually he'll have more permanents than there are cards in his deck. Mm -hmm. So he will be able to continually always get every permanent in his deck, which means that he can guarantee yeah, getting because, the Yeah, because so the tireless trackers produce clues when it comes out, so his permanent count is always 
going higher than it was to the first warp world. Mm -hmm. So it gets bigger and bigger, and he'll end up getting more and more mana every time. Um, and he just has to have an eternal witness. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Uh, Relicking in response to eternal witness late in the combo will exile all four warp worlds. Uh, that is true. That is true. And if they don't have the infant, you just have to have the relic in play. But definitely works. Yeah. Um. Oh. I mean, it cuts down on him even if you use it a little. Early. Does Graft Digger's Cage actually? Because the Graft Digger's uh, Cage Graf is Digger's already sweet. in. Because wouldn't the creatures also already in play by the time that the Graft Digger's is in play? Because it's either being shuffled away. Uh, it depends on the order. Like it gets uh, shuffled in, but otherwise. Graft Digger's Cage does work, I believe, because you put artifacts in first. Um, and then creatures won't be able to enter from the library. But I thought artifact, creature, and land revealed onto the battlefield, and then you do the same with enchantments. So I think the creatures and artifacts are entering at the same time. So, does that keep the, them? I was under the impression that it would hit in the order that its card is worded. Interesting. Technically. So... And Graph Digger says cards can't enter from your library. But like they would already be cards. in play. Because yeah, if the Graph Digger is, is in play, it either got shuffled away if it was out before... Or if it's out, then all the creatures are also already out. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually—I don't think that it would, but yeah, I—I I don't. I think it's yeah. I don't that's know for weird. Sure. <laughs> and it's, it would depend on if it was in play before versus like coming off of the warped world and stuff. And I, I don't know. Off the warped world is that's, a little different. Yeah. That's weird. So a turn one, uh, Lanoir, uh, or yeah, Lanoir elf into an Azuri for Waylon. A much better start to this time. Coleman leading off with an Arbor elf. Uh, he is looking at the potential of ramping pretty decently. If he goes for that fertile ground right now, he'll be able to produce another two mana and start building up that way. Surgical extraction would be excellent against this. It would be absolutely. I still think even with surgical extraction, Coleman has a decent deck versus Waylon because of all the uh, tokens he can throw around. That's true. Absolutely. But at the same time, Wayland gains a lot of life off of certain cards as well. So, oh man, that is fantastic! I like how both players' basic game plan is to put all their permanents into play. <laughs> he, had, he tries to ultimate Nissa, put all the elves into play, and then unfortunately just got outdone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! By an, by an eight drop. <laughs> So hello everybody, we're watching Warp World go up against elves, and uh, we definitely got an interesting one for round one there. Um, super attacker, play what you want, make sure that the game is fun, ask a lot of questions. That's the best way to get better at the game. It's hard to give a lot of answers in, during, while we're doing the commentary. Yeah, in modern, uh, it definitely, if you play the same deck over and over again, it rewards you very well. <sighs> Man. Interesting format. I mean, just magic in general yeah. definitely is a... <laughs> oh man! Doesn't Elixir of Immortality on a Warp World flip beat this deck? I don't think so. I don't believe so. He would shuffle before or after, right? Either way. I mean, not not to my knowledge. So we have a Huntmaster of the Fells coming down. That's gonna be a great tool for just taking down the Lanowar Elf if needed, or any other utility creature too. Mm -hmm. um, Coleman ha just has to pass the turn if you ever really needs to remove something. Yeah, it's interesting too because at no point. Can you interrupt the middle of the warp world necessarily? Um, because it's all uh, one card and it's not targeting different things or anything. It's kind of like Tasker's ability. You can't try to exile something after they use Tasker's uh, flip two cards. Yeah, that's. It's still part of the same cost or whatever. Interesting. Terminal Nova Hierarch, I won! Haha! <laughs> But thank you, everybody, for helping us work through that. <laughs> that was quite the, uh, quite the problem. Yeah, so I don't have enough experience with this deck, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. So we did see um, Waylon attack with the Azuri into the Lotus Cobra, and I think what we saw Waylon doing was two things. One, assuming that Coleman wouldn't attack with the Lotus Cobra, maybe forgetting that it's a 2-1, mm -hmm. but also possibly forgetting that Azuri's regenerate hits every elf except Azuri. Yeah. Because Azuri is definitely the creature you're not trying to lose there. So I think he ran in there when... Um, yeah, I think, he, I think he just ran in there a little bit... Uh, too hastily, mm -hmm. and possibly just assume that the mana dork was a 1-1 one -one or something to that effect. Is this the new camera? No! But we did get a new uh, studio light, and the and the camera should be showing up tomorrow. I think the other thing is why he might have attacked. I don't necessarily agree with it, but if Coleman did have a warped world, he was trying to prevent him, I think, from oh, maybe, maybe possibly going off. I don't know exactly the mana situation at the time. 
possibly he was overvaluing the yeah. the Lotus Cobra and saying, you know, if you trade, that's good for me. Yeah, thinking, oh, I might get an extra turn before you warp world. Okay. And Coleman does have the warp world in his hand. It looks like. <laughs> Beautiful. I would. I'm. I really. I really want to see if um, if when Coleman resolves it, how many cycles Wayland is going to have. <laughs> what is Coleman's deck? This is a deck based around producing tokens and then continually recasting warp world using tireless trackers, eternal witnesses, uh, P and Kieran Nalar, uh, Siege Gang Commander and then rebind the warp world with the Eternal Witness to recast it with the mana from the Lotus Cobra and the lands that enter to continually increase your permanence each time that you recast it to eventually go for your entire library, which means that you are um, continually increasing your mana pool as well, and eventually, every time you do it, you can just start throwing the tokens produced by PNK and the and Siege Gang Commander at your opponent and loop that way. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a thing of beauty. I am absolutely getting a list. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, feel bad for Wayland because Colin's both games gotten the warp rolled on time as well. Like, as soon as he could drop it, he's had it as the card in his hand. Yeah. And hello to anybody just joining us. It is good to have you. We are getting, doing some pretty cool stuff today. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so it looks like Wayland's just trying to trade as many elves as possible to decrease that warped world uh, effect because apparently his elves aren't going to matter as much so I would assume he's not playing like Shaman of the Pack or something. It could be. I'm a little bit thrown off by it as well but it could just be that I mean there's something definitely to be said for the fact that Waylon just may have no like just doesn't know how to combat this deck. Yeah. And uh, frankly I don't really either. Just if I if I was in that game one I would have no, had no idea what was happening. Yeah because yeah, if, if he still had that Azuri he, I believe he had a, mis, is it a Mystic Elf Mm -hmm. There's a lot of War Elf substitute, so he would have had mana to boost them up, I believe. <laughs> Revel Doc, that is hilarious, actually. Sluke, don't worry, we should be heading into another match, I imagine, fairly shortly. We are going to get this to flip. It's going to take down the Essence Warden. I can get behind that one. Yeah, and it looks like Coleman's just trying to wait until he really floods out his board because he knows he can do it better than Wayland. Yeah. He doesn't want to whiff on the uh, Warped World. This is this is so cool. So welcome. While we're waiting for this one, I'm gonna give a quick little is heads up a, on some things sorry, that we've got going on. Oh, that is a giant. That is a Elvis Champion. No, that is the new one. That because uh, oh, I was like, that could be spell bad news for Coleman if a random Elvis Champion comes down and then he just has a leap for whatever reason. No, this is the one that uh, whenever you attack, you gain life for each elf and it gives them a boost. I think or it gives and he has reach. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, my. Goodness. So, just a quick note is, hello anybody who's just joining while we're going to watch Coleman go off. Uh, we stream four times a week on, all these times are Pacific daily t or Daylight Time, it's currently 7.40 here. Every Monday at 6.30 we stream Standard, every Wednesday at 7, along with Saturdays at 6, we stream Modern, and every Friday at 7.30 we stream Legacy with a variety of co-hosts. Yep. That's Dwynen, it's not the Dwynen's Elite, it's the Dwynen. I know. Uh, the Elite Dwynen. Uh, we also have a pretty special event this weekend. We also have a very special event this weekend. Come this Saturday, outside of our regular stream schedule, starting at noon Pacific Daylight Time, you can come join us for the Super Legacy Showdown, in which a variety of players are going to be showing up for a multitude of rounds, leading into a top eight, and we get the Warp World resolved by Coleman, culminating in a top eight, in which the winner will eventually win a box of Eternal Masters, along with a multitude of other fun prizes. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good deal for uh, people that play well. It's going to be super fun. I'm going to be in the booth back here for, oh, I don't know, 11 hours that day? Something to that effect. Uh, and it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a hoot. So let's let's see here. Is it going to... Oh, it is going to work for us. So let's go ahead and head back up to the booth. What we're going to see is uh, is Haley here. He's going to go try and find us match. another match. We'll see you there. Oh. Oh. Hello and thank you for joining. My name's TJ Harry, my excellent uh, co-host. Oh my goodness, that deck was a hoot. And I'm going to hold on. Coleman, I really need the list. <laughs> We're going to get that list for you. <laughs> Coleman, <laughs> flying high off of that one. But yes, this this Saturday, uh, the, mark it in your calendars, put it on your phone, write a little post-it. What was that? Uh, oh, that wow, was absurd. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
absolutely. Do you sit down and describe <laughs> this deck really quickly? Because right. we did a decent job of it, but they want to hear it from you. Okay, so uh, you guys know what the card Warp World does? Yep. Uh, and Warp World is very interesting because you can actually break symmetry on it, as you saw in the games. <laughs> Symmetrical cards really are. Yeah, like uh, it's actually kind of similar to the Great Ar to Great Aurora in Standard, uh, where if you break the symmetry enough, you can actually just win the game. Which you just so we were thinking like, man, there has to be a Perforce in here. There has to be something. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's just <laughs> I'm gonna throw the clues and make off tireless tracker at your face. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, the, the so this so I've been brewing this this deck for a long time. And the clues are what kind of like put over the and top. And the tireless tracker is basically what put it over the top. So what he means by break symmetry is mm -hmm. that symmetrical effects rarely are. It's similar yeah. to, um, for for a quick example, plusing Liliana when you have no cards in hand, mm -hmm. you're breaking synergy. Because each yeah. player discards a card. Well, you don't you don't have to. Exactly. Um, innocent blood when you have no creatures. Yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, uh, if you don't have a creature, it just means one mana target player sacrifices mm -hmm. a creature. So what this does is every time that he produce he plays a card that doesn't inherit two for one through a token, he is yeah. now breaking that symmetry. So instead of the each player getting the permanence equal to what they had, he is almost Actually guaranteeing netting himself permanence every time you cast a warp world through the, through the token producers. Yes. So if you had eleven, you'll likely end up with sixteen. Mm -hmm. or what you know? In, yeah. More or less. And then the, the ti when you hit a tireless tracker off Warp World, you actually will net so, you, you will go so high you basically can't lose at that point. Yeah, that was pretty cool to see. <laughs> and then the only reason that this is possible is because Warp World doesn't exile itself. Yes. Because you can't do this with Great Aurora because Great Aurora exiles itself. Which is uh, why that card is yeah. less cool. Which is why it's not nearly as good. Looks like they're about to start. Excellent. All right. All right. Ooh, and this is going to be a sweet matchup. I can already tell one of the players. So fortunately, there's a uh, what game one, are they going one game to? going on right now, and they just happen to be going to game three. And we have got on the left Jund. We in the do hands, all foiled Jund in the hands of Peter. Yep. And then uh, on the other side, we got Ryan. Okay. On uh, Blue Tron, Mono Blue Tron. Really? And he's uh, running a little bit of spice with the Thought Not Seers. Ooh, I. Absolutely love it. Let's get on down to the game three. It's going to be sweet. See you there. The Jackal, the Tibble tasted awful. One of the worst magic experiences of my life. Fun little fact there. Super Attacker, will you ever get to see me in a game? Very rarely. As it turns out, I'm back here for about 20 hours a week. Occasionally I escape. Um, I think the last time I was on camera was for our GPT. Is that is that correct? Uh, so yeah, that? I believe so. I think you've been saving up all your uh, magic exposure for GPLA. Oh, absolutely. And then I did all pretty your good well. good magic there. skills. Okie spokey, I will absolutely post that link to my Twitter. Uh, which and is at Red Baron MTG for anybody It looks like curious. he has another Tron piece at least in his hand, so it looks like he's going to end up getting turn three Tron here. Yeah, we are, we are looking pretty solid. Peter, Especially if no. he has an abrupt... No? Okay. Yeah. This is going to be really good. Um, well, Abrupt K wouldn't even have done anything there. He would just act in response. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't even know what I was thinking when I said that. You called me on it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, he, he would have liked to see like a thought seize effect or something like that early on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, the jackal because that was just funny. <laughs> you just did. You just got me. I. I was like, I could probably defend that, but you earned it. <laughs> Decides not to go for Tron, so he's definitely holding up counter magic. And uh, Bob's actually pretty decent versus Blue Tron, uh, more so than Red Green, because they don't have as much removal. Yeah, and Ryan is really based around counter spell, and if you're drawing a bunch of cards, you can sometimes overload that. So, there could be an epiphany in the Drown Yard, and it could be that Ryan is playing off of a list that got popular. Uh, I want to say that it got popular maybe a month ago. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, but mm -hmm. there was some Mono Blue Tron players online that were starting to kind of start testing out Epiphany at the Drown Yard and see how effective it could be. And I I heard some promising things for it. Let's see. Yeah, Tron's been in an interesting spot lately, but Blue Tron never played uh, Emrakul or anything like that, so Not they're only often. gaining toys with uh, some of these Eldrazi. Absolutely. How many lands uh, should you have in a 60 card deck? It depends. If you're aggro, start at 20. If you are mid-range, start at 22, and if you're control, start at 24. Mm -hmm. I think the 
it's usually around 40% is like the, the rough estimate, and then you go down a little bit for aggro and up a little bit for control. Yeah. Def I mean, it, it's definitely something that you pick and choose. And actually, dropping down an Ugin after, and I really like seeing uh, Ryan keep up the, I'm totally spacing on the name of it right now. Um, Condescend? Thank you. The Condescend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going for the island, as opposed to playing out his third troll land, because yeah. he, he had a turn, uh, an eight mana play. That's yeah, what his no, game plan was. He played that perfectly. So that was a really great play by Ryan. Peter fighting a little bit of not, oh no, okay. That's awesome. decent. Play. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's what he wants. I'd be interested to see if uh, Peter's actually running multiple Maelstrom Pulse, because a lot of the gen decks have been since uh, Nahiri has popularized. Mm hmm So, is that a mirror pool? <laughs> That's totally a mirror pool. It does look like a mirror pool. That's pretty cool. So, has that... That's a pretty interesting choice, because either you copy a creature... You can put a token that's a cop... I mean, technically you could go for something like a Platinum Angel against these one-for-one -one decks yeah, that don't have I, a whole lot of ways to definitely got to be using the bottom one over the middle one, because copying counter spells. I mean, I guess there's times where it could be good against uh, control mirrors, but mm -hmm. uh, generally I think you'd be using the bottom one. Yeah, and um, the other thing, because it has to be one that you control. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Um, do we think that the event on Saturday will cap? I'll have to ask Dylan about what kind of numbers that he's seen. Yeah, I think on Facebook there's around 20 some low 20s. Okay, so maybe. I haven't joined yet. Either way, we're looking at probably four to five rounds into a... Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at five I rounds. Say, I would say we're at least at, five, yeah. We're looking at at least five rounds into a top I think he's trying to eight. stop it at 32, roughly, too, so we'll 32 see. is the max. So it should be it should be five rounds regardless, then. Yep. Uh, I think at 32, does it... No, that's at 30... 33, it'll bump up. That's it's, exactly it's, right. 32 is double 16. 16 is four. <sighs> My goodness. Weston, yes, I'll be posting that list. That list was sweet. I'll be getting the War World list up there. So we have an attack for six, and Peter just deciding to get aggressive. Ryan has the opportunity right now of blowing up the board, but he's still going to take four. And if you have played against Mono Blue Tron a lot, Peter's route to victory is on the board right now. Mm -hmm. What you have is basically... Ryan has almost no main board answers to main lands in the entirety of the deck. Yeah, uh, repeal is the big one I can think of. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not there's a repeal on time. Uh, but that's not necessarily a permanent answer. But him having to replay it and it coming into play tapped is pretty uh, good for Ryan. Yeah. Um, let's see. Does he? I actually think that he might have an extra. I, I believe he deck. does actually. Yeah, I I think actually he does. Which? Because he has a foiled out legacy deck too, and most of the cards are in both decks. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly Yay, foiled Peter. out. I guess he technically can't foil out a legacy deck. Fair enough. But you can mostly. Not the ones he plays, at least. <laughs> you can foil out Legacy Burn. Yeah. Pretty uh, pretty easily. So, interesting. A thirst for knowledge from Ryan. He does have a Steel Hellkite, but that's not going to be phenomenal. I think right now one of his better bets might be just trying to get into the way of mm -hmm. this uh, Raging Ravine. But I am... I'm curious to see what happens yeah, there. Yeah, interesting to note, too, um, something like Sun Titan could possibly cut off the Raging Ravine from attacking by destroying a lot of lands, uh, but Peter's only working on one forest right now. Everything else doesn't have a land type. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, did you say Sun Titan? Yeah, I believe, or no, it's not, is it? Do you mean Platinum Angel? No, what is Platinum the one Angel? that comes in and you destroy a basic land of each type? Oh, Sundering Titan. Sundering Titan. Sundering Titan. Okay. Interestingly enough, it would only hit one. <laughs> yeah, so that's like a good insurance plan uh, right there for Peter. Uh huh. So a lot of times against like uh, these three color decks, you're hitting three lands. Yeah. I was like, huh. <laughs> yes, that is a Steel Hell Kite. <laughs> sundering Titan. I was so close. Okay. I mean, technically, you just hit the. You just missed the during. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't really think of it during the little speech. Yeah, I messed up. <laughs> See the funny jokes I just made? Full recovery. <laughs> Our failures are just setting us up for good jokes. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> so still Hellkite coming down. It will be able to, if Peter doesn't have like a removal spell for that on hand right now, mm -hmm. it is going to be able to trade with that Raging Ravine as it currently sits. Um, especially because of its, you know, the, the fact that the card can actually 
uh, pump itself. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen the Maelstrom Pulse come down, so Peter actually probably doesn't have a lot of answers because Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolt, those don't hit these. It'd have to be something like a Terminate. I guess uh, Cool Against Command can hit a starter back as well. Absolutely true. But Peter not going with anything quite yet. He's got a lot of cards in hand, but he does, he's he been hitting the land off of the Stark Confidant, so we don't have a huge amount of knowledge yeah. on it. Uh, Brain, Brainin, it's uh, from playing the Jun deck for a long time. He's got a lot of practice. <laughs> he does have a lot of practice. That's Bryce. Is that Bryce? Yeah. <laughs> Which is why Slowly <laughs> Crashing responded with Salt. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I don't want to say it, it's always true, but it's, it's pretty much always true. <laughs> nice. So Peter doing a pretty nice play here. I think he's swinging with the Dark Confidant with the intention of throwing the bolt at it. Uh, yeah, Steel Hellkite can just uh, tap two before damage, though, as well, to kill it, right? Uh, I mean, he can, he can down tap the two combo. to use Steel Hellkite so that two damage doesn't hit him. Oh, no, it doesn't end up giving it first strike. What? He would he would kill it before damage, right? Technically. Cause Peter? It kills, no. Uh, the destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana That's costs whenever you deal damage to a player. Oh, I didn't read the rest of it. Yeah, that's whenever you deal combat. It's it's to that yeah. the controller that it was It looked like he thought he could return his thing to his hand as well, and it's I believe that card's opponent. Uh, Cyclonic Rift? Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. You don't control. Yeah, and he... Hey, did, did he... Oh, did, okay. Never mind. He Did he... Still Hellcat died. Yeah. It died? It's okay. Dead. Yeah, no, you couldn't. That's what I'm Okay. Yeah, I thought I saw it in the graveyard. Gotcha. Yeah, because uh, it specifically says uh, you don't control because it changes the word to the each. <laughs> and you definitely don't want to make... Well, yeah. you probably don't want it to become... Uh... <laughs> so... We were right. We were just double-checking some things. Absolutely. Got to keep them honest. We're like... Um, like... Uh, the, well, they're chat lethal, so are we just uh, closet lethal? I'll take it. <laughs> so, pass back to Ryan. So, Peter dropping down a Tarmogoyf. It's, it's going to be able to apply pressure, and I think right now Peter's main game plan is to just force Ryan to crack the Oblivion Stone eventually. But this Raging Ravine is still doing a lot of work for him. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he's playing a repeal on that um, instead of using it on the Raging Ravine. Uh, it says non-land. Oh, it does say non-land. Yep, and that is why he has almost... A, yeah, he has a hard time against it. He non. has an incredibly hard time against non-lands. If he's running main board Dismember, that's been one of the ways that I've seen it happen. I did see Dismember. Uh, they, were on his, they were in his sideboard, but he's switching a couple cards out, so I don't know if he ended up bringing them in or not. I would think that you would want them in, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not sure. JJ Ness, have a great night. Say hi to your friends for us. Yeah, have fun. Absolutely. Now, we've got tap for three mana... And Gideon, it's great to see you. Oh, okay, that's just two mana. The forest just looked like two to me. Let's see. And yes, that is true. Ostone also specifies yeah, non land. We about that earlier, yeah. Basically, yeah, that dismember is the main option that he has. And it's got to be soon too. It's got to be very soon. Cause it can get out of dismember range. Yep. And uh, I'll be curious about that one. Now I'll be curious to see. Uh, well, there's for knowledge in response. His other game plan could Ryan's could be to hit a Platinum Angel and have Counter Magic up, oh. and try to uh, this prevent the Terminates and stuff. But we might be seeing a Cold Guns command in response, to hitting targeting the Oblivion Stone. Mm -hmm. Now that Ryan's uh, tapped out, yeah, and he has he has. A, and he's uh, gonna make him discard too, which is pretty huge here. Nice. Uh, Reich? Yes, he does. I do stream. This is Albino Lion. Yep, I usually stream Kiki Court. So I believe uh, Reich was talking to me for a while last time I streamed uh, Sunday or Monday. So uh, Making connections. He's a, he's a big modern guy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Right? Oh, see, he's a follower, too. He's what he, Smart guy. He was part of the Fortnites that went down to L.A. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all over the place. He's all over the place. We've, we've apparently got connections. Well, yeah, thanks for tuning into both streams. Exactly. Hopefully you enjoy both. Let's see here. What what, what can Ryan do? I mean, the Mind really Lock isn't out. Yeah, that or the Platinum Angel, I think, are his best bets. But Platinum yes, Angel isn't out. He doesn't have a lot of cards in his hand, anyways. Um, He could go with that one, and even with the Mirror Pool as an ability to copy... 
That, uh, yeah, I think we might have started slightly early on the clock. I can check to see if we're at almost at turns. They also might have gotten an extension from Yeah, they over. did move, so they probably have a couple more minutes, I would think, before mm -hmm. turns. So they might end up having like an extra two minutes or so. Mm -hmm. But it also, I may have just got... I start the clock, it's not entirely... Well, we tell them we're ready, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Dylan started his clock. Right. It's not guaranteed to, to line up with what's actually on the wall. There's the plan, and now he's got to hope that he whiffs... Uh, Kill spell, and then he has counter magic up, hopefully. Yep. So, so, if Peter doesn't have it, then Ryan has the ability to mirror pull it, and Peter's mm -hmm. pro only running one Maelstrom Pulse. Well, Terminate hits it, and um, Cole against Command as well. True. Absolutely true. So, we're going to activate this, and apparently we don't have the removal spell. Well, he's got he's going to want to bring him. Well, not necessarily. I guess I would use the removal spell here because he can't counter, huh? Yeah. I mean, when he's tapped out, that's yeah. when you want to remove it, because you'd still be knocking him down to a six after that hit. So I would assume he doesn't have it. <coughs> Which means that now we have Ryan with two cards in hand, does have access to the mirror pool, however. Mm -hmm. So he could leave up mana and then just try and activate that in response to something. He's got also a thirst for knowledge, so we might cast that. Yeah, so this is, uh, into it. This is gonna be a big card for Ryan to see what he gets. And do you wait for it, or... Do you try and go for the thirst for the knowledge now? Um. Apparently we're oh we're cracking it now while Peter's tapped out. Oh, I he like makes that. a token. Okay. Yep. And yes, the maelstrom pulse. But like we were saying earlier, though, he might be running two maelstrom pulse in the meta. Currently. It's been a little bit popular, but I'm not sure if Peter has two foils. That's yeah. <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> And also, I'm just not sure if he's currently on the two of them, because uh, our meta is always a little bit more yeah. unconventional, mm -hmm. like, and so it's possible that he is more in like our meta game, and I'm not quite sure if I would go with the two Maelstrom Pulse at our shop. Yeah, and that's fair. Um, we see a little bit of Nahiri in the Kiki Core decks here, and I think I've seen uh, Jeskai every once in a while. It's been pretty rare, though, mm -hmm. um, and we don't get a lot of Tron, so yeah. he might not be playing him. Now, we did see something a little bit unusual in Ryan not attacking, because he does have a 4-4 flyer. And yeah, there's no reason for him not to attack here. No, because he has no intention of blocking anytime soon. And so going or for the ever. attack there, I mean, it puts Peter down to 14, which is actually a two-turn clock now that he has two Platinum Angels. Right now, it's a three-turn clock. Yeah. Um, might not end up being super relevant, but it all matters, you know. Yeah. once When you get down to it, it can all matter in the end. Um... So we've got a Huntmaster coming down. And this is actually important because uh, Peter actually does have a bolt in his hand. So this is essentially one removal spell. If uh, Peter doesn't play a spell for a turn, yes. or if Ryan... Once it flips. And actually the fact that Ryan has this Thirst for Knowledge means that he does have the ability to go off instant speed, possibly at Peter's end step if he doesn't want it to flip. Mm -hmm. And that scavenging is actually disrupting the Mind Slaver combo. Though he doesn't have green mana at the moment. So actually, a little surprised he's playing all his lands still because you'd think for that, thirster knowledge if he wants has to that just discard multiple. Oh, he didn't have Tron yet. No, it, he got knocked out earlier. Uh, not not a very good draw for him. I the mean, spell sky good, is I great guess. Draw. Yeah, never what mind. You, what are you? I don't know. I saw two lands. And I freaked out. <laughs> You're right. Spell sky is a, spell a wonderful is an draw. He doesn't care draw. what else he gets. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. My goodness. I know. I'm all over the place. I instantly realize, and it's like, it's already too late when you're on stream. <laughs> no, I do that all the time. <laughs> I say wrong, I mean, earlier I said something that was pretty incorrect, and you're like, that's yeah, yeah. not yeah. true, TJ. <laughs> yeah, so, we're, we're quick to correct each other. That's, I mean, that's... So we're benefit. even now. Ooh. We need to ask David, Get us, start getting tire marks up there. <laughs> Call each other out. Yes. I love it. You know what, I think since I'm you gonna, don't... I'm going to check the clock real quick for that. Okay. Excellent. Uh, what's the time left for these guys? Four minutes. Four more? Alright, so they still have four more minutes. Oh, okay. So they had a quite a little extension there. Absolutely they did. So apparently I got way too hasty when I uh, when I really set the timer there. I don't think your clock's that far off of Dylan's, actually. I think they just... They, just got they might have started late or something. Like, they had something going on. I don't know. Oh, that's true, because we actually... Because traffic in the area, there was a large that's collision. Was. And uh, they might have just gotten a time extension because of the people yeah, showing up after some pretty I know, I know a couple people called in, so... Whew! So, this is... Awesome. So, game three, it's really looking like it's in Ryan's favor at this point. Yeah. Um, he's at 9 at the moment, with Peter at 12, 
And apparently there's a correction. He's actually at 11. Good to know. Where's the traffic? It was on all of I-5 heading north. The trussle was pretty much destroyed. Uh, parts of Highway 9 were pretty rough. <laughs> I don't know. I live too close to... I definitely noticed traffic, but I didn't have to slog through all of it. Mm-hmm. Yes, Key Game Time does keep... <laughs> Oh, it's negative 11. That makes, way more, that makes way more sense. I was like, I was I like that's... Anything, but... I'm not sure how, but I believed him. Yeah. There we go. Thank you, Slowly I didn't crashing. think it mattered either. Doubt. I'm gonna be honest. No. I don't think... I mean, the Sundering Titan, two Platinum Angels, a Spell Skate to protect him. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be uh, too sad about my position if I was in right <laughs> With two bla blue mana to activate the did, spell skate. Did he not attack again? Oh. Platinum Angels. Apparently not. <laughs> so, oh no, there's not normally as much traffic. My normal half hour commute, which is like a seven minute delay, uh, was turned into a 70 minute commute today. Yeah. It was it was unfortunate. I danced a lot in the car. Now he's attacking with Sundry Titan. This is very odd that he hasn't been attacking with the Platinum Angels because they have. I feel like at this point, Ryan might be trolling us. It's possible. But we're already pretty much deep and they should be unturned soon. Right. I'm just. I'm thrown off as to the, the cause for this. And I feel like technically Peter does have outs. Um, Although unlikely. But Ryan not attacking is pretty. Pretty odd at the moment. Um, apparently they have a minute and a half. So I'm just going to reset this timer for the next round. And an Inquisition. Oh, is he just going to remand it? Oh, no. Okay. Repeal. Is that just repeals the scavenger. You can like a spell uh, burst or something. I mean, you draw a card and then it's revealed anyway, and now he gets to take. <laughs> He's going to cast Repeal again on the time <laughs> And he's going to draw into an island. Reveal that one for the Inquisition. Seems good. Oh my goodness. So, Ryan, I'm a little bit thrown off by the lack of attacks here. Because there is no reach on, on Peter's side of the battlefield. And he did gain some decent life off of the scavengers. Everyone knows that uh, angels fly, too. Like, so, it should be pretty prevalent, I would think, that it's... Yeah. I, I have to believe... That Ryan is possibly just doing this because he has time. <laughs> like that 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 strikes me as the only explanation. Oh, Johnny Disco, Platinum Angel. Let's go ahead and bring a Platinum Angel. I'm sorry. So uh, Platinum Angel means that you don't lose the game. As long as this card is on the battlefield, he can't lose the game and his opponent can't win. So being at negative now 13. Me is not actually fatal anymore. So we get an expedition map. Possibly gonna go for another mirror pool. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What? Ryan's turn zero. Okay. And now we are on turn zero. So what if he just doesn't realize he can't kill him in three turns? <laughs> it's. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> Technically, he can kill him in three turns right now, but the scavengers might make it a little bit tricky. Well, and uh, you could be getting Huntmaster flips, and who knows what else. So, he's now on turn zero, and it's theoretically possible for him to not win. Yeah. When he's... I mean, he, he's, he still can, but he's lessening his chances. I'm also... And I think we're passing... I'm surprised that he got Academy Runes as well with the Ooze out there. But I guess it technically makes so he's gaining less life, but I don't think there's enough creatures either. Yeah. To, uh, and there's going to be enough mana on Peter's side for most of the game. Interesting. But um, I'm, I'm a little thrown off. Ryan, normally a burn player, so possibly just... Yeah, a little different than what he uh, typically plays. <laughs> I... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit thrown off at the moment, though. I really do think that it, it has to be. I really don't think he notices because I don't know why he wouldn't attack last turn for sure. When they're on turns. Yeah. 
Because he went for the attack earlier and, and flew over the creatures. I think he did it, yeah, once, possibly, right in the beginning. I'm he so, hasn't done it since then. I'm so discombobulated right now. I'm curious. This strikes me as the kind of thing that we're going to, uh, like, the game is going to end. Ryan's going to look at it and go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so <laughs> Slow rolling while top decking one card at a time. Interesting. And uh, I mean, Peter doing a great job of just playing playing to yeah. the end, because if he's not going to attack... Don't concede, it, especially when it's game three, until they, uh, they get the win. Yeah, still does have the Rage Ravine, but attacking into the Sundering Titan, not really uh, not really looking at it. True, could be the stream card pressure. under Huntmaster is... The, no, or is it just the Huntmaster? Okay, so he does have both, technically. Yeah, and that is something that is worth keeping in mind. Oh no, he's just looking up the is one that back and forth. Never mind. It's it's a little bit worth keeping in mind that sometimes when you're on the, on stream, you do things differently. This is true. Like, I play my worst magic on stream. So, I I mean I believe you only because like because you see me mess up enough times. And you just make weird plays on there because you you start yeah. thinking like about. And it's it's usually the simplest things too. Mm -hmm. So I'm a I'm a little bit curious. <laughs> There. Uh, but Revel Duck, that is not how the angel will work. Um, that only works during the context of the game. You can still lose, like, ability. Technically, he doesn't win or lose, so angel wouldn't uh, matter either way. Well, You're and it's off. also just no longer on the battlefield because the game is over. Right, yeah. But um, I don't think that Peter can draw a Maelstrom Pulse because he only drew one, and I think that he is only on the one. As and we have the that. spell guide as well. Mm hmm. True. So I don't think that Peter has any way of winning this game. And condescend. His hand. But, and apparently that's just going to get condescended for the Scry 2. I mean, it's... <laughs> apparently we're going all out. Well, he's got to... It's unless you pay X, right? So he's got to tap a bunch of mana. Oh, okay. Spell versus the other one, I believe. that take exact. If you kill the angel, when does the loss resolve? It, immediately. As soon as state-based effects are checked. Mm -hmm. If all the angels are removed, it would be um, as soon as they're checked, which is immediately. So, I am, I'm bamboozled. Yeah, he just he just doesn't realize it, and that's unfortunate for him. That is unfortunate. Either that, or he's going for the draw. I, I would doubt it. Interesting. I think it, they might be explaining it right now. I don't I can, actually. I can know. hear them asking him. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and head back up to the booth for round two. And uh, he may have thought that was a stirring wildwood. <laughs> oh no. Oh man. So let's head up and have some fun. We will see you out there and get ready for round two. Hello everybody and thank you for joining. My name's TJ. Uh, Harry. And we're streaming from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington. Doing four rounds of Modern and uh, just came across the ultimate blocking of a Raging Ravine which has Reach. Unfortunate there, but sometimes that happens. So Yeah, especially when you're new to certain cards or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I am not entirely sure there but when is the new camera coming tomorrow and we are very excited about that one no the raging ravine does not have reach but apparently ryan uh had, a bit, of a, of that, had yeah. a bit of a miscommunication there normally playing burn so i imagine that he doesn't normally have to really worry about the cards that i don't Jen think has. He, i don't think he sees too many ravines that no. are activating against him no not likely so unfortunate that and uh and a draw there but we are getting ready for round two now it's gonna be all kinds of exciting to anybody who may just be joining it is all kinds of fun. We stream four times a week. Modern on st on or standard standard on Mondays mm -hmm. at six thirty Pacific time. Modern on Wednesdays and Saturdays seven o'clock on Wednesdays six o'clock on Saturdays. And we have got Legacy at seven thirty on Fridays. In addition to the super sweet Legacy Showdown on this uh, this Saturday starting at noon, we are expecting to have about five rounds of Legacy into a cut to top eight. Yeah, it's looking like five rounds for sure. Which will then lead into modern 
which means that I will be in this booth from noon until maybe 11 p.m. I didn't realize they were going back to back, like I said, Modern. It, I think it's going to be starting during the top eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's going to be... It's unfortunate I'm going to miss out on Modern, it sounds like. It is going to be... Uh, <laughs> nice. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, two Zalkaris. It's unlikely that it's a bribe in round one between a, in a, I mean, it's a weekly not, event. Not with those players either. Yeah, neither one of them. So, I imagine that it was just a misunderstanding and possibly just being on camera. It very legitimately does affect you. And yeah. I think that that might have just been and a situation. And always playing there. Burn is just, I'm sure he's never played with this deck, it seems like, so, necessarily. So, just so. not what he's used to. It's a completely different access. Yeah. So, I am, uh, it... It can definitely throw you for a loop. I can understand that one. Hey, it happens. We <laughs> had, uh, there was Magic Greats that uh, messed up in games in Vintage that I watched yesterday when they were doing the, uh, the they had all the pro players playing. Oh, yeah? And uh, one of the guys was playing Eldrazi versus uh, Bridge from Bulo. And he could have played an endless one for zero to remove all the bridges, and he didn't, and he lost because of it. Ooh, on... Fortunate. So, if you could do me a favor, see what we can find yeah, for a round two match, and uh, let's see what we can get. You guys are excited? Okay. And uh, we are going to be getting a round two match, and it appears to be the case. We'll see what Nathan comes up with. I think we'll see. Hey, man. <laughs> All right. Was the big tireless checker uh, dictated for life? No, it was by throwing uh, the tokens created by, Sean, by P and Kier Nalar. Siege Gang Commander and the tokens from Tireless Tracker using the abilities. That is fantastic. Whew. Now, do yes, we will be firing. Apparently, we will apparently be firing the modern after the uh, cut to top eight. So uh, the top eight players will not be in the modern event, but apparently, modern will be firing on Saturday. Ugh. Oh, man. all right. So we got uh, on the wall. We have Mason on Zoo. And uh, on the far side, we have Joe on his uh, Zombardment deck. So on, the, uh, oh. so we've got, we are getting some unusual decks here, and actually, I think this is going to be Burning Zoo in the hands of Mason, which is spelling to be a really good matchup for Mason. I don't think that this one's going to last very long, but yeah, Mason, it depends on how quick he can get out the door. Mason normally running the the bigger Naya Zoo, but actually. I think recently made the switches to Burning Zoo. I'm almost positive. He has. I know he's been getting a couple of new cards, so I've, at least since I've uh, played against him or seen him play, I know he's had a couple adjustments. Yeah. So um, we will see what happens there, and let's head on down. It's going to be a Graveyard Dex Embarment using the super sweet Greater Gargadon as an uncountable sack out. Yep. Very cool. And uh, going for a lot of other just engines to the battlefield. But I, yeah, I absolutely love it. Let's head on down and have All a good right. time. Let's do it. And apparently they they're, already they're weren't just, going. They're, so they're, too cool <laughs> they're apparently too cool. <laughs> so from Mason, we have uh, turn one Grim Lava Mancer followed mm -hmm. up by a Lightning Bolt and an a Curdave on turn two, and uh, an attacking with the Lava Mancer and casting into a Curdave. Special edition Curdave too. I believe that one's signed by the artist. Absolutely. So this is very cool. You can find this uh, Zombardment deck on our Tapped Out account. Uh, it is under the modern folder, and you can it'll be called Modern Zombardment. So, a Grim Lava Mancer out. Probably okay. I wanted to save the activation there. Probably has another. I'm curious about this one, and this is not Burning Zoo. This is apparently still Naya Zoo. Either that, or he really got some good mainboard. But dropping down to scavenger. I mean, this is good in a lot of matchups here. Like, Kiki Quartz is pretty prevalent here. You see Abzan Company every once in a while. But you would not see it in Burning Zoo, by any means. Yeah. This has got to be Naya Zoo. Uh, so apparently, he did not make the, the choices there. I'm interested in why he didn't swim with the Grim Lava Mancer, though. So, um, I think it's... I think that you were correct. So an abrupt decay taking down the scavenging use while it still has the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. And I think Mason might have been holding it back with the idea of, like, I can hit for two damage. Mm -hmm. And then realize that he was going to be casting a two drop that one, which is a little bit unusual. Well, and he only had one card in his graveyard as well. Okay. So. But hey, one damage a miss is a little bit better than four. <laughs> From those uh, platinum angels. 
Uh, eight, actually. Yeah, four per. per. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Uh, apparently, that side of the table is just not really feeling the attacks today. Yeah. So Jill drops down a Jeralt's messenger, which is going to be draining for a little bit of life. And really? just tapped, unfortunately, which means that Joe is functionally at six right now. Mm -hmm. Depending on the amount of burn in uh, in Mason's hand, he's got a pretty good way. Well, oh, he's functionally at five, right? But if he's he, got a if he wanted to tap the Grim Lava Mancer. Yep. And he's actually got a Lightning Helix with no white mana. As well as a Kazali Pride Mage with no and white mana. And it looks like uh, we'll be seeing it right here. Oh, a Wild right. Nicottle? Wild Nicottle, yeah. And I'm really surprised by not casting the Wild Nicottle there. He might have an Atarkas command that we may not have seen I there. I feel like he would have used the Atarkas command there, possibly, too, though. Uh, to get the but additional I, three guess, and additional two and instead knock Joe down to well, one. It'd essentially be uh, an additional two that he wouldn't be getting um, mm -hmm. if he uses it on Joe's turn. But Joe does have the ability to gain life as well, so... Hard to say for sure. Yeah. So, no. If Mason's if Mason's on Zoo, he's is that a oh, skull crack? Yeah, it looked like just a skull crack. Okay, that makes much more sense then. That's super unusual to see a skull crack in this though. Yeah, it could just be a one of or something. Um, and that is a I can't think of the name right now. Yeah, it's where you draw cards when creatures, other creatures you control. Whenever die, non, -token non token creatures, it's a grim something. Oh, the the word of it is so weird too. What is that card? They're gonna let me know by the time that I find it. Grim Harispex. That is a Grim Harispex. Yeah, we beat them. <laughs> I mean, technically, they they're probably just here. And see, I'm counting it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Fortnites, you guys rock. So the Wild Nakata coming out. Mason going with the Skullcrack to knock Joe down to two, also preventing. Yeah, and he's going to want to find a burn spell, Mason is, or uh, planes. Um, and a Perforos coming Because he's not going to want to attack into that, yeah. So, does it, I mean, attacking into it isn't particularly awful, but it's... He gets to draw cards. Okay. <laughs> or he can just draw the Atarkas yeah. man. Yeah, he needed a, a, a burn spell or a white source. Joe does have life gain. He has a blood artist and... Zulaport cutthroat. Yes. Both of which require kind of a sack outlet, or at least the ability to block and get in the way of creatures. But it is nice that it can be, it's it's a way to not get all your life in one bang, so you get around a Tarkus Command and Skull Crack a little bit better as well. Definitely. It, especially if you're just going for, uh, especially if you have the sack triggers as opposed to the blocking. Is there any Eldrazi Tron deck? I don't believe that there is an Eldrazi Tron here tonight. We have been had. We, we just had a Tron Splash Eldrazi in it. We did? Uh, thought not Seer, but... And some Defender Platinum Angels. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, both pairs going to 20. Now, Joe, the big problem with Joe's deck right now is that so many of these creatures can't block. Mm -hmm. um, so that is problematic. And Mace, a lot of Masons are bigger as well. Mm -hmm. At least in the early game. And see. If we count... Uh, oh, the World Breaker Tron deck is absolutely awesome. I'm hoping to... Black Eye Skier, good to see you again. But, uh... Appreciate I, you joining us. As far as Bant Eldrazi, I think we have some people building it, but I don't think we have it at the moment. I have not But I think it. Logan's been looking into building it. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to convince some other players, because that deck is super sweet. Yeah, it's definitely uh, been the deck that's been gaining a lot of popularity recently. That in the Nahiri deck. Yeah. And looking at that deck, it's... It's so curious, because the deck has got, like... Functionally, four different costs that it needs to pay for spells. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but it does it pretty well. Yeah, with the amount of Noble Hierarchs and uh, Birds of Paradise. Yeah, you're able to fix a lot of that one. BP Pride, thank you so much for the follow. We really appreciate you joining us. If anybody is brand new, always feel free to hit that follow button and say hi in the chat. It's it's awesome to be able to welcome you guys. We like interacting with you. Apparently, Bryce is also building Bantel Drossy, so we'll be able to yeah, see that. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me too much. No, he was playing... I'm a little disgusted, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, the deck also does a really good job of just applying... I mean, for what it does, a turn one Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch actually enables you into a lot of lines. It'll, a lot of the same ones <coughs> that it did before. Um, you had to cut some of the cards, but uh, you're still able to get, like, yeah. turn four Thought Not Seers. Or sorry, uh, yeah. turn two Thought Not Seers and stuff. LeBay, thank you so much for that follow. You are, or I, I bay either one. I'm not sure if that's an I or an L. Sometimes, oh... I'm now Kevin. That's likely an I, actually. That's so. 
We shall see. But uh, thank you for hitting that follow button. We really appreciate you joining us. Oh, that's cool. Wait, stand strangler. I like it. That's super cool. Woo. Uh, yes. Oh, it's the Kevin and Cole show. Except I am. Uh, I'm Cole. Which does that make you the new Kevin? Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Uh, sadistic. Hey. So, uh, I'm now Kevin. Wonderful. So we'll have to update those names. Hello, hello, daughter of someone. It's great to see you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Looks like some people read done finishing up Bantel Trust. The deck is sweet. It's got a yeah, lot of ability. A, there are definitely a couple people in the stream tonight. I'm not. I and the funny thing is, I'm not super concerned about the deck. I don't think that it's busted by any means because I think that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but just looking at the deck, I think that like, it's got a little bit of inconsistency to it. Well, it's it's that that's one of the big things that doesn't have as much consistency, but it also has worse top decks. If you do get to the point in the game where you're kind of. Having going so on. many mana dorks yep. and some of those creatures that just don't do as much. Yep. That's okay. That's that's a reasonable thought. Though I will say that running things like that six mana, the one that uh, taps down creatures. Yeah, that's good. That's like, a pretty good. It one. has some late game plays for sure, but it's uh, it can draw poorly as well. Um, but yeah, with the displacer, it's super good. Um, and then we have uh, stuff like ancient stirrings can also go through the deck pretty quick and find the right tools. Mm hmm. So, Joe going to be on the play. Needs to get a quick start. I think using one of these life gain sources is going to be really key. But Mason's got a good amount of removal. Oh, the greater Gargoyle himself. We're playing all the big red cards tonight. Yes, we are. <laughs> so, greater Gar Gargadon, a 10 mana spell. Ooh, and no one drop for Mason, which is uh, kind of uh, doesn't happen with his deck too often. I'm kind of expecting maybe a, a turn two scavenging use based on the fact that he went for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, could also be just going for something that he expects is going to punish the great. Something here. like ooze or rest in peace would be very good here. Rest in peace would be in very good. And I'm pretty positive he brought those in. Okay, um, and I can definitely believe that the uh, that the stirrings fixes a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Also has too little removal. That's a really solid point there against some of the really, really fa like. I imagine that it wouldn't have a fantastic affinity matchup as it currently sits. Yeah, it. I think it's. It depends on your meta, slightly out that deck, um, especially if you're not running caverns. So a viscerous here, a lot of sack outlets from Joe, keeping a one lander, however, and that's going to be problematic. Mason going into a second land, down to seventeen after also going for the uh, shock land this turn has green mana, and I think I see the scavenging. Oh, Eidolon. Eidolon's not too bad on this board. He's got a lot of small things. No, and what an unusual choice here. Um, I. Mason running that card is sweet. He may have just changed up this deck a decent amount. Mm -hmm. Running scavengers in the main board is still unusual to me. Was he? He wasn't running Eidolons before, was he? No, I he was not. So. This is he has it changed. It could just at be a meta call with the ooze. So we only saw burn in the coddles, pretty much uh, in small creatures before that. True. Uh, no, we did see the uh, Kazali Pride Mage. No, oh, you're right. Yes, yeah, so this is at least kind of like a mid zoo, but a swing for two here. Um, which it looks like a lightning bolt getting cast. So Joe going down to 16 just for the cast at the moment. Read through the comments real quick. Glimpsing was asking a question earlier. Missing three caverns, playing a way Seagate's record, and two with Spirit Dragon. Those all seem uh, decent. I'd probably run different colorless utility lands. That's pretty solid, actually. I wonder if there's any, uh, you know how Desolate Lighthouse is a good uh, colorless... Uh, mm -hmm. like in, blue in band splash colors? Kind of color? Yeah, I wonder if there's anything in band colors that you could put there as well. There's nothing really fantastic. I don't remember what any of the cards do. Exactly. And a Ooh, bolt a taking bolt. down the scavenging is. Woo! Nice! Not quite what uh, Mason wanted to see. Uh, Pass also very interesting here um, because he can sack in response with this receiver, depending on the interactions of, in other cards he has in play if he wants to do that. Joe's also got another Terminate in hand as well for more removal. No, oh, does he? Yeah. And Greater Gargoth is just getting closer and closer. Oh, you're right. Gavney Township is a great utility land. I don't know why. When I thought green-white, for some reason my mind immediately jumped to uh, the mainland. I was yeah. like, stirring Wildwood. But that's not, like, incredible in that deck because it enters tapped. Look at I me go. I didn't think about it. I was just like, I wonder if there's... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Even try. Yeah, smiley faces, you are correct. Yeah, I would definitely be running uh, one of the Gavany Townships at the very least. Probably two. 
Shadow, the good place to get sleeves for your cards is likely your local game store. Check it out. If you happen to live near Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington, where we're streaming from, could we're be worth for you. We're waiting for you. But otherwise, the local game stores are always a good spot, and it's really nice to support those local areas that are able to provide mm -hmm. magic for the community. I'm trying to see what he has. Unfortunately, he has two lightning helixes. Uh, if he sacks in response, he will mitigate the life gain as well. If he tries to go for the creature. Yes. Absolutely. It will still be a removal spell, though. Which is ultimately what you want. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, we have got a swing for three there. Joe going down to 13. And we've got an abrupt Joe account. with all the removal. Oh, my goodness. And I think he does still have the terminate in hand as well. Yeah. So it's an interesting choice to go for the uh, abrupt decay over the terminate. Because the Abrupt Decay is able to hit things like a Rest in Peace if he comes across that one. Mm -hmm. But Joe, taking on the role of the control deck player here, we might almost see a situation in which Joe's game plan is to just wait out this Gargadon coming down. He could be also, you <coughs> know, uh, Mason plays some interesting cards. He's played a uh, Burning Tree... It's not Shaman. Um, but uh, the one where activated abilities, they lose a life. So I believe Joe's abilities are all activated. The so Burning Tree Shaman. Is this Shaman Shaman? I thought it was the one that gains. Or Burning Tree Emissary is the one that flips. Okay, okay, yeah. so it is Shaman. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so it kind of mitigates the uh, Blood Artist effects in a sense. Okay. The gain life part, at least. So... Mason, he's got five lands right now. That can't be ideal. I mean, he's no. down to 12 at the and moment. I, especially because I think he's cut his, uh, his land count, probably. He's curved down a little bit. Good night. night. Thanks for uh, checking in with us. You're awesome. Have a fantastic evening. Okay. So, two sacred foundries, a temple garden, a stomping ground. Two stomping grounds by the look of it. Mason, I think, has another land in hand. Brutal. Uh, oh, I have seen an arena played in hand. modern by Mason. He does have a path here. <laughs> Mason played arena in modern for like a month or two. Don't even know what arena is. It makes one of your creatures fight one of their creatures. If if like an untapped creature of yours mm -hmm. fight, I think a a creature of theirs or something like that. Yeah, it's army raid style. Yeah, it's it is absurd. <laughs> With death touch, <laughs> didn't even use it. Oh. Yeah, remember the old furfuros interaction? Just yeah. ping each thing for like one. Yep. So. <laughs> Joe down to 10 at the moment. Has a grave color. Mason at 12 after that helix. And just going for the double helix. Going for the face. So Which might be his best bet here, especially with uh, Gargadon coming out soon. He does have the path, but uh, I the, think he's running a lot more burn than he used to. So Yeah, and gaining the life as well is relevant. The path to exile is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. If Joe was able to get into maybe like a Zulaport Cutthroat and another zombie, his board also gets significantly better because he can start just recasting Yeah, once his. he's able to start gaining some life, mm -hmm. uh, it'll go downhill for Mason. So I think Mason's trying to get out early and get that damage in before uh, the board gets flooded because Joe honestly hasn't been doing a lot. Uh, he's just had a lot of removal spells and we have this Greater Gargan on Looming, but it's a little bit of time here. Yeah, but he hasn't done a... And I think another reason that we saw him go for the face is because that Viscerous here, mm -hmm. hitting any of those creatures isn't super effective. Yeah. So, please. Well, yet we another land. land. I don't know what's left in his hand. Path well, he's really got to be able to... Tarkus Command's good here. Mason could be trying to get just, uh, you know, if he gets one more land, he can cast his Warp World. <laughs> I mean, Bonfire's basically going to... I think he took those out. Too. Oh, did he? I think he finally did. That hurts then again, I also thought that he had gone to Burning Zoo. So... Uh, Never know what to expect. I hope he kept one in just for a little bit of flavor. <laughs> but he does have the Atarkus Cram, which will stop life gain and deal three. So uh, he's getting closer. Uh, yeah, so fun Joe functionally at four right now. Needs to be a little bit careful. And if he plays out anything like a fetch land as well, it's going to be a pretty... Ooh, and actually dropping down the second greater Gargadon means that the path isn't nearly as effective. Uh, yeah, it'll... There's not a lot of permanence in play, so he'll still have a, a little time. And there's the bolt. He's one away. Joe is functionally a one life and right now. One, one uh, fetch land here, too. And one creature as well, attacking in, can just change that entire situation. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, Joe is just swinging in for four each turn and lining up some nine sevens. And I don't think... Okay, Joe does have a bunch of cards. He hasn't any life gain yet, So, but I know there's some in his deck, so we'll 
Joe, is Joe gonna possibly like? He has to be so careful. A fetch, a shock, anything kills him immediately. And even the life gain, he has to sacrifice multiple creatures because of the Atarkas command. That's absolutely true. He could sacrifice one of these Vicer Seers fairly easily, but oh yeah, he has he has the tools to do it, but he has to also have that one oh. of those cards, Blood Artist or the uh, Cutthroat. This is and a relentless dead coming down. That's a bit of an unusual choice. Um, man, something like if Joe is able to just float the any kind of burn spell off the top of Mason's deck, that's going to be incredible because he can. Uh, if he swings in, he's going to knock Mason down to 7. Mason knows he's close, too. He's going to knock Mason down to 7 with 6 damage on the board. And instead, we are we are bringing out the Gargadon. Which is actually worse for Joe to be doing that here. Because it's worse for damage output, but yeah. it does mean that he can sack that in response to the other Gargadon. Yeah, I know, but he still loses some for the one Gargadon instead of the second one, which has 9 counters on it as well. Yep. So it is a swing for 3, which is going to knock Mason down to 8. And we are going to... Apparently he wants the land. Yeah. Um, I don't think the other Greater Gargonon's too close to coming out right now. So that's probably his thought process. Could be. Or if, you just know... Just more thinning to get a life gain ability. I think more likely he's just looking to be able to cast multiple spells per turn. Because that way he can leave up a terminate and maybe get a little bit proactive as well. Yeah. Uh, something like that. And if it's not going to matter in the long run, it means that Joe and, has uh, a And actually, of interestingly here, okay, it didn't matter, but if uh, Mason had a haste creature there, he would have won. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, Joe actually, he actually tapped out. And that looks like the uh, cut purse right there they drew. The cutthroat? Cutthroat, Ooh. sorry. He doesn't have the other zombie to be able to... Puts down the perforos. Oh, yes, you can sack land to Gargadon. He missed his uh, upkeep trigger as well. Oh, that's a good point. Another path. <laughs> Maybe getting a little bit hasty. Yeah, with that I one. don't know if I would use the path there. I'd sack it to itself and just get the sky trigger. Yeah. Make sure you can line well. up something. But that seems a little bit hasty. It could be. I mean, it was attacking anyway. Yeah, so. he can he can sack lands to the greater gargon, but he can sack the creature as well. So. Mm-hmm. Kind of evens out in a sense. <laughs> It does have the bonfire. Oh, oh my goodness. He passed the he tapped out entirely for it to knock Mason over tapped for it. He only needed to activate it for one and he had to kill in hand. Over tapped for the bonfire and only got a bonfire for six. So Joe at one life. And he can just Can he sat oh my goodness. If he has two creatures. If he has a land, he's going to just kill with the Greater Gargadon. Did Mason may have just given this game uh, away. Oh, yeah. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mason just... Enough. Did he? He had three creatures and four lands. No, but bringing in the Viscerous here was enough to knock Mason down to Bro four. He brought in the Blood Ghast. Did, did he just get... We're going to a game three. Mason completely overtapped for that. So unfortunate. Got way too excited. Joe plays down the creature, which yeah, gets they, the two damage from the, the perforos. Grave crawler should have been dead as well off of the bonfire. Or does it? Could it have came back and play anyway? He didn't have a zombie. Yeah. I guess it's. I mean. I don't think Mason was dead anyways. Uh, probably shouldn't have. Misplays, folks. They are the worst. Yep. <laughs> Should we point out Grave Crawler should have been dead? I don't know. Uh, if we you can should just mention. At this point. We can't really change. As a heads up, the Grave Crawler should have been dead. Grave Crawler should have been dead to Bonfire. As a heads up. So you had. <laughs> okay. We couldn't interrupt you guys in time. <laughs> Did you? Oh. Okay, we didn't see the last one. Okay. Apparently, he did have it. He did have another two drop in hand. So apparently, the the main uh, the main misplay there was Mason going all out for a bonfire in, mm -hmm. in his excitement, when yeah. all he needed to do was pay two mana. Mm -hmm. And then the grave crawler triggers both of their faults, anyways, I believe. So. Yep. So. That is. Yeah. Oh, 
Apparently, yeah, he had another uh, two drop there. So that is pretty cool. The Gravecrawler actually wouldn't have come into play. He didn't have another zombie. Yeah, so he would have. Bloodgast is a vampire. He, he, had, a, he had another creature for the extra two damage off for Frost, anyways. But uh, the Gravecrawler wouldn't have been any damage there. Mason, Mason did unfortunately give away the win there. So yes, it's a game three. Did. Mason on the play. Uh, it's hard not to tap all your mana on bonfire. <laughs> Todd did bring it up a great point that you just did as well. <laughs> Why play bonfire if you're not going to tap out and slam it anyway? <laughs> I like uh, game times. <laughs> Got on the hype train, but he missed his stop. No, absolutely. But who doesn't want to be on the hype train with the game bowl coming up? If you get that reference, choo-choo. Oh, it's happening. Do you? I don't. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Hashtag Clegane Bowl. I might be mispronouncing the oh, last we, name. Oh, I thought you said something else. I know what you're talking about. Oh, Choo Choo. Choo Choo. <laughs> Better to get in game two than game three. I can't argue with that. Oh, yes. We, we've we got at least two people who are who are all aboard the hype train. One way stop to the bowl. God in style. <laughs> I don't think Mason's used to Bonfire just not killing in that situation. <laughs> uh. Impact certainly feeling the hype train. Man, I love a good hype train. <gasps> oh, I have something to do between rounds. Today is an extremely special day, and I forgot to mention it earlier. More Tibble eating? No, God, I'm never going to eat another magic card. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was traumatizing. <laughs> just blended Mason, it up in like so a smoothie or something. Mason looking at a one-lander and keeping it. Yeah, I don't know what's in his hand. But he's he, got to put he that on the bottom off, if it's not a land. He can play off a of one land reasonably well, I, depending on what it is. I actually really disagree with that. Um, it looks like he has all one drops, except for an Antarctic command, and he has the path as well. <sighs> Graft Digger's Cage, is it? I'm, I'm thinking of something else. So he's, we have Graft Digger's Cage, and we have uh, Rest in Peace, it looks like, in his deck now. That's true. We won't say any more. Graft Digger's Cage, yeah, it stops like blood gas and stuff, huh? I'm trying to think of what else it is. Tadev, you are correct. <laughs> so, turn one Wild Nacatl for Mason. Yeah, I totally thought you said something else originally when you said that. Free game wall. Oh. I totally knew what you were talking about after that. Okay, cool. I do watch the show. <laughs> and a Viscerous here from Joe. Not a bad start. Gets one of his sack outlets out. What happened with Mason? Mason got a bonfire off the, off the top. His opponent was at seven, and Mason had seven lands. He also had a bolt and a uh, and an Atarkus command in hand, mm -hmm. and tapped out to deal six damage to his opponent who was at seven. Mm -hmm. uh, he just had to keep one up for the bolt. Yeah, I mean, he had to keep one up for the bolt. He could have kept up three. There were different. There was different options. He had he had ways, <laughs> is the point. And Mason with the one lander drops down the curtip. I really don't actually agree with him going for this one lander, because while he can operate off of it, uh, Soraka bananas. <laughs> when I played League for a short bit, that was that was the character that I enjoyed playing it because I liked killing people with bananas because I really don't like bananas. But um, welcome, thanks for hitting that follow button. It's great having you. Mason has a lot of white drops. <coughs> it's unfortunate because he doesn't have white as well, so the path is essentially a dead card. Right, and the main thing is that if you look at two lands right now, he is pretend presenting a decent clock, but he could have presented you know two of these critics last turn. Yeah. And then he'd be uh, representing for seven damage this turn as opposed to just the uh, five, which means that next turn he's, and it's just or I'm sorry, the, just the uh, four because of the, he only has the two lands. Also, uh, I believe another card in his hand is Grandma Lava Mancer, and uh, that's essentially not a great one drop in this position. But uh, Soraka, I completely understand and I certainly appreciate it. But uh, a terminate taking down the one blocker that's up. Getting some beats in here, yeah. Love it. Gravecrawler can't block anyways, right? If you're not going to block, you might as well attack. Absolutely. <coughs> so, heading back into Mason's turn. Still no land drops down a Grim Lava yeah, Mancer. It's been a little rough, especially. Do you have a scry too? No, he was, uh, he was you on the draw. Yeah, you got to go for the attack. Mind, yeah. Mason does not want to be in a position of being the blocker. He needs a land really bad. See a path, Tark's command is that a rest in peace, the third card down? Possibly, and that could be why he ended up keeping it. Uh, yeah, I don't remember seeing that in the beginning, but he might have. But with four mana right now, we're removing that one with a... I can't even tell what that is. Uh, oh, that's an unmake. Yep. <laughs> what? Spicy, spicy. Oh my goodness. 
So Noxon down to 11, and we've got the weirdest of races right now. Is Unmake better than Vindicate here at all? Or what's not Vindicate? What's the new one? I guess you lose life with the new one, right? You lose life with the new one. Still strike. I mean, the other one hits non-lane permanence, however, which is yeah. very unusual. But uh, we have a Rift Bolt from Mason, so... I mean, Mason's still dealing a lot of damage, even off of one land. Like, he's got Joe down to five. Uh, I mean, Joe's in What's trouble. Rift Bolt coming out? Joe is definitely not in a good spot. I think he might have one of the life gainers at, at the moment. Well, he can't block with a uh, grave crawler either, so he's gonna have to play something here. Okay, we have that's to a good start for him. If we can get a second one of those out, okay. A viscerous here, and then we're just gonna have to start sacking the team to get some life back, because he's looking down eight damage, so he's gonna have to do some blocking and then possibly get the uh, viscerous here in the way of one of those creatures. Yeah, and if something like a uh, Tarkos Command is able to be played, that can mess up the clock a little bit too. Especially Absolutely. when he's able to attack well, all his creatures. And Antarchus Command right now will take the game. Well, he can sack in response. Uh, you would just attack with the creatures first. Yeah, that's it. what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. <laughs> he looks like he could just move rest in peace to the top of his hand though. And But he also has the Antarchus Command. Mm -hmm. But he is putting himself down to 8. Yeah, if he goes he down swings, to 6... Swing, swing. I don't Did Joe just... Joe's not dead, is he? If both a Tarkus can Oh, no, I was thinking if he had two Zulaport Cutthroats. My bad. Because you attack, you My bad. sack the oh, man. Grave Crawler. Yeah, he'd be but at he exactly has the win. one, I believe. Like, if he goes for the Tarkus command beforehand, he still has the win, because Joe gains the life, and then Mason just swings in for four. Or for five now. He can block two things, though. Either, But he either blocks two things, tries to gain life in Mason, Tarkus commands, or he Tarkus commands. He would have to sack, to sack. He would have to sack, sack, go to four. And then he would be at one after blocks with no creatures. So he's about to gain two life, and... Oh, no, you're absolutely right, because the Zulaport Cutthroat is still out. And right there, he had to attack, or he just lost, because he had to uh, sacrifice the Gravecrawler, right? So that's that's an unusual Yeah, he play. had to sack the Gravecrawler. So I think that that is a missequencing yeah. by Mason, because he could have gone for the attack first and then skull correct in response to any life gain just to take the win. Uh, I don't think he wanted to attack first because then he, you don't want him to be able to block. He has to. Uh, oh, because then he would have three. He, yeah, he had yeah, to yeah. sacrifice the grave crawler and a viscerous seer. You're yeah, absolutely and true. And then when he attacks, he has to block, block. He'll be at one with no creatures. You are absolutely true. Not that he's in a great spot, but you're not dead. And uh, so he had like bolt and terminate or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly what lands I mean, he had, but he had no, him out. Yeah, and uh, Mason, Mason taking it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and head back up to the booth. Let's, uh, we've got Let's 20 minutes left, match. so we're going to find another one for you, and I'm going to say hi to everybody. My goodness, some unusual stuff happening today. Hello everybody, and thanks for joining. My name is TJ. We got a studio light, so hopefully the lighting is a little bit better. We also have an HD camera, which should be arriving tomorrow. You are absolutely true, there he'd be at three with no creatures, so... I guess, uh, I guess definitely didn't work out quite the way there, or one. Looks whatever. like we don't have anything for a little while, at least. Okay. Everyone's, everyone's in the middle of games. So. Uh, I'm gonna put... Hey, Joe! Could you be on lookout duty for uh, another game? If one Thank ends. You. Excellent. So, we have that going, and it is great to have all of you here. Yes, we are gonna have the HD camera in time for the Legacy. Did the green screen get ironed? Interestingly, no. However, we are intending to do that soon. What happened is that we got a new studio light which is providing us with multiple sources of light, which is making the green screen significantly more effective. And it's I'm, cryptic command, so I like it. It's cryptic command, though. I like leaning into it. That's yeah, you keep leaning into it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining. My name's TJ. Harry. And we're streaming from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington, doing some modern tonight. We do stream four times a week, and we have got the additional... Uh, oh man, this Saturday, this Saturday, 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 be there. Bring your friends, bring your enemies, bring your, bring your pets, bring your parents, bring everyone. Because you can take them to the computer or to the shop and you can compete or watch these yeah, super legacy show them. Yeah, win a box. It is going to be super amazing. Excellent. All kinds of awesome because we're going to have like five rounds of legacy. Yeah, if you guys like competitive magic, it's going to be legacy and then modern right after, right? Right? And we got drafts going on. We're probably not streaming those because we got modern going on. But no. There's going to be a lot of exciting high level magic here. Oh my goodness. So five rounds of that into a cut to a top eight. 
So we're looking at eight rounds of Legacy? Eight rounds of Legacy with Coleman and I in the booth. It's going to be a long time. Hopefully someone sends us a pizza, wink, wink, I'll nudge, still be nudge. on stream, guys. Don't worry about it for Legacy. You'll be on stream, of course, in the finals. Yeah. Going to be an That's awesome plan, time. And then, from that, we're going to transition straight to modern. It's going to be such a long day. It's going to be uh, chaos and it's going to be fun. <laughs> Brandon, you put on to Eric, who uh, who did not do it. <laughs> but that's hilarious. Uh, no, this is Harry. He goes by two names, but this is his preferred one. I just tend to go off of the wrong one, as it turns out. I don't really care that much. I had a lot of Nathans in my class growing up, so I kind of just went with my middle name, which is Harold. Whew. It is going to be so much fun. I can't wait, but otherwise you should hit the follow button if you haven't yet. It's all kinds of fun. Now, Nathan, you are a brand new uh, new host to us. Granted, you had a little bit of a trial run unexpectedly, but you um, you joined for the first time, so let's do our usual three questions with you. Are you ready for it? Uh, sure. All right. A little scared. A little bit scared? Yeah. Okay. Question number one. When did you start playing the game? I originally played back in the Kamigawa block. Um, and I played in high school for a little while back then, and then uh, I believe Laura went right at the beginning of Laura when I stopped playing, and then a couple years after college I started playing again at Theros, and I've been playing since then. Nice. Big Ben, it's not over yet. We're just getting another match on as soon as we can here in round two of four. Yep, everyone's currently in game, so we're just waiting. Yes. So it is going to be all kind of good. Now, we have also got uh, the second question, which is... What is your favorite style of deck to play? Uh, I like grindy control decks usually. Um, I do like Kiki Court as well. Basically anything that has a lot of lines of play, a lot of interaction. Okay. So you are, you're a value kind of player. I am. I try to be at least. Okay. Have a little bit of fun with uh, Revel Arc and Kiki Jiki going off, off of each other. <sighs> Love it. Is someone wanting me to die? What's going on there? Oh man. Oh, just drink 10 5-hour energy so I get 50 hours of energy for the Legacy stream. Uh, that doesn't sound advisable. Yeah, I think the calculation's <laughs> off because uh, we have so much excitement as well. You need to take a little bit more energy. True. Maybe not you because you're always excited. but All the, the time! For the rest of us. <laughs> but uh, Coleman did dance recently. I've been sharing that picture. It's. Have, did you see the video? Uh, I saw the beginning at work, and then I did. I had something have come up right away, and I haven't gotten back to there it. There is a legendary air guitar solo by him at the end. I didn't get to that. Part, it's so. it is so. I'll we'll have to watch it here soon. Great. Um, and the final question: What is your favorite dinner? My favorite dinner. Um, I like Italian usually, and uh, I usually make my own food. So I just made like a Szechuan sauce, uh, like noodle vegetable. Um, beef kind of mixture. Color me impressed. <laughs> Last night I had Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Generic brand, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't eat fast food or anything like that. So. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Um, lean towards waffles. I don't eat either one too often. Okay. I actually go pancakes, but that's because I'm one of the things that I make is I can make incredible from scratch pancakes. Can I choose crepes? Is that like a third choice? Yeah, you can choose crepes. Okay, choose crepes. Yeah, if you have All any right. questions for Harry, by the way, fire away. I'm ready. I'm warmed up now. Oh, yeah. Find the energy drink wide 44. I have drank every energy drink I've ever seen on the shelf. I have definitely tried that one. Uh, caffeine doesn't really affect me anymore. I had a bunch of those when I was in high school. Yeah, too many. Yeah, I, I started drinking coffee for the first time a couple weeks ago. So somehow I got through college without it and... Now I'm bad at waking up in the morning and getting all that energy throughout the day. Yep. Uh, my favorite deck, uh, I currently play Kiki Chord mostly in Modern, or some variation of Control. Um, and then I played Lantern before, too. Yes! Uh, and when is Half-Life 3 coming out? Apparently you look like Gordon Freeman. That's awesome. <laughs> um, actually not allowed to uh, reveal that information. Good answer. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with all these questions. Favorite card ever. Go. Favorite card ever? Yep. Uh, I gotta go through all the lists of the blue cards. Um, <laughs> FM Joshua, you're gonna love the answer here. I'm, uh, I'm always a fan jar? of... I am a fan of the Brain in a Jar. Um, Beck and Call. 
Okay, I'm a fan of that combo. Uh, I do like Cryptic Command. It's probably one of my favorite cards. Okay. Um, because I liked it way back in the day, and I had a couple, and then uh, they jumped up in price, and they see a lot of different... Yeah. It's just like, it's a very control card. Thanks, Chapin. Yeah. Okay, ignoring value, what card do you want to open most and first pick in Eternal Masters? You gotta fight uh, through. There's two big cards that I need, and they are Wasteland and Force of All for my Legacy deck. So I'm borrowing some cards for Saturday, um, but those are the two cards I need the most. Nice. Since the control decks, do you like Lantern Control? I have played Lantern Control I for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. More, more than most people could handle. Coffee or tea? Uh, coffee, I guess. Recently I started coffee. I don't really drink tea. What's so. your day job? Uh, I'm a chemical engineer. I work on uh, window profiles. So we like use uh, powder pellet forms of plastic, and we melt it down and form it into shapes. Uh, let's see. Is Legacy worth it to get into right now? Probably. Uh, yeah, it's probably not a bad time with uh, Eternal Masters coming out. A lot of those prices will probably jump back up after a while too so mm -hmm. and uh hard, hard to say the lands are never uh, gonna be going down that we know of because they're on the reserved list so okay and we're gonna fire through the last couple that i see and then we're gonna get ready for i think some other things that are happening but uh what happened to your hand you, it broke i did break my uh finger uh dirt biking last weekend so i got another week and then hopefully it's all healed up uh, is Dredge or Eldrazian Taxes out there? I believe Dredge might be. Uh, I'm not sure about Eldrazian Taxes, but it's possible. Um, but I, I couldn't tell you for certain. Uh, favorite constructed unplayable card? Brain in the jar? <laughs> Back I mean, and call. It should, it should be, it should be right, but I, I, I felt like I broke it a little bit. Um, you and Bruce by. Yeah. I, had a, it, I got Judge called every single time I did the combo at uh, GPLA. <coughs> That, that and Beck and Call are probably your answer there. Okay, so, um, what decks do we have in the room? A variety of them. I can't tell you what all of them are. We're in the mid 20s, I think. By the, does it look like that when you're out there? Uh, it looks a little lower than that. Okay, um, so maybe right around the 20 that we're. Yeah, I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Can I be Josh versus I? Is this it's round Josh three? This is round three. Okay, so we're yeah. actually into round three. Yep, yeah, we just. Yeah. What? Excellent. I, don't know, I haven't thought what he's on, he's on, but he could be on something else. Do you want to I just send him back to us, okay. and where I, will you I be sitting? This. Okay. Where will you be sitting? Uh, I guess I'll go wall side. Okay. 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 Cool. I'll go wall side. All right. We so uh, it's 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 kind of like a mirror. Uh, we have uh, David on uh, Esper Burn, and we have uh, Josh on Naya Burn. Yes. And um, if you're wondering. What is Esper Burn? It sometimes goes by ad nauseum. So uh, we will answer some of those more questions as we get between games and things like that. And definitely at the end, we always stick around for a little bit to answer some more stuff. We're going to put you through the gauntlet of questions. So if you have Apparently, questions, yeah. save them at the end. I'm not used to so many viewers, so it's like... Oh man, it's got to be questions, yeah. To the 214 people that are just joining, thank you so much. We're getting ready for round three. My name's TJ. Harry. His name's Harry. And uh, we're streaming from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington. If you haven't yet, that follow button that is sometimes up here and sometimes down there means a lot to us. I'll even touch my chest, apparently. So, see you down there. All the other <laughs>I actually don't know Vintage well enough to answer that question. I would play Vintage Burn if given the opportunity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did update my uh, tapped out deck list, the Brain and Jar, for the, on the, the, the Geek GP Fort one, yeah. On the Geek Fortress page? No, I just updated it on tapped out and I figured it was a link to the deck. So. It, it might be. Okay. It might be, but if it isn't... Oh no, I think that one... Either way. We shall see... If nothing else, uh, I can give you the access to it. But yeah, I played a Jeskai control deck with Brain and Jar to uh, play a Fused Beck and Call. So that's what I played at GPLA, so we should have that deck list up on our page. True. Revel Doc, I like to mix it up, though I will be asking that eventually. But Tapsphere did find us, and apparently Revel Doc asking the question for me. I do like to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> Occasionally. Uh, yeah. Where do I personally think Emrakul is? Also, where is Tibble? Uh, both are going to be showing up in Eldritch Moon, apparently. But I am so... Oh, Mayama Juan Blanco? Not anymore. <laughs> oh, that Tibble tasted so bad. Oh my goodness. 
So we have Ad Nauseam going up against Nyaburn. Ad Nauseam, pretty favored in this situation, yeah, I Yeah, I think so, with the ability not to die and kill at instant speed and go off pretty quick. The big thing is that I'm not going to say it's clearly Ad Nauseam's favor, because uh, Josh is can apply a huge amount of pressure. Yeah, but stuff like Angel's Grace, and uh, I can't remember what the enchantment is off the top of my head, but that allows you to get Infect instead for a little while. Right. Uh, can so, prevent it. Um, I think it's the kind of situation in which, like, Ad Nauseam... <laughs> generally has trouble against some of those faster decks. Normally you think things like Infect and Affinity, but Burn can be problematic when you're looking at the very fast decks. Yeah, the the reason that like Infect is better though is because <sighs> That's it mitigate it's only Angel's Grace that stops it. Exactly. And um Phyrexian on life, yes. And, thank you guys. And actually the Angel's Grace doesn't even stop it. It basically means that you don't die that turn, but you will die. No, oh, you're right. Yeah. Yep. Which so, he gets techni technically still win if he has another Angel's Grace or something like that. But yes. But uh, it's definitely not good. Yeah. So we have a situation in which Josh might be able to take the win just by applying enough pressure. But David, if he's able to yeah. get through any of that, he ha he's not actually like at a lot of risk from Josh as far mm -hmm. as a lot of his things just don't... Actually, Skullcrack sh could be particularly interesting. <coughs> Another nice thing for David is I don't think he takes a lot of damage off of his lands because I think they... Uh they're the lands that recognize if you have like a certain type of land in play, like a plains or an island or their temple, stuff like that, or he plays off of artifacts. True, but the mana base can be fairly slow on yes. the hand. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look like he has the quickest hand either. Apparently, oh yeah, state-based actions would happen before you get priority. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> oh. My. Goodness. Uh, that is not a white black, that is a shock land. So, uh, we have got three land, and we have the Lotus Bloom, so David not doing a whole lot yet, doesn't it? So he's actually got a slow start. Josh has got a chance. Yeah, Josh has, uh, he's drawn a lot of lands, but it looks like he's got a couple burn spells still, so. And if he can cast two of them this turn, that's pretty close to a kill, because he's looking at, uh, five damage Six, with two burn seven, spells. Nine, ten, just in no, creatures. It, it should be... It would be if he didn't have Angel's Grace because of the Frost Triggers. Right. Okay. So, the, oh, does he have the Angel's Grace in hand? Uh, he has two, I believe. Beautiful. So David at least in a lot of trouble, but, but that need, might buy he, him enough time. Yeah, but he's going to have to fade next turn as well. And actually, here's an interesting thing. Uh, let's take a look at Angel's Grace, because damage now can no longer be prevented. Mm -hmm. Angel's Grace says... Oh, I don't think that that's actually preventing damage. It, it lets you go to one. So then uh, Josh could attempt to play another. It does not place. prevent damage. Interesting. So actually, he would still just end up going to one. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking that if it keeps it from going, like if he would still go to zero at that point. Oh, so okay, yeah, no. now the skull crack does not actually keep him from just going down to one. We have a slaughter pact, but for David, that means going down to five to cast it. And it means that he's going to have to tap down out at the next turn. Yeah. So watch for that one. And, uh,. Yeah, Josh, I think he has a Lava Spike left. Or no, it's a Searing Blaze. So uh, that actually doesn't help him too much here. But having instant speed uh, damage is actually relevant too because if you try to kill him on your turn, then if you have another Burn Spell, mm -hmm. you put it on there. Yeah, and Josh, I mean, Searing Blaze needs a creature to target. Yeah. And uh, David is not going to present one. So David's got a... He looks like... Yeah, so he's still got the two Angel's Graces because he used the Slaughter Pact. Um, so he's got to fade uh, just a couple draw steps, but it looks like he's going to be in a decent position with Ad Nauseam and should have uh, Angel's Grace back up. Thank you to Shadow for uh, hitting that follow button. We greatly appreciate it. And to anybody else who's hit follow uh, tonight, you thank you so much. We do appreciate it. So I actually don't like the bolt here. Um, I would have liked to see the... Oh, no, it's a steering place. I, like, I was thinking it was a lava spike for some reason. Yeah, th thank you. But it uh, looks like going for that one... Right now, it's also going to mean that the Monastery Swiss Spear is able to at least have a prowess trigger. Mm -hmm. But possibly just going for this one. The big problem now is that David is David just will go trying to, one. to buy time. Yeah, David will go to one, and uh, it looks like he has an untapped land, so he should be able to add Nauseam next turn. He's going to need an Ad Nauseam is five, though, right? Mm -hmm. So he's going to need another mana for that Angel's Grace on his turn for him to actually go off. He's only going to be at five. Unless he draws like a saving spirit guide or something. <sighs> Doesn't look like he hit it. Getting pretty close. Uh, I'm Dead Gil. Thank you so much for hitting that follow button. I really appreciate it. It's awesome having you. And uh, anybody else who's brand new, it's great.
It's uh, yeah. yeah. I can't thank you all enough. Appreciate you guys tuning in. It means a lot. Same to uh, Demon at Arms. <laughs> at first, I was like Demon at Arms, huh? <laughs> And we get another Searing Blaze. Ah, Library Manipulator. Someone's a Miracles player. You should check us out on Saturday for our Super Sweet Legacy event. Eight rounds of Sweet Sweet Legacy. <laughs> oh, it is going to be phenomenal. So we now do have the Lotus Bloom. I don't think we have the Ad Nauseum. Yeah, he, well, oh. he has Ad Nauseums, but now he has no Angel's Grace, so he <laughs> so. <laughs> can't go through his library. And does he die for that one? He... Ad nauseum is every card you draw, you lose a life, correct? So I don't even think he has... It's uh, for for mana cost. For their converted mana cost. So no, he can't oh, go okay. off this turn. Yeah. But um, he needs to wait until he hits an Angel's Grace, or until he hits a Phyrexian on life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I do appreciate all the people who are currently followers. So he should be dead here then, I believe. He is dead on yes. the board. Uh, I don't think that he has any options. Um, he doesn't have any draw so. available to him. So, I think that Josh got game one just by forcing him to use all of the Angel's Graces just one turn yep, too quick. Yeah, just one turn. But we're going to cast it. I mean, I think David just wants to go out on his own terms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Ah, what are the chances? Pretty high. <laughs> 100%. Uh, 100. <laughs> so, heading into a game two, burn taking game one there. <laughs> and now let's see everybody talk about that one. Uh, <laughs> Golden Pineapple. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. Looks like we're currently at about 240 people. I appreciate every single one of you ever so much. I will say... Someone mentioned it earlier, I'm noticing some new people on the stream, and I'm going to toss it out. I apologize since I asked this a lot, but if you're brand new, it is very interesting to me, because how did you find us? Some people have found us from Reddit. I know that uh, a decent amount of people were finding us from uh, the most recent one on Spikes last Monday, yep. some things like that, yep. but also some people just finding us through the Twitch page, and, mm -hmm. and I'm just curiosity gets to me sometimes and it, knowing what the best way to advertise ourselves it matters I mean like we're on the top stream right now too Gracie L thank you so much for oh if your name is Gracie and then your last initial is L I'm gonna be super impressed I don't know right that would be that would be amazing <laughs> Justice Peanuts thank you very much I do remember that <laughs> yeah, the problem, I guess technically he could have hit Slaughter Pact off of the uh, Ad Nauseam, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't in yeah. a good spot there either way. Mm hmm. Uh, guy who increases. That's super cool. Welcome to MTG. Thank you. If you ever do have questions, feel free to ask them. We'll happily do anything that we can to assist um, in, in whatever way that we can. J Gold, thank you so much. I like Hoon's way. Just uh, randomly clicked on Magic Tab on Twitch. Hey, there we were. Sometimes that that matters, and and apparently it works. But uh, Poon, thank you so much. I like Re to think that everyone's going around gathering all their friends to watch us. See, that would be so incredible. Retinal, thank you so much Double for dog. finding us that way. But uh, I mean, if anybody ever does, uh, hey, logical glitch. Thanks. We try. Thirteenth Fox, it's great seeing you. But if you ever want to tell your friends, we appreciate it. But I also get really uncomfortable when I start asking for that kind of stuff. And, like, my arms go... That's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> Guy who increases, thanks for the follow. Uh, Mayama Juan Blanco, we did hit 500 viewers. Or do you mean today? But we have gotten there. Alex. PC1. This is awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. I kind of feel like we're like Thor. All these lightning bolts coming down. Oh, yes. Hoon, thank you so much. This is all kinds of amazing. You want to play the card game, but how should you start? By an intro deck? Intro decks are a really good way to get into the game. I think uh, I like the uh, Duels of the Planeswalker for new players as well. Yes. You usually pick up older versions for a couple bucks. Uh, let's see. A card viewer to highlight specific Zop cards. Please. Thanks for uh, joining us. I have some good news for you, Library Manipulator. There you go. I'm loving this Chain Lightning right now. Everybody who's hitting the follow button... I cannot thank all of you enough. I am. I say this a lot, and you'll get used to it. But I, I am always like completely. <laughs> thanks, board. <laughs> but 
But, uh... Do, do that. So, I actually kind of like the intros, but honestly, my biggest advice would be to go to your local game store. You can find them. And, um... And find some people. If you don't have a friend who's playing, if you go to your local game store there, people should take care of you. Vivid Creek. Another one. Vivid Creek. And that's a good card. That is a good card. But, uh... That's true. I guess I've used intro decks in the past, but that was also when it was just me and that other player. So I could understand that just from a pure starting standpoint, it could be a little bit problematic. You might want to start with something with two decks initially. Yeah, it depends on your position. Mostly start at your local game store. If you can find that, if you if you have access to Duel of the Planeswalkers, yes. If you have access to your local game store, that is going to be a very important one. And uh, just a quick shout out, Liberator. Lib Liberator. Liberator's been here. Pink They're rehitting it. Now, Pink Popo. Thanks. The Liberator, thank you anyway. To all the people who hit unfollow and then refollow. I'll take it either way. Right? We I'm not here enough. I, need, I get to experience this now. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> David starting with a five card hand. That's clearly bad. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the uh, resident burn player. How does that make you feel? It really makes me think that Hope. Actually, Josh did keep one destructive reverie in hand, but oh my goodness. That is. A little brutal. Brutal! Josh can get double ley line, and if David kept a bad hand for this, he could fight through this. Also, if he's able to get into creatures, but creatures, and he doesn't. I, I do have a quick question. I don't know if you know this. Is okay. Josh running the Nakatl version? No. He is not. So I, this is actually worse for him. This is worse. That. And this is one of the reasons why you would run Nakatl. Mm -hmm. The main two reasons is one, you like. Uh, uh, QC Sando, thank you so Can't much. Keep up with all the follows. I know. I'll have to do like a blanket thank you as soon as I can. I apologize for not doing individual. Mm -hmm. As always, when I get to that and we're between, toss it into the chat that you're brand new. I'll happily welcome you by name. But um, if he gets into like a second destructive reverie, he's got all burn spells though. He has options right now. Meme Dragon, that's pretty good. David Bradbury, by the way, the ad nauseum player, the person who put together all of our tech. Like, yeah, he's, the, he's like the behind-the-scenes stream master. He is the behind-the-scenes stream master. Oh, man. This is, uh... You don't have a local store? That is so unfortunate, Shadow. Um, in that case, then Duel of the Planeswalkers is a really good tool. I believe a Tarkas command does hit, because it says... It's each opponent. Each opponent doesn't target. Correct. So that will hit. He And, uh... Get in there, boys. I mean, if he draws into the second one, he's got... He's, he's got he's really got to draw creatures, and he's got to draw them soon, I think. I don't know what's in David's hand, but it looks like he's got... David's got all the pieces, he's just waiting on the lands. And he's got darkness as well. <laughs> so uh, he's going to be able to go off next turn because he's of the Simeon Spirit Guide, I believe. Ganon, thank you so much. So we do have the Ad Nauseum. Yeah, he has the ability... Because he has Ad Nauseam, Angel's Grace, and he'll have a uh, Simeon Spirit Guide will be an extra... L I guess he has to draw a land. He needs one land, but he has a darkness to buy himself some time from those creatures. Yeah, so he's in, <laughs> a, he's in a pretty comfortable position at 17 on turn 4. Okay. So, do, oh, we're going for one of them. Do we have the second one? Uh, you might as well get him out of the way, too, though. Uh, doesn't look like it. Woo! Um, Leyline does actually protect Planeswalkers. It does. That's a fun fact, actually, and something that doesn't often true. I know, and you guys called me out on stream when I was playing Mardu once, and I was using Oli to protect my Planeswalkers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. Um, we've got close to... Oh, he got two Simeon Spirit Guides, so he has not As long as he's got white mana, he mm -hmm. can do it, and that's going to be a game-two win for David. Well, he has to, uh... Golden he needs Pine more lands to uh, actually play the Lightning Storm. Right? Uh, he usually, usually uses three Simeon Spirit Guides, doesn't Oh, he? but he just used two! So he needs another land, actually. You are he actually... Does, oh, he has a land drop, sorry. He yeah, yeah okay, drop. he hasn't used one. Okay. He has a land drop and two Simeon Spirit Guides. But, um, let's see here. That is, that is absolutely true. So, any reason he doesn't crack the fetches for Josh? Because he doesn't have a reason to right now, is the biggest reason. Uh, I um, wouldn't actually crack the fetches as Josh, because the damage is pretty negligible, you're going to die to Ad Nauseam, and I would rather get that short amount of thinning. But the thinning is so negligible. It is, for the most part, but so the life gain is completely negligible. True, I mean, you can also go for, for it at the damage. end step and just do the one. So that is true. I guess it's not going to hurt him too bad. 
and I guess it is a non-zero amount, which, uh, all things considered, is is non-zero. It adds up, especially with burn too, uh, where you're running so many less lands. Mm-hmm. So I can I can understand that one, but overall, I don't think that it was. I don't think I wouldn't say for certain that it was incorrect not to fetch, but it maybe wasn't correct not to. I. Uh, it doesn't strike me as something that would have actually changed the outcome. I, I think the game was over when the double A line hit, essentially, because he had a uh, very damage heavy hand. Oh, absolutely, he did. Absolutely. But hey, it's uh, getting those little advantages that you win games where you shouldn't, so. Yeah. Do we ever play Popper? Occasionally, actually. I have uh, Popper Affinity put together. How about you? Uh, I do not. Cryptic Command and, like, Tarmor Voice and stuff are. Available Our popper, commons. So, uh, you have Nimble Mongoose now. I do have Nimble Mongoose now. <laughs> There's actually uh, Eternal Masters brought a lot of popper cards. Mm -hmm. So hitting, it, hitting a couple different uh, types of players. Yeah. So getting into game two, Josh on the play again, he might have a slight advantage here, especially if he kind of plays with that knowledge and maybe keeps a hand that might be, have a little bit more resiliency to uh, Leyline of Sanctity. Mm -hmm. But having two of them was brutal. And there's always a chance he brought in like a Nature's Claim or, or not Nature's Claim, but uh, something like that. Something. <laughs> no, I know. It was, like, no, he did like, not. Away. Um, but something <laughs> besides Destructive Reveille, like he could have Back to Nature or something like that. Uh. <laughs> uh, disenchant. Naturalized style cards. So. Still from, from Josh. Yeah. No. He, I was saying he could have another besides destructive rubber, really possibly. Nope. He has four destructive rubber. All right. You're the burn master, <laughs> so you, you know better than I do. But he does have ways to get around with creatures, stuff like uh, Eidolon can deal damage, a Tarkus command. Yeah. As well, like different different ways to do it. Absolutely. And he has ways to possibly get around it. I mean. If he's really worried about it, the most that he would ever dig into is maybe like a single wear and tear, mm -hmm. but that is not at all common, and it wasn't in his last list last time that I saw it. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't actually mind wear and tear too much here because there are a couple artifacts that can be relevant too, as well as Phyrexian on life. Yeah. And uh, David is running Pentad Prism. Him is actually banned in almost every popper paper, paper, pop, paper popper, in every proper paper popper event, him to Turok is banned anyway. There we yeah, go. Yeah, him, him sounds kind of good. Uh, that sinkhole, goblin grenade, and high tide are almost always uh, added to a unofficial ban list for popper. Yeah. For paper, for paper popper. Yeah. So, uh, David is responsible for creating the sick looking stream. Yes, David is responsible for all. The entire layout was put together by David. David is. I can't think of enough. He's been absolutely incredible mm -hmm. uh, as far as assisting us. It's been a great help. Okay, so we have got a Temple of Silence with a scry from David the Goblin Guide revealing a Frexen Unlife. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Josh has a very solid hand as well, though. And an Eidolon following it up. That is definitely a really good way to start applying pressure. David's going to be down to 16, looking at going down to uh, four, or 12 next turn, and that's if he doesn't cast any spells right now. And Josh so generous, too. That, uh, that goblin guide land. Oh, absolutely. Now we do have the ley line off of a draw, unfortunately. Um, actually, I don't think it's that bad for Josh. We see another monastery swift spear and an Atarkus command in his hand, so he's pretty. Well, as well as Eidolon out, um, so he's pretty ley line proof. I was thinking unfortunate for David to draw it. Oh yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> is GP Columbus modern this weekend? It, it is legacy. It's legacy, but it's also not being streamed. But you can find a legacy stream. Actually, that's going to be a great way for people Ooh, to find I us. Like I just realized it. yeah. it's not going to be streamed, but tell your friends because Geek Fortress will be streaming its Super Legacy Showdown for eight five rounds, rounds five, five rounds, rounds plus a cut eight. to top eight on Saturday. Whoa, are we going to just like that? Could be. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that means that we might actually get like a huge boost from just people looking for it. Yeah, take it. Tell your friends. <laughs> I need. There to make, will be legacy. I need to make a certain social media website post. <laughs> I disagree with Glimpse the Unthinkably here uh, that he should mull to Leyline. He does have Phyrexian on life, which is very good, and he, depending on his hand, he can go off very early. And with as well. Angel's Grace, also, yeah. mulling to a very bad like hand Especially with uh, Leyline against right now, Leyline would do almost nothing. Yes, Josh has not cast a single burn spell yet. It's like, very true, uh, and he is doing just fine. Yeah, he's gonna maybe cast a, an effect now if. He, 
If he has an Atarkas command, David is in so much trouble. And he does have an Atarkas command. Um, but, oh god. That is, that's a lot of damage. So we're looking at uh, 12 two, damage right now. David's going to be two, at 3. 2, 4, 5, 6, plus 3, 9, plus 3. This would have been 12. Yep, so David is going to... command. Oh, but goes for the Adelon instead. The, setting up the kill next turn, not a bad way to go about it. Yes, Phyrexian on life, uh, it's a 4 drop. It is a 4 drop, but it's going to also cost him 4 mana to even play. He does have a Simeon Spirit Guide in his hand, if he does elect to go for that. So he's going to take 4 off of just going for the activation there. With the 2 burn spells in hand, if he if Josh draws a land and David plays a Phyrexian on life, Josh has got an exact kill on board by going for the damage needed to put David down to exactly 0. And then, through the prowess triggers, he would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It has to That's exact. If Josh draws the land... Um, what does he have in his hand? He's got Natarkas Command and a Boros Charm. Um, so it's actually not because you have to deal him in separate instances. But that's 7 damage that would knock David, because he would be down to 7 after casting this Phyrexian of Life. Oh, because he'll be at exactly zero. Okay, I was zero. thinking it was a four drop. Okay, yeah, yeah. Draw. Josh has put himself into a position of yep. of drawing a land and winning the game. Oh my goodness! Tell me we did. We didn't. We didn't. That's how burn works though. When you want to land, you don't get it, and when <laughs> he can deal the exact seven, however, and he can deal. Oh no, Nine he's fine damage. anyways, because a uh, lightning he, lightning bolt is what he drew. So he'll have a lightning bolt plus Boros Charm. Oh, and that's enough to deal exact, and then it's not enough. Like, he would deal 9 damage through the prowess triggers, but the Eidolon would seal the deal, and David cannot cast any cheaper spells. Mm -hmm. That's going to take the win. Before. Oh, but he goes for it before combat. No! No! That's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seven. damage right now. That's knocking yeah, so to 0. he's giving David another turn, right? Yep. And so if he used the other thing, he, because of the prowess triggers, he would have done leap. He right? would have dealt right. 9, but because of the idol and the Great Rebel, David wouldn't be able to cast any of the spells that keep him from losing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So unfortunate there. Yeah, yeah. Though the split second on Angel's Grace, I guess, would get around that, wouldn't it? I don't know how that works exactly, because it's a, it's a cast off of Oh idol. no, triggered abilities can go up, can't they? Triggered abilities can go in the stack. You just yeah, can't. I believe so. You can't respond. Yeah, you can't activate abilities, but a triggered ability would still end up being just fine. So yeah. Plus, he, it wouldn't have resolved yet. He essentially, gave yeah, David an extra fine. turn. So well, no, just, no, you cannot reset. You cannot reset back to one. It just keeps you from going below one if you already are. So, man, is there enough burn to infect him out? Through the creatures and the burn in hand, Josh can get the kill here. David needs to win right now. I mean, he he just simply does not have an option, and yeah. it also needs to be done in a way that keeps him from taking. Uh, basically, he can't cast three spells that are converted mana cost yeah, three or less. And if actually, you know, Josh may have put himself in a good position. If David casts any of those spells, um, Josh, I guess maybe not an Angel's Grace, but Josh has the ability to respond with these burn spells. Yeah, but these burn spells aren't enough. No, but if David casts, if David casts that sleight of hand in hand, yeah, he'll go to negative or four in fact. Yeah, yeah. And then I, Josh I still think the other line of play before attacks is slightly better because I agree. Like, he can't play. Yeah, I I can agree with that one because it makes it to where you don't have to cast like, it means that you can't don't have to deal with an angel's grace and you don't have to like, mm -hmm. you just have the win locked out and David can't cast anything. This yeah. one, he has also, a very very slim chance. Yeah. Also, side note uh, with the. David with a little bit of mana problems, he can't actually play the Hallowed Fountain untapped because um, he doesn't have the life. He does not have the life. Unfortunate. Because if he did, he could, like, ley line and have, like, Angel's Grace or something weird up. And he could... But, oh, with both of them there. Yeah, I think... I don't think it matters. Oh, sorry. You know what I meant. For Infect. <laughs> Thanks, Snake. Okay. So I don't think that David has a way out right now. Interesting. Also, Josh, I know that you're maybe watching this later. Good to see, good to see Burn doing well. Now there is a saucy red-white control deck out there. Is today. there tonight? Uh, I didn't see all the decks. Donovan's on one that is running uh, Pyrohemia, as well as oh, Boros okay. Reckoner. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> I pl I played against him actually. It's uh, basically Scred without week. Scred. 
Yeah. I still play the spreads. They're too cool. Oh, I know. I know. But yeah, I played against him last week. He wasn't he wasn't too happy about Forge Tender and uh, Hornet's Nest. Bring for yeah. Uh, Forge ooh, that's really good. Yeah, it's my KP core. That's really good. So we are at negative seven or uh, sorry, we are at seven infect currently for player two. And uh, we are in some trouble. I mean, Josh has the win on board right now. Yeah. Because he doesn't need to worry about a burn spell from Josh. Because he, he'll he take eight damage for it. And even Angels doesn't save him because <coughs> he would just die on his turn. His upkeep. Actually, Angels would just deal the four damage. It would it would put him to 11 infect before the spell result. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's true as well. So, David... So he had to use the Angels before damage was dealt, technically. But then he would die on his turn anyways. And even still... Um, then we could have seen Josh cast in response. Mm -hmm. So that's well, you can't cast in response to the angels. Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. You you are correct. You are correct. Huh? Beautiful, and that's a kill. I'll see what else I can find. All right, we're gonna get another game for you or another match. So stick around. I'm gonna come up and tell you all about the sweet things that we do to the 284 people in here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you all up in the booth very shortly. And uh, we'll talk about some of the cool stuff that is happening. And also, I have a cool little, uh, I don't know, I, I've got something cool that's happening in my life that, that I can tell you about. See you up there. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. My name is TJ Harry, my uh, co-host for the evening. It is all kinds of excellent being here, we're getting great figures for a new streamer. Thank you to Goblet Guy. I really appreciate that. We have been... I, I am constantly uh, amazed at how well that we've done because we did not expect much at all. But um, all kinds of fun here. For those of you who may remember uh, recently... Let's see, is there a Twitter? So the easiest way to get in contact with us on Twitter is at RedBaronMTG. That is mine, since I'm in all of these streams. That is the best way to keep any kind of communication with me. I'll also let you know when we're streaming, anything like that. So, if you want to follow me on there, and I'll happily uh, help you out. So, I am, I am so thrilled. For those of you who remember, a couple weeks ago I went on vacation just before GPLA to Canada to see... Hey, Techno Kid, good to see ya. No, I don't. Th there might be a bit night hall, but I don't think so tonight. But um, anyway, it is Bolt Rogers, my grandfather's 90th birthday today. That is pretty cool. We're unfortunately in the middle of all the games currently again, and there's a uh, three going on right now. Thank you to all the people hitting the follow button. Did I miss a lightning show? You did miss a little bit of a lightning show. You also missed the announcement. Which is that today is my grandpa's 90th birthday. Wow. Yes. That's pretty awesome. Grandpa Bolt Rogers. <laughs> grandpa Bolt Rogers. He got nicknamed by the stream. Orion, thank you so much. I'm kind of tempted. You might be a different Orion, but I have a brother named Orion. Is that you? Because <laughs> you don't play magic, which makes it extra nice. Do I play Burn because his name is Bolt? <laughs> No, he was given the name Bolt Rogers when I was on vacation. Uh, everybody gave him the nickname of uh, Bolt Rogers. Ken Rep, thank you so much for the follow button. Oh, Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, everybody. That's super cool. I'm excited about it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for thanks for joining us, Ryan. It's awesome having you. Oh, I'm, I thought I'd ask. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> but no, actually, the name Bolt Rogers was apparently given to the entire lineage of my family. When I was down there? Oh, was it? Yeah, apparently everyone in my family is uh, his named Bolt Rogers. Different levels of Bolt Rogers? Yeah, absolutely. There's Grandpa Bolt Rogers, Papa Bolt Rogers, and then me. Uh, I guess just Bolt Rogers. Or baby Bolt Rogers. Baby Bolt Rogers. <laughs> uh, that leads, I want to lead into like that. I want my baby Bolt. Baby Bolt. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's a shock. Yeah. So, welcome. Thanks for joining. We should be getting some more matches on pretty shortly. Did you put uh, someone on looking duty? Or we just yelled at everybody, and then I put Joe in charge and Josh in charge. Two people in charge. Doubling up. Nice job with the double checks. Well, I figured they'd fight each other out, and then the winner would be, like, grab more powerful matches. Excellent. So, to, thank you so much for the people uh, hitting that follow button. Yes, I'm all about lightning bolts. I'm a fan. 
He I've is been, a fan. I've of. been known to cast a bolt or two. I've, I've played a couple in my time, but uh, different, <laughs> different styles of decks, definitely, than TJ. Mm hmm. We stream four times a week here. My name's TJ. Harry. And you, you could say my name is. <laughs> you just. I love that you're always just like, Harry. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Baby Bolt Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Cole. <laughs> oh, no, you were I Kevin. Was Kevin right? You were Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting nicknames from. Uh, kids earlier. Anyway, um, thanks for joining. We're streaming from a shop called Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington in the Pacific Northwest. We thank you all for joining us tonight. We might have another match. Have Reese on the wall on Kiki Court and Donovan oh. on his red line. Oh, oh my. Okay. <laughs> oh my. That's what I wanted to see. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's kind of what I wanted to see as well. We've got a little bit of an unusual situation here. Oh, what game are they on if you could find out really quick? Game number? <laughs> <laughs> so it's game three with Kiki Cord. You know why I'm excited for this matchup? I'm what? a Kiki Cord expert, so now I can finally like use my skills. And actually, Reese is new to the deck, which means that you will likely be pointing out some more optimal plays. Possibly. I know he's asked me questions about the deck before. But, but uh, Hoon, are you near Snohomish? Yes, we're in Snohomish. But let's head on down and uh, let us know where you are. And <clears throat> let's head it down. Boros Pyrohemia. S by the name on it. That sounds like it could be pretty, uh... Spicy. <laughs> also, Bump in the Night Rogers sounds way different than Bolt. See you down there. <laughs> Okay, and apparently we have still got some Infect up there, so I will remove that really quickly. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, we are, we are right at, uh... <laughs> that is awesome. Um, Hoon, I can't wait to meet you. Come in, say hi. If you want to let me know that when you'll be jumping in, it'll yeah. be all kinds of awesome. We, we, pro we throw events um, Monday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Absolutely. So, and we play uh, all kinds of formats here. We got a pretty good crowd usually, so come check us out. And uh, we can, oh, let's, let's tell about all the fun things that we do. Because each Monday, these are all Pacific Day Daylight, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. There we go. It's currently 9.28 where we are here. But every Monday at 6.30, we stream Standard. We do. Every Wednesday and Saturday, we stream Modern. And we play Modern if you happen to yeah. be in Wednesday the area. Wednesday's at 7 and uh, Saturday's at 6, right? Uh, Wednesday's at 7 and Saturday's at 6. Yep. You are absolutely correct. <clears throat> and on Fridays, you can join us for some Legacy at 7.30. I'm pretty excited about that one as well. And this Saturday, I keep hyping Special it up. Special event! Whoa! We gotta hype it up! Get on the hype train with us, because Saturday at noon, Pacific time, whatever time it is for you, it is nine and a half hours previous, but on Saturday. Check it out. Bring your friends. Bring some people. Bring your pets. Bring your enemies. Bring your cats, which are apparently not pets in this particular thing. But... Join us for that because it's going to be a legacy showdown of five rounds jumping into a top eight of legacy Smackdown in which it is going to culminate into a final match in which the winner will be walking away with a box of eternal masters in the showdown of their lifetime. Maybe not lifetime, possibly overselling it, but let's not oversell it. Let's double oversell it because it is going to be life changing. To be honest guys, I was just trying to stay out of the way there. That was a, <laughs> that was a lot of energy. Uh, we got to fix the names up top. Yes, we do. Yes, we <laughs> Donovan Spencer versus Donovan Spencer. Whoops. Thank you for noticing that. And let's fix that. Yes, you can take the hype, fairy. Absolutely. Because that way you'll end up playing the islands, which uh, is in Legacy is not bad. <laughs> so you guys still have money on Donovan? <gasps> Woo! This it's changed a little bit. <clears throat> Pets are your babies, not pet. Fair enough. Fair enough. This is the... I did play Kiki Cord last week against uh, Donovan, so I actually have experience in this match, too. Uh, did you I really? Don't, I don't know Race's exact list, and a couple of silver bullets can change it by quite a bit, though. <laughs> Look at Weston's comment. Just name it, GP Charlotte. <laughs> I missed something. We should just name our stream on Saturday GP Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> or uh, GP Columbus. <laughs> yes. So I turn on Grass Digger's Cage. Just Columbus slightly. <laughs> Turn one Graf Digger's Cage. Graf Digger's Cage is uh, pretty good. Um, Kiki Cord can outgrind a lot of decks even without the cord, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and it's not as detrimental as decks like Abzan Company because we're not playing the uh, Collect Company. Yes. 
And so, uh, Reese does still have some options. Granted, the, the beatdown game plan of Kiki Gord is a little bit worse than... Like Ooh! But this is not main this deck. Is this is three. game three. We had them jump over. This was a, a backup match for us as we're still in round three. So this is not main deck. And board. I see uh, Torpid Orbs as well. Multiple Torpid Orbs and multiple Graft Diggers Cages, which are both very good against. They're pretty Reese. solid. And apparently, uh... Apparently... We I'm not quite sure what we just saw there. <laughs> it looks like uh, Fetch, Bolt the Bird, go to his turn, and then Lightning Helix. Love it. Which which surprises me a lot, because you should be saving Lightning Helix for creatures, I would think, generally. Uh, I actually very much agree. And or we do least, have a... Yeah, sorry. The Kuzali Pride Mage is going to be excellent for mm -hmm. taking down the Scrapdriggers Cage. A Monastery Swisper from Donovan, not what I expected from this deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would I would have liked to see the lightning helix at least at instant speed on Reese's turn, but uh, it essentially he got through that anyways. Mm -hmm. Looks like he has two cords in his hand, unfortunately, too. Uh, spell sky and a voice. <sighs> has the revel arc, which will be able to bring back some things eventually if you can get into a point of casting it. Yeah. And just getting it in the way that could actually end up being a pretty nice way. And that, if nothing Ooh, else, rest it's up in to peace. He's taking out all of his options. Donovan's hate is so. <laughs> Absurd right now. The spell sky's decent here, but not having access to blue mana outside of Birds of Paradise or possibly a one of Noble Hierarch makes it a little bit more difficult. Yes, and the, the Helix did end up taking down the bird. And then he had to use the bolt yes. on Reese's face, which is uh, always a nice way to use it. The spell sky coming down. Donovan with. Yes, the light. Sorry, the Lightning Helix did. I thought he he threw down a bolt, but I think he. Uh, I think maybe changed the mind. Helix, yeah. Possibly his stomach hand. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just watch sometimes. Uh, to Brute Z, the ones that are most popular are definitely our modern nights. Wednesdays and Saturdays are, are far and away our most more popular streams. Modern is uh, the format we've been running the longest as well. It is. And Legacy <laughs> is, is second and Standard is third currently. Uh, but starting to pick up a little bit. But we've only been doing Standard for about a month, which might be part of the reason. So I'd like him to drop the Wall of Omens here and hopefully hit a land drop into Voice. Thank you. The bolt did hit the pride mage. I'm yeah. nailing it. No, I thought he played a bolt earlier, but I think he ended up wanting to play the helix, and then we got to the helix, the bird, and to bolt the pride mage. Uh, so I definitely would have played the wall of omens here. Uh, draw a card, and then if you hit a land drop, you could play the voice. Yeah. Yep. So. Can we get a vintage stream? We'd have to have a vintage tournament, <clears throat> which we currently don't have. <laughs> Okay, so heading into and Reese's turn. And there was turn. the land. Beautiful. So he could have, if he wanted to, go, go all moments into voice last turn. Which would have been an ex much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, not incredible by any means, but... I also would not have dropped the land here. I would have played the Wall of Omens first in case you hit, like, a Raging Ravine or something, uh, because it comes into play tops. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, we didn't. We had hit the Restoration Angel, but you're absolutely correct, is that when you don't need the land immediately... Mm -hmm and you have no intention of using it, it's not against the blue deck, we need to be prepared for a, a mana leak, Yeah. drop down the draw card first, that way you can actually just make decisions with more information, and that's Correct. what it kind of comes down to. Um, rest oh, Restoration was a good draw here, until uh, the third hate card, Torpid Orb, came out. Oh uh, my goodness. And usually these decks only play one Crusoli Pride Mage, and with Crusoli Pride Mage being exiled, it's going to be very uh, difficult for... There could be a Reclamation Siege. Our uh, Reclamation Sage is stopped by the Torpid Orb. Oh my goodness. So, I don't think that there's any... He's going to have to beat down in the air with, like, Restoration Angel. Um, and the Revelator. Donovan's not going to have necessarily a lot of removal. Um, stuff like Path will be able to take it out, but uh, Bolts and Lightning Helixes uh, aren't going to be good yeah. enough. So, that's got to be his game plan. Uh, especially the Spell Skite out there, he's going to be able to redirect something. So we're looking to basically do Restoration Angel beatdowns into Revlark beatdowns. Mm -hmm. And he's still got the Voice of Resurgence attacking, and if that ever dies, he's going to get a bigger creature out as well. But Oof. the rest of his cards are pretty much dead. Revlark's a decent card here, too, in the sense that uh, you at least have a 4-3 out. Who Flat. won uh, at Nauseam versus Burn? Burn took game three at the very end. Yep. Woo! That, uh, that is quite this, the tech on the side there. And apparently we are moving the dice up. So Pyrohemia will be decent here. He's going to need another red source. Um, I believe the one damage is for every red you pay. Uh, yes. To kill the uh, 
both the spell sky and the restoration angel that will be coming out here. Yeah, and actually doing that won't even like leave an empty board, which is when it. Uh, we're actually. Let's uh, the see. voice will trigger, and he will get a token after it because of the damage. Depends on when he actually goes How's for it. Look? Uh, too high. Too high? Yeah. Can you drop it down like? I'll it's just. I'm just gonna move the dice down like what? Like an inch. Like it, honestly, like an inch. It's oh, just. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Cool. And I don't actually understand why he didn't... Did he not play the Restoration Angel end of turn? So he... Because he's playing a Wall of Omens now. I don't. I would have played the Restoration Angel there for sure, just to have a beatdown plan. I mean, he still does have the way of going about the Parahemia, and he's not even going to lose the Parahemia. Might be waiting for him to use it so that he can then drop down something to clean up the board afterward. I still would like to get the Restoration Angel in because he doesn't have come into play effects. Luckily. This Boros Reckoner... And Pyrohemia oh, yeah. combine brilliantly. Yes. Like, just just beyond brilliantly. <laughs> so and another spell sky here. So Pyrohemia, at the beginning of the end step, if there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice it. But uh, pay a red to deal one damage to each creature and each player. Mm -hmm. Each red mana he spends right now deals two damage to Reese. Yep, and there's no way for him to redirect it either. And there is no way. I love... <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I kind of agree with Snake, but I'm going to let it go. Hmm? The off-centeredness on the dice. I think we're going <clears> to <throat> let it go at the moment, because when they end up readjusting them, they're not going to be in the same spot that they are. And, and the th Voice Resurgence attack here doesn't even help either. No. Because, I mean, you attack into the Boros Charm? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, uh... And now we're just going to see... Oh, God, I love this. I... Love this. He's running out of outs real quick. I think the restoration earlier for the beatdown was his best plan of attack because everything else is pretty much dead in his hand. Yeah, just because there's only the three red available. Yeah. I mean, didn't help that Domin had all the hate cards and then he finally drew the Boros Reckoner, but... It's... He's in a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> he went dead. too far. Okay. Dead. I was going to say, the fact that he put it too far to the left is brilliant. <laughs> Oh, man, that's hilarious. So, they, and now we're going to see people uh, mention that they're now offset to the right. <laughs> so, a pass back, and uh, I think he, we can all assume what we're about to see. So he, does, he does have a path here, um, which will he needed to draw, actually. That was his uh, best out to the board state as it is. And the fact, like, unfortunately, being at 11 and with Donovan at 13, it means that Donovan is going to win just the eventual Pyrohemia race. Um, he still has the restoration line um, where he starts getting in for three. Okay. And depending on if uh, Donovan's unable to draw uh, another red mana or a red, like a lightning bolt, he could technically go <coughs> through it. Yeah. Um, especially with Spellskite being able to redirect, it's probably going to have to be another red source. Man, <clears throat> this is just so perplexing to me. Now, I think what Donovan might be deciding right now is that he can technically pay the triple red and yeah, deal, yeah. and basically uh, hit the board of some creatures. I don't think that that's what he wants to do, but it would basically end up dealing uh, six damage yeah. to yeah. Reese, and I don't think that that's probably correct, but it's an option that he might be Well, he can, he can also uh, use the extra damage to kill... Uh, well, it's all in one swing from the Boros Reckoner. Huh? So I guess he could technically get rid of Spell Skite or something if he wanted to, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right play. That is true. <clears throat> and I actually, I think uh, Donovan's clock's faster than the Restoration Angel at the point. Yep. So uh, does uh, Key Cord run any mass artifact removal? I don't believe so. Uh, not generally. They usually run stuff like uh, Stony Silence for mass artifacts, but that's obviously not super effective not right in now. this situation. Usually they like to recur... Uh, Pride Mages or Reclamation Sages. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as we uh, start seeing some swings in, Donovan's going to be looking at... I mean, the funny part is that these Wall of Omens are at least keeping the Boros Reckoner from yeah. being like a complete house. Yeah, I mean, everything's essentially going to be removed on Donovan's side of the board. Um, that's why he's tapping for the Pirate game. He might as well get the damage done. But the voice uh, token's going to make it a little harder, too. Yeah, and it could be going for that one so that he's able to do, like, a full uh, actually wipe the board down the line, or just taking down the one thing that he yeah, can. Yeah, I would have actually liked to see the Boros Reckoner kill the Spell Sky. That makes the emblem, or, sorry, not the emblem, the token a 3-3, and he can kill it with Pyrohemia. Yeah. Uh, and then Spell Sky's already kind of annoying, in a sense, too. 
definitely a little bit problematic there. Uh, oh, the voice didn't die. He doesn't have a token. Totally forgot about the voice. Is it removed from it's, here? It's exiled. Yeah, it Why died. It? Because it never actually died. It went to exile. It never died. It replaces the actual death. It just went to exile. No death trigger. Why? Oh, it totally got yeah, passed. Yeah, that's so confused. Wait, the voice got passed? <coughs> No, you don't get the voice token for it dying. The, it, the voice died from the pyrohemia, right? The voice died to the pyrohemia. No, but it has rest in peace. Yeah, so it's rest in peace is a replacement yeah. effect. It didn't die. Wait, wait, we're, uh, we're asking, did he take, two take the damage from the <coughs> Boros Reckoner? So he should have taken two from pyrohemia and two from Boros yeah, Reckoner. Yeah, I, I believe he only took that two. Yeah, he was at 11 before you guys started. No, he should be taking one more. I think the chat's saying he should too. I think we only knocked down two. I think he's at seven. I think Reese is at seven. I don't think he took the two damage. I think he's at six. I think he was at ten Kay. at the time. And it should be two from the Boros Reckoner and two from the Pyro Okay, yeah, he's at six. There we go. Woo, nailed it. Yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> uh, so it should be six to ten, I believe. We got it. We got it. Chat lethal. Yeah, taking it down. On the rest in peace it's, for a second. It was buried under the torpor orb, and so for like a moment, I was just like, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of little interactions going on. Yeah. So, no token there. And there we go. Thank you to everybody in the chat. You guys are rock stars. And we're almost at 300 people. Yeah, I get confused when they're asking me different questions than we're trying to figure out, too. You're right. <laughs> They should pay attention to their own board state. We have their board state. Yeah. Okay. And apparently that is a win for Donovan. anything else, but this should be the end of round three, I would think. Okay, so, uh, we've got two minutes left. You're good. Nathan. Or Harry. You're good. We've got two minutes. Okay, so. Oh, he's he's letting the Kiki Chord player know what his outs were. That's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to head back up to the booth and get ready for round four. And I am so excited about that. We will see you there. Do you want me to pre pre search? Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still getting used to that one, huh? Boy, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> um, but we will be getting the finals, is what we will get for uh, the end there. Uh, I forgot that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we will end up getting the finals for that one as far as that. Next round should be starting pretty shortly as we get ready for round four. Yeah, we have uh, one uh, match going on still. So. Do we? Yes. Okay. So hello to everybody. It's great having you. If you are brand new, welcome and thank you for uh, joining us tonight. If you are a regular, I can't thank you enough for the fact that you continually show up and support us. And I am... Yeah, it's it's incredible. So thank you so much for for supporting us in all the ways that you do. I'm really excited about that one. Um, the <coughs> back to the booth remix. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Cole should probably dance to that too. Ooh, that's true. I mean, it's just the song with that people talking over it. How many people are playing there tonight? I don't have an exact number. I think it's number. under twenty. Oh, do I? I think it's under. It doesn't look like. Okay. A Though we may drop. have had some drops as well, but yeah. maybe eighteen. Give it I know traffic was really bad. And traffic was. So. Awful. There's a couple things going on. 30 yeah, seconds? Everyone's practicing Legacy anyways for this weekend. And round four just went up. So, let's go get round four. Let's grab the finals. You're on duty. Right. Jump up. It was 30 seconds until the next round. So, let's get that reset. Let's set that up to be round four. And let's have some fun with the finals. It's great having you. If you and uh, as always, we stream four times a week. And we're doing the Super Legacy event this Saturday. Be sure to put it down. I'll uh, end up making a Reddit post. Though, quick question. Uh, should I put down the Reddit post the day before or the morning of? Just, uh, we'll be starting at noon. Uh, hey, to Gideon BR, thank you so much. To tap out 2378, you're right down here. Thank you so much for hitting that follow button. We greatly appreciate it. And you are all absolutely incredible for joining us. The Fortnites, very clearly. And uh, I, I very much stand by this. Absolutely, one of the greatest chats that that um, that there are. I I have I have never seen a chat that is so friendly and welcoming and, and just fantastic as as you all are. So thank you everyone for that, and uh, yeah, 
Uh, we got the Pyrohemia back up. And we got Ryan. No, wait, that's in the finals? Yeah. No. Yes? Yes. With Against Ryan. Uh, Ryan Grant on uh, Abzan slash Junk. So it should be a pretty uh, interesting matchup. What? <laughs> it's actually, that should be grindy enough to appease everybody. That's so sweet. Is Donovan on the uh, facing the wall? Yeah, he's. They're taking a quick break because Donovan just finished up. But uh, yeah, they should be getting to it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Congratulations, there. And uh, I think part of it might be the fact that we're interacting with you all. Um, might might help keep it pretty friendly. But overall, I, yeah, you guys are all amazing. Yeah, people don't interact with me in my real life, so I gotta do it somewhere. <laughs> uh, and which Ryan, Ryan uh, Grande? Okay. And he is on Obzon. Is this just your basic Obzon, or is this the one with all the uh, extra yeah. battlefield abilities? This is uh, Goyce and Lilies and everything. Okay, so this is Obzon the range. Yep. Oh. Old school style. I don't know if he's running Siege Rhinos or not, because I know some decks have not been running them as much recently. With, uh... uh I'm sorry, I missed that. I was... Siege Rhino? Oh, okay. I've seen some actually with them, I've seen some without them, and I've seen some sliding it down to maybe, um, like three. Well, I know Willy... Edel, I don't, I don't know. Edel. Edel. Yeah. I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, he recently took out the Sea Dranos, so. Okay. Um, and at the GP. It's not particularly wrong to do. Uh, the card is excellent mm -hmm. by, by, I mean, it. you can't deny that. Yeah, it'll, but, be, it'll be an interesting matchup, um, especially with, uh, like, a Rope Decay hitting some of the targets for, like, uh, the Boros Reckoner and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, Bolts and uh, Cool Against Command might not be as good. Okay. There we go. Seem like a decent medium ground there. Yeah, I, I like <laughs> junk too, but personally, a, we got a lot of new people in the stream sometimes, so yeah. it's easier to go with the more. I pr I like that the name junk was the deck name, mm -hmm. but if we can make it a little bit easier to uh, to judge from people who are just joining us, then I'd like to do that. So. Uh, get old school players that don't even know what Abzan is too. That is true, which is why we ended up we we have a little bit of a compromise there. Are they getting set up for the by the look of it? Yeah, it looks like people are, they're just sitting down. Okay, we're so, ready when you guys are. And let's head on down, yeah. have some fun, okay. and uh, yeah, so they're just starting to shuffle up. All right. Let's do it. So this is our finals. It's going to be Boros Pyrohemia, the deck with all of the answers. We're going to be seeing it in the main, and we're going to be seeing it go up against Obzon Midrange. The the, I mean a pretty. Yeah. What? Or junk. I mean, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, whatever. But um, going up against it, and should be interesting. Who do you think is going to take the favor? Because I think the hand disruption could be pretty interesting there. I would favor junk probably, um, especially if he doesn't overcommit with some of his cards. He just kind of is long. Kind of like when you're playing against control, I feel like. If you're in the junk spot, you want to just play out a couple threats and then keep a couple in your hand if it gets to the point where you're worried about like board wipes or something like that. Yeah, and that's a great point, is that if he keeps some creatures in hand uh, with a Pyrohemia out, then as soon as it wipes and it maybe leaves the battlefield, then you can just replay out some of those threats. Yeah, and I think he's going to have uh, better top decks as well, because stuff like Swift Spear is not going to be as strong. Mm -hmm. um, I guess he does have like Thoughtseize effects, but uh, those can still, for a little while, be relevant. Also, um, I get the point for Standard, but actually, pretty much in Modern, it's become Obzon as well. Uh, in in general, I mean, yeah, I think I, I, the it's big true. streams are kind of just leaning towards saying Obzon because that's the. I mean, the players are. Yeah, it's I haven't. Just, it's I the haven't flavor. actually heard it in person called junk. I have. In months. That's because you've been sitting in the booth. No, I've been out there a lot. Anyway, let's head on down, and have some fun. <laughs> Okay, so what is my best card? That's a really, the, the question is difficult to answer there because cards are only relatively powerful within their context, but I'm going to go with Lightning Bolt. I, I like Lightning Bolt a lot. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue that too much. I believe it is the most played card in the format generally. True, but I wouldn't call it the best. I mean, uh, having a best card, there there is no... Uh, I might call it the best because it... I would, I certainly it, would. It, <laughs> <laughs> makes the format play around it more than any card. I meant just in Magic in general. Yeah. I think it's the best card in Magic. Because I'm me. And, you know, you don't get the family... I mean, there's better cards, but some of them cost more. That's true. That's true. 
I mean, you have cards like Ancestral Recall, but really its only purpose is to draw you into three of the best card. Yeah. So... <laughs> So, uh, that's probably what I would say, but it's a question that doesn't answer get answered very well. Are names backwards? I believe it names are backwards. Are they? Uh, yeah. Oh, they switched sides on me. Yeah. That they did. Oh, you got a little swap players, but that makes it so much easier. For the most part, yeah. It's David. Uh, oh, it is David. However, it does mean one thing. You gotta switch that. Which means that we are just gonna get pubs on there. Uh, uh, Sliver White, something, I didn't get the last part of that. Welcome for it, it'll welcome to joining, and uh, welcome to the stream. Tybalt is absolutely not the most tasty. How many booster packs that I've bought? Uncountable amount. I, I honestly can't even answer that and give you a, a realistically accurate number. To I, be honest, we've been saving for Eternal Masters anyways. <laughs> I have. So, an Ooh, Eternal and Inquisition, we have a mainboard core Firewalker, which has protection from the Pyrohemia. It does. Uh, we have Goblin Dark Dwellers, Swans of Bryn, <laughs> and then Boros Reckoner. I mean... You know I'm is, a fan of the Swans. What is going on? <laughs> if you're not playing Boros Reckoner and Swans in the same deck, you're probably doing something wrong. Oh, man. What is happening? What changes in the modern meta would we see if Lightning Bolt got banned? Aggro would dominate. Lightning Bolt is not an aggro card in modern. It yeah. is a control card. It means that mo <coughs> control is able to exist with a relevant removal spell that ends up uh, being reached in the it's end. Just, yeah, it's just uh, such a um, versatile card. Burn would still function fine. Mm -hmm. Affinity would devastate. Yeah, Bolt is one of the like weakest. Affinity and Infect would be a lot stronger. Infect, incredible. It would be the most aggressive meta that Modern has ever seen. Like, put far and away. Yeah. You have to run Dismembers instead and hope that you're playing against it. Yeah, in taking four... Uh, yeah, it's just... A uh, modern without lightning bolt it's, is not at all good for control. So, a second lane coming down for Donovan. Hasn't done a whole lot yet, doesn't have the double white currently, which is basically the only card that he'd be able to cast on this turn two at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, wait, because that ended up getting discarded, so he doesn't even have a turn two play. Uh, he actually didn't have the double white either way. Yeah. So, <sighs> scavenging is might actually be a pretty nice tool in this. Be able to remove things from the like. Uh, lots of creatures will be dying. It might be able to outgrow the pyrohemia, eventually. Yeah, he does have a turn or two that he here that he can uh, bolt it. Um, so that would be ideal for him. Okay. What does Swans do? Let's go ahead and bring up Swans. That's a that's a card. But yes, it basically means that every time that he deals damage to his own Swans, he starts drawing cards. And since it prevents, which it, it's not doing, but now his pyrohemia is pay one to draw a card. Um, so he is not trying to mill. He's just trying to draw cards off of it. It's it's actually and it also deals four damage. Yeah, and I sense. heard I heard drawing cards is pretty good. So <coughs> yeah, it can get you into your bolts. <coughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and like literally can get him into his bolts in this matchup. Actually, yes. So uh, Boros striking on the battlefield, looking down the scavenging is pretty solid. There, it means that the scavenging is not going to win any kind of uh, combat with it. Mm -hmm. So. It's able to get up to a 3-3 and trade, but then you've got Ryan taking 3, and that's if Donovan... It's so, not... Minecraft? Yes, I do. I, I do think that Abzan has a much better matchup than Jund in this situation, because uh, Paths is going to be a lot better than Bolt, mm -hmm. and then uh, stuff like Dark Confidants are just going to be dying to opposing Bolts. Yeah, and I think this is the kind... I mean, would you rather be on Jund or Abzan against this deck? That's what I'm saying. I think I'd rather be on Abzan. Because you want the pass for the stuff like birds and, uh, I guess, and the Reckoner. terminate, but, um, yeah. So on the flip side... And I just don't feel like Dark Confidant is going to survive easily. But Lingering Souls is pretty bad against this deck. It's only bad against Pyrohemia for the most part, right? Or he probably plays, like, Pyroclasms as well, huh? I would assume so. Seems like he would run some, possibly some, uh, Volcanic Fallout. Mm-hmm. So, I might rather be on Jund, but only because it can be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and also be able to draw some cards off of the other swans. What got Inquisitioned? It was the uh, Core Firewalker that got Inquisitioned. And I feel I feel like Lingering Souls, if you're not going like too over the top with it, it'd be better as well. Tebin? That's a nice play. Uh, Smother is better than Go for the Throat right now. So he's going to Pyroclasm DL2 and then 2 to his Boris Reckoner as well, and he's going to redirect that. Or I guess it doesn't redirect it, uh... 
it ends up dealing equal deals damage. That equal damage to this ooze, so. Which is pretty pretty like, good play. He gets to attack through as well after. It's a really solid play by Donovan. Mm -hmm. Running Pyroclasm in there, uh, just to make sure that he's able to use that as like an extended four damage removal spell. Yeah. That's really, really uh, wise. Sadistic Inquisition is expensive because it was only printed in uh, well, technically two sets. Technically, um, a but, set and a dual deck. And it's also one of the most played. Like, it's played more than Thoughtseize right now. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I think having a split of both is good, but Thoughtseize is more recent as well. So people are just going to more likely to have it. Mm -hmm. So, takes damage from the Pyroclasm? Does not. What happened was uh, Boros Reckoner, whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target creature or player. So, uh, by dealing power. Pyroclasm dealt 2 damage to the Scavengers, which was a 3-3, and 2 damage to the Boros Reckoner, which was a 3-3. The 2 damage that was dealt to the Reckoner, Donovan then used that trigger to deal the 2 damage that it was dealt, also to target creature, being the Scavenging Goose, finishing it off. Exactly. And then he swung in 4-3 with the Reckoner itself to knock Ryan down to 14. Yep. Okay. So Rhino's good here as long as he can get rid of the Reckoner. Uh, having a 4-5 is going to be a little difficult for Donovan to get rid of. Yes, and if you're Donovan, uh, I mean, do you swing into it, or because, or um, do, would you rather hold it back because he might attack? It's going to keep the. I would swing attacking. into it because Path and Abrupt Decay are not your friend. Okay, and you have a pretty limited window of handling that with those. Yeah, but at the same time, he's less. He's like lower on life. It kind of depends on what's in his hand, honestly. Yeah, and swing into knock Ryan down to fourteen when Ryan can come back and knock Donovan down to nine, and still possibly have the removal spell. I I agree that that does seem a little yeah. bit, a um, little bit uh, not ideal. <laughs> did Donovan not change his time? I'm fairly certain that he did. He should have only he's taken one off of a fetch. Oh, juice, Two, three. juice! You're here. Did you get? Did you get your giveaway? I sent it. It should have showed up last Monday. It should have shown up two days ago. What did he win? Uh, that was the GPLA playmat. Oh, nice. The, that Coleman donated. Mm -hmm. I believe. Should have been. Yeah. So let me know. I'd love to know. And actually, I think today... No, tomorrow. Tomorrow, the uh, plaque should be received. Yes! Woo! Awesome. We got in the hand. I only have one hand. That That's works. okay. Flail it with me. Woo! <laughs> Okay, so... I actually, like, go for the throat a lot of times. and Go for the throat? The spot, if you're trying to get a two-mana black I'm, spell. I'm really not thrilled by it right now. With Tassiger, um being as big as he is right now, Yeah. it, it just seems problematic it's just, to It's me. easier to play than most things, and yeah. it's... And with Kalidas well, being popular right now. Well, go for the throat's not an artifact, right? Only. Oh, you're thinking uh, of Doomblade. I was thinking of Doomblade. I'm sorry, but Affinity. Yeah, Affinity's but I don't think Affinity is as huge as it has been. Like, you can never count Affinity out, but having all the paths and the Abrupt Decays on top of that, you're usually in mm -hmm. the Lingering Souls and stuff. I feel like it's fine. I think that it's as soon as you start discounting Affinity and running things like Go for the Throat, oh, for sure. then but it wins. I, I think as a one-of, <laughs> it's fine. I've beaten a lot of one-of Go for the Throats, like when they, at the end of the game, they had a Go for the Throat mm -hmm. hand. Uh, is the Pyroclasm exiled? It should be. Did he, re did he play it? Yeah. Pyroclasm should be exiled if you played it. So Ryan, down to 12 at the moment. Donovan at 13. There's the Sea Dread on the battlefield. Now that Goblin Dark Dwellers is good. That Goblin Dark Dwellers is really good right now. But uh, less good now that a second Sea Dread is Yeah, yeah. It, it looks good until... Uh, See Drano's friend Ooh, comes out. This is... Uh, that's aggressive. Yeah, I wonder if he has something like Lingering Souls or something else besides Sea Drano. I mean, he's going to gain three life, mm -hmm. to be fair. Um, he could... I mean, best case, I guess he has a Sea Drano and a Path. Yeah. So... My goodness. Looks like he's going a 3-2 split. So Lingering Souls, probably, or Lily, possibly. Okay, goes for the Lingering Souls. Maybe trying to get uh, enough things, because those will be able to block the Goblin Dark Dwellers pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can maybe throw it in front of the Boros Reckoner. And then you are looking at... Yeah, it's at not horrible. So, interesting. Um, I still feel like I would have rather played a Seed Rhino, just because this seems a little uh, more 
all in versus something like Pyroclasm, especially flashing it back. Yes. I I can agree with that one. But it does give him decent blocks. I mean, but even if he blocks on Boros Reckoner and double blocks Dark Dweller, then all his lingering souls are dead because he moves the Boros Reckoner damage over. Still, if we do end up seeing that, um... W there's a really good chance that there's about to be a, a blowout. Or there's a decent chance for a blowout now. And it's basically if Donovan has it, this, I, this is the riskier but higher reward for Ryan. I think is the, a good way to put it. I really hope he has a uh, land pyroclasm in his hand and goes swans land pyroclasm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That would be the sauciest. I'd throw two in front of that pretty quickly. Yeah. Those are spirit tokens. <clears throat> he appears to have brought his own. I'll allow it. <laughs> okay. It looks like he put a lot of effort into him. And looks like we are getting... An outpost siege. Yep. Uh, let's find out. If you want to find, open the door and find out what mode he chose. I don't know if he has, yeah. Mode? Alright, so at the beginning of your upkeep, you exile the top card of your library until that the end of turn. That would have been my guess as well. But it, I would expect... Get, get a check. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's worth asking, but overall, it's pretty likely. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going for the cons mode. <clears throat> Yeah, I think, uh, also, I think Ryan attacked last turn with Seedrano, knowing he's going to hit another Seedrano, and maybe hoping he gets him low enough. Yeah. That it's just, like, not ready for it. Puts, uh, basically puts him within the range of just mm -hmm. doing a drain kill, because right now we can drain him down to six, and the Lingering Souls might be able to do a decent amount of work here. Yeah, if he swings in with the, uh, Seedrano, he deals, what, three damage? If he has a Lingering Souls as well. Or one damage this way. <clears throat> right. So goes for the attack, gives him the opportunity to block, and this is interesting because if he gets in the way of that he goes down to eight, loses his Boros Reckoner though, might try and just trade it with the Siege Rhino. I would. Oh, I mean, without knowing what's in Ryan's hand, I would too. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's that's fantastic. Yeah, so, we definitely need more swans. He's missing the white source currently. We do have trample, though, so Donovan should be at 8. Yes. One trample damage. What would they do without us? They get on camera, and they assume that we'll double-check everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard being this powerful sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> Looks like he's going for the sea drown. I don't know that it keeps keeps moving around mana. Do, do we have double? <clears throat> do we have another lingering souls? Because that's super risky. Oh, kitchen Ooh, things. I'm mad about that. I am not mad about that at all. You're gonna be able to block it well if he has the power clause and you're gaining some more life. Is. That's pretty solid. And now you're putting. I think this is really playing into that. Like, let's just get the drain killer yeah, siege right now. I mean, the outpost siege definitely helps here. Okay. Mm that's pretty good off the top. Goblin guy? You can kill uh, Scavenging Ooze, gain some life. I can tell you right now that <clears throat> Blood Braid Elf will never whiff. <clears throat> uh, but, uh... <laughs> okay. Crash down. That's awesome. Um... I technically could have. Called Crash of Streamers? <laughs> Love it. Okay. So, hey, Lido, right. thank they could, you. They could all of them. You have some positive feedback. I did? That's weird. Also, if anybody does have thoughts, this is Nathan's second time ever being in here. I do stream by myself sometimes. Uh, the Rhino should most certainly be dead. I think the Reckoner ended up redirecting and dealing the three damage to the Sea Rhino. Three damage from the Reckoner and then three He'll damage catch on. redirected. He'll catch on. <laughs> okay. Yep, there we go. <laughs> he caught on. <laughs> we, we usually do. So we're getting a block there. <clears throat> and uh, I think right now with this Siege Rhino, we've got pretty close to a kill next turn. Uh, well, he's going to be able to Lightning Helix here. True, so but... actually, like... I'm three? Not... Yeah. Oh, no, but going up to 11. Yeah, it depends on what's in Donovan's uh, hand, but I'm actually liking his position because he's getting an extra card draw every turn as well. Mm-hmm. So we've got heading. And Sea Drown is obviously going to be really good here. I'm so I, uh, I'm so prepared, but I just don't know what's going to happen. Like the Sea Drown seems like the pretty straightforward play here. 
he does have a shaming vents to get some reach in the end there. Why did he double block? Because it had menace, so he had to. The Goblin Dark Dwellers um, is a 4 4 with menace. Knocking him down to 8 right now. The I feel like the right swing, now. I feel like at this point, you might want to just kind of go for it. He also has the shambling vents, which can uh, gain him back some life as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the Siege Rhino, so. <clears throat> so, knocks him down to 5, and now we are looking especially with that shambling vents. So you're exactly right. And up to 17. Last insect can uh, clear the board, but that. Uh, I it mean, leaves, it leaves a kitchen vinks depending on what else he we've has. We've got one, two, three, so four, five, six, seven. Is it creatures or plates? Thirteen, right? Total. Uh, no, it's seven total. Oh, I think. Seven Let's, total. Oh, it might be eight. Let's see here. I don't know. It's a lot. We're playing. Like I said, we're playing all the biggest. It's cards nine. Today. I'm sorry. So actually, Donovan would have to tap out. One, two, three, four, to five, cast six, it. seven, eight, nine. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, or have a uh, monastery of spear. <laughs> interesting. I oh, don't know because he would lose a land too. Yeah, nine total. So, has to tap out to cast it and wipe the board. We might see him just attack in with the Goblin Dark Dwellers to knock him down to 13 and go for that option. The only problem at that point is that the Shambling Vent is still available. That in the kitchen, Vinks. We'll uh, persist back. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And casting that one means that now Donovan actually can't cast it. Yep. Which means that unless Ryan he, is looking Unless he has another land in his hand. True. Absolutely one, two, three, true. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so he's one off. <coughs> As a heads up, Bloodbraid Elf would be way too good in modern right now. I'm okay with it being unbanned one day, but right now when Jund was already one of the best decks in modern, it doesn't need a whole lot more. He's got a core firewalker, so not not what he needs here, unfortunately. Justice Peanut, uh, usually, I on very <coughs> legitimately, there is a very real pressure that comes from just playing on stream. And sometimes they end up just focusing so much on like the the board state on like what's happening there that they mm. just forget to put things into exile to where like in their mind they know that it's an exile. Yeah, but they it, just put it, it should there. be over right here anyway, so And there we go. But it it's a very real factor when they get on camera. <laughs> mm. Alright, and let's head back. Oh no, that was just game one. Yeah. What am I Come thinking? On, TJ. We what am I thinking? Magic left. I, I was so magic. used to seeing the Bar Boros Parahemia there. Just because you play fast decks, <laughs> I mean, everyone else is done in five minutes. I like playing fast <laughs> decks. To the three hundred people. He couldn't cast act because he, the creature died, so he must have uh, at well, some point passed priority, and then with the path on the do Goblin Dark Dwellers, he was one. Yep. Sure. And I really like that actually. Uh, I actually was talking to Filth. I mentioned that he should be running Scred earlier. I agree. Does he not gain any life between besides Core Firewalker? I don't believe so. Lightning Helix. Uh, Slim Shitty right EMB. Right. It's surprisingly, it, like, it affects you more than you would actually sus expect. Rebel Doc, this is the finals. This is the final round. Yep. These are the two guys that are have the best records. Yeah. And <coughs> Boros Pyrohemia. I love it. That is super cool. So, Obs on midrange, taking game one with the power of uh, Sea Trino. Leaving it, Souls as well did a lot. Yeah, it was an interesting game. It was very uh, back and forth there for a little bit. Um, it would have been interesting if Donovan hit that uh, other white source because he was sitting with uh, Core Firewalker and the Swans in his hand. Yeah, and the Core <coughs> Firewalker wouldn't have done a whole lot at the end of that game. Or not... Yeah, but Swans would have been good. People forget that it's a it's a big flying beast as well. That's the big thing. Wouldn't have gone well against those Seed Riders, but it would have applied more of a clock. Mm -hmm. Is there a deck list for the Pyrohemia deck? Not at the moment, but I can certainly request one of Donovan and try and get one as soon as I possibly can. And we're over 300 people. To everybody who is in the chat right now, hello, my name is TJ. I'm Harry. And we're starting from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington. Harry, my extra special guest for the day. You can find him on his Twitch channel, which is uh, I it underscore... Up later. It'll, which it's fine. It'll, it'll be under his name. Yeah. You can find him later. He does a lot of streaming of Kiki Cord. Yep. I've been streaming more recently with uh, hockey playoffs dying down and not being on vacation and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to show that deck off if I can. We'll try and get a deck list and put it onto our tapped out account. And Donovan is running fetch lands. He started the game with a fetch into a sacred foundry and Dream Mountains after that. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, we don't really have any other ways of posting deck lists as it currently sits. 
Uh, and as it currently sits, it's one that's fairly time consuming. Do you? Yeah, we do. We have the tapped out in our info, right? Uh, yeah. To the deck list. We do. The deck list. Yep. So I am, I am absolutely loving it. And we're going to be heading into that, but if you haven't joined us before, thank you so much. We do this stream four times a week. Standard on Mondays at 6.30 Pacific Time. Modern on Wednesdays and Saturdays. 7 o'clock on Wednesdays, 6 o'clock on Saturdays. And we have got uh, seven o'clock or 7.30 Legacy on Fridays. Yep. Plus, this Saturday, check it out, starting at noon. So 10 hours and 11 minutes previous to whatever time you G. are at P. right now. Snohomish. GP Snohomish. Charlotte isn't getting streamed, but I'll tell Thomas. you what is. Here in Snohomish, we're going to be having the throwdown of a lifetime. It's going to be starting at noon. It's going to be uh, five rounds into a cut to top eight of Legacy, with the winner getting a box of Eternal Masters, plus a lot of other cool prizes to be had. All kinds of amazing things happening. Yeah. Sad LK 2004 thank you so much for the positive feedback. As always, uh, any kind of feedback is always welcome. One thing to, to keep in mind is that this is Harry's first full stream it is. here. And uh, if you want to if you want to let us know how he's doing, hey, it all it all matters. And it, it, and we can take it all in, we can process it, we can do this with our fists a little bit, we can do like this reverse fisticuffs, and we can come back with it more uh, more progress. Yeah, I kinda feel like this is a conspiracy, like you guys are trying to get me on stream more than I'm not playing beating some people. Why do you think they put me back here? Yeah, so. <laughs> It's it's a it's a hard life that we live. Absolutely, it is. Ooh, someone's a Harry fan. We've got Ooh, Harry Harry's fans. Gone. <laughs> I'll take it. Actually, I'm liking this. Ooh, okay. It's the Engineer Brotherhood. I had no yeah, idea that this was a it. thing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that one was coming. I was waiting for that one. <laughs> You're a lizard. I am a I am a wizard. I do play magic. Uh, Omninavoy, thank you so much for hitting that follow button. Also, there were some other people who hit the follow button, and I haven't been able to name you all by name, and I normally try so hard to do that, and I haven't been able to, and I apologize to it. There's over 300 of you. We're trying to, trying you, to get to everything. Every single one of you is amazing. Anybody who's been hitting that follow button, thank you so much. It's absolutely incredible, and I look forward to, uh, to interacting with you all in the future. As always, you can, uh, if you want to find out when this we are streaming, you can follow me on Twitter at RedBaronMTG, R-E-D-B-A-R-O-N-M-T-G. I'll let you know when we're streaming and all kinds of things. It's also a good play way to get in contact with me. Zodiacosphere, good to see you. Thank you so much we for joining us. We appreciate the lightning bolts, guys. Absolutely. A chain lightning is always a good thing. Mason Unthank, thanks for... Thanks for hitting that follow button. I really hope that you're Mason out there. <laughs> I don't think it is. No, I don't think so either. Temple of Triumph, turn one from Donovan. Memes to memes, memes thank you so memes. much. I'm loving the chain lightning right now. I can't thank any of you. It's, it's absolutely incredible. The amount of support from the community. Oh, we have an awesome community. Awesome, continually awesome mind blowing. Haloxer. Haloxer or Haloxer? I don't know. There's t I don't know. But thank you so much for hitting that follow button. I have a hard enough time with English that these guys are throwing up names I can't keep up with. The Jackal, thanks for hitting unfollow and then refollowing. <laughs> he likes lightning bolts. Yep. A swing for one by Donovan into Ryan. Tyrion Woe. Ooh, that's a sweet name. Thanks for hitting that follow button. <laughs> What's up, Goblin Guy? Goblin Guy? Dr. Wu, Goblin 815. Guy, yeah. Thank you so can't much. Read small, right? For hitting that follow button. The chain lightning right now is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Shout out to the other engineers real quick. Sorry. God of Pain, 1515, thank you so much. As always, if you do want to, and I know people are going to mention, oh, he said it again, finally, but if you do want to let me know how you found us, I would love to know so that. Good, good, good. But uh, let us know how you found us because it helps me know like what's effective and what isn't. And an abrupt decay taking down the monastery so spirit. I love how unfollowing and following is a thing on our stream all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't like cast enough, so I like I don't recognize people, right? So I'm just like, oh everybody's wow. new. <laughs> Actually most of these have been new. <clears throat> hey, Chavis uh, 1992. That is my birth year. Core Firewalker from Actually, sur I'm somewhat surprised Core Firewalker's in. I mean I guess he has red damage and it helps him get through uh it gets through like uh, pyro pyroclasm, I can't talk. Um but doesn't really have a lot of uh, active Ant abilities against Ryan. Ant-Man a million. <clears throat> Thank you. So, a Liliana of the Veil. 
Uh, guard yourself. Thank you. Monkey, thank you so much for hitting that follow button. Ooh! No. Ooh, Did this we just, get... just happened. No! Mana <laughs> tip that Liliana. No! Someone's plusing up or minusing down a little too quick over there. What just happened? The Omnis, thank you for following. The Omni Z, thank you so much. Oh, who into swans? This is getting <laughs> spicy real quick. <clears throat> Get in BR, thank you so much. Oh, uh, I, I needed that meta tip the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how badly, but. <laughs> Super Spark, thank you so much for hitting that follow button. I feel like the Core Firewalker like baited it too, almost. Oh my goodness. So the Core Firewalker out, interestingly enough, not doing a ton. <laughs> But uh, a swan's coming out. A pyrohemia, gonna do a lot of good things right now. A pyrohemia. Yeah, we supposed to flail out arms. I, I got the one arm that works. Let's do it. Let's combine for one flail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was perfect, though. No one sees the manatee. <laughs> oh my goodness. That. Hashtag blindsided. <laughs> I think we just heard over so I go. Oh, poor Ryan. <laughs> oh man, that is. Excellent. Hello to everybody. Thanks for joining us right after the beautiful manatee taking down a lily out of the veil when the core firehawker and a swan. You know what created that? It was the, the lightning chain. It was the lightning chain. Well, that's what happens when you guys follow. Good things happen. Good things happen. The best thing. So, a lingering souls now plays out his land first that he doesn't get hit by the manatee again. Yeah. And I mean, he was tapped out, but <laughs> yeah, it's got to be on his mind now. Apparently, you can't. You can't count it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that was beautiful. That was the, uh, ah, glorious. Traded his half of a card for a little. <laughs> so, a uh, core firework. Now, core firework is a little bit interesting in this matchup at the moment. Uh, Ooh. Balfunken. This is beautiful. Draw two, your creatures survive, and you take down the spirit tokens. Oh, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm going to gain one. And uh, then I'm gonna be able to attack for six. <laughs> Seems okay. The the protection from wood keeps the core firewalker from dying. Yep. And then so you've got and you've protections got a swans. on swans a little different of a protection though. A, Would you like to explain that to the viewers that don't know that interaction? Yeah, swans <laughs> has a little bit of an ability to it's a fourth through flying, but it says that any time uh, a damage would be dealt to it, mm -hmm. prevent that damage, and the controller of and that source's controller mm -hmm. draws that many cards. Nice. I mean, in so many words, but that's... You, you see the card in uh, Donovan's hand? I did not. Looks like a Blasphemous Act. Does it really? Does it really look like a Blasphemous I would, Act? Uh, I would like that to go off sometime before. Would you really like to draw one, draw 13? <laughs> or gain one, draw 13, and be left with a 2-2 two, two, <laughs> and a 4-3? <four>, uh, <laughs> as Donovan shoots, I just would, like, not kill him until I got Blasphemous Act off. <laughs> draw 13. That seems, that seems not awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems better than my uh, little brain of the jar interaction. <laughs> Lightning Bolt is now Ancestral Visions. Yep. <laughs> oh, this is so, so fantastic right now. I am, I am loving this. So, Ryan? I'm so glad this game was the finals. Absolutely! <laughs> this is the finals! It doesn't get any better than this. Oh my goodness. So... Four mana available right now. Uh, what are we looking for? So what's Ryan's game plan at this point? Because um, I, think I think his biggest thing is to be able to kill a swan somehow, honestly. Yeah, a lot of value being used right now. Um, so maybe something like a Kitchen Finks and a Path to Exile would be a really solid play. We do have the Lilian of the Veil, which can uh, go for a minus and actually yeah. take down one of those. Um, I mean, ideally he has something like a... Uh Abrupt Decay or something that he can use first, because Donovan doesn't actually play a lot of creatures. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's in his hand, though. No. Blind Liliana is just going to kill the core Firewalker, which just doesn't quite seem good enough right here. Um, yeah, that's probably true. We have a Tasker in hand. Yeah, he won't be able to Tasker and Lily, though. He does have Lingering Souls tokens that he can bring back as well. So we could see, only to actually cast the Tasker, you'd have to exile that one. Yeah, which is another problem. Juice, what time does this start? Every Wednesday, we start at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. On Saturdays, we start at 6 o'clock Pacific time. And those are our modern events. I will work on getting the Pyrohemia list, and it, when I, if when I do, I will share it through my Twitter, 
at Red Baron MTG, and uh, it will be put onto our Tap Dead account. But that'll be the easiest way for you to find out when I post it, because I'll I'll post a link to it as soon as we have it. That is absolutely glorious. Yeah, and uh, wait, how can can he play Tosser? Oh, he played a land. Sorry, I missed. It. But, um, yeah, but uh, keep keep following. Check out the stream, and you'll see awesome games like this. No kidding, because like. Blasphemous Act, it's coming. Oh, All those creatures. That's five. Oh, we have enough. We have enough. All right. And we're tapped out. Let's oh, get him going. Get him going. This, get another going. Flail moment. this is a flail <laughs> moment to flail moments, and we're going to gain a life. That's the most important part. Right, everybody, <laughs> gain a life first. <laughs> cast trigger. Uh, oh. Draw 13. <laughs> and this should this eliminate sh your board. Swing for six. Swing six, and I guarantee he's probably gonna draw a bolt in there somewhere. There's a decent chance he's gonna draw a bolt. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, I can't. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I just. I, I wanna. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Thank you for being a part of this, everyone. Tuning in. Oh my! This is the, a special moment in Magic history. The the Warp World list as well. I will share through my Twitter at Red Baron MTG on our we, top. We got out. a couple lists we got to put up. Tonight. We will. Though, oh, no nope. bolt. He's got a Swiss beard. He'll bring him down. Oh, there's the bolt. There it is. <laughs> TJ, your card is, is taking it down. <laughs> oh, God. Hopefully, he uses the bolt after just for TJ's benefit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Maybe not, but right now it is. You want to know the best part? Tell me more. We have a game three. We have a game three. Oh, I'm so excited right now. I'm I am hyped. I'm officially yeah, on a hype train. Donovan's just milking this, too. <laughs> He's like <it's> the <laughs> Too soon. Ravnock, we just had a blasphemous act dealing 13 damage to the entire board. <sighs> what that did is that the swans... Prevented all of the damage, and meant that Donovan instead drew 13 cards. And, and gained a life. It meant that he gained a life for casting a red spell off of his core <laughs> firewalker. It meant that his core firewalker, with its protection from red, meant that it didn't take any of the damage. It meant that Ryan's <laughs> board was entirely wiped because he had a Lingering Souls and a Tassiger. Then those are both smaller than 13. And then, after doing this board wipe, we saw Donovan drop down a land, play a Monastery Swiss Spear... Lightning Bolt Ryan, and swing, swing for lethal. For lethal. Uh, I believe the scientific term for that is value. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm... I mean, I guess technically the uh, the Swift Spirit was the correct play because there could be stuff like uh, Slaughter Pact or something. So technically, although unlikely. <laughs> unlikely, but that's actually a very good point. Um, yes, I completely agree that Donovan should likely be running uh, Snowlands and Scred. He is not currently, um, but I think that might be because he doesn't have the Snowlands or Scred. And, yeah. But I I agree that I'd They're like to see him move in that direction though. eventually. <coughs> Ooh. Except for they know what you're playing, though. <coughs> That's true. Eliminate some of the fun. Uh, I've been able to Scred for like eight or nine before off of a Swans. I yeah, Scred is such a sweet card. I don't actually like Scred Swans. I like just if you're gonna do it, play Scred. Yeah. But this deck, on the other hand, he's he's, go he's going from a different direction. Yeah. He, oh, he okay. uh, he should he took the left turn at Albuquerque. Yeah, that's and, true. He and he found before. himself in quite a place. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that that's true. He would have played the Pact. I don't think it mattered either way. Um, <laughs> I would love I to like see Skull. Me out. I, sometimes. I would love to see Donovan's deck against Burn because it actually would be surprisingly like not fantastic, but also really good. Um, I actually think it'd be decent because Boris Reckner hits all the creatures on the ground. And he plays main deck core firewalkers and lightning healers. But post sideboard, you and get skull cracks, <coughs> and skull cracks are really good well, against. Well, post the sideboard would be a lot different. Yeah, I think Burn uh, would actually be favored in the match. I think pre sideboard, I'd like Donovan's spot. I, th I don't want to give it to Donovan. If he has the core firework and somebody hand, that's a huge plus. But otherwise, Fireclasm's Burn can good, go over Boris the top. Yeah, I don't know. It, there's a couple. Cards. Burn has the ability to go over the top though, and it's, Donovan isn't a particularly fast deck. Yeah, but Lightning Helix and stuff's good too. That's it, true. It, it's dependent a little bit. I think it'd be a good matchup. It'd be close. But uh, I think that would be just a. I want to play that match. 
I just want to play that match. Oh my goodness. I... I... Ah... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> That's true, and also Burn having access to the swans. You just don't play swans. I mean, in the in game one. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks, but. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've had to do it where you play swans where it's like empty board, empty cards, and you're just like, well, Yay. hope for the best. I, or you have like a lightning bolt in your hand, you're like, well, we'll be even at least, and I'll have a 4 <laughs> 3. <laughs> oh, man. So, we have. So far, not a whole lot of action from either player. Ryan uh, just dropping down a second land. Donovan doing the same with a cliff-top retreat. Yeah, looks like he's got uh, some lingering souls and a couple of uh, rhinos in his hand. Very value-centric uh, hand. That, is that I don't know why I turned my head to look. It doesn't like actually do anything. You'll get used to it. Yeah. I think that's kitchen three lingering finks. souls, a Maelstrom kitchen finks, and a maelstrom pulse. That's a, that's a decent hand. He's got to hit another land drop, though. Um, well, if he misses... He's in a world of hurt. Uh, so, a one of I mean, yes. Donovan's, I mean, to be fair, Donovan's not doing anything yet either, so, but he's gonna have to hit that land drop soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually probably would not have fetched here. Um, you reduce your chance of drawing a land. For going for the fetch? Yeah. I don't think that it's negligibly reduced. Or, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think that it's, uh, notably reduced. I don't think that it's enough to actually... I just like playing correct. I think if you're looking for a land... And you don't care about your total? I mean, you kind of care, but look, he's, he's getting a basic anyway, so I don't know why he's getting basic. Getting f So I think going for Blood the basic, moon, possibly. you are correct. I think he's playing around Blood Moon, and I think that if he is going to go for the basic, then you are correct. That he for sure, go on his turn, yeah. yeah. And he, there was, I mean, he, it looks like he wants to go for the basic anyway. He's got no double green, no double black. Mm -hmm. He just needs to land, so. So, and I mean, if, if I saw that board, I would definitely be playing around a, and we get a path to exile, and I think we miss the third land drop. Yeah. And I'm not mad about Path, but it's obviously a land would have been slightly better. A land would have been more than slightly better. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have Donovan dropping down his third land, and this is looking like it's going to be favoring Donovan just from a very initial perspective. Yeah, I mean, he does have the Path for this. He just has to hit one land drop, and he has a lot of gas with all the Lingering Souls and the Kitchen Finks. Mm -hmm. um, so I think as long as he hits a land drop, he's in, in it reasonably well true, but he's he'll run out of... I mean, the more that he goes without it, the more he'll be running out oh, of time correct. pretty yes, quickly. Oh, correct, I agree. And missing it this turn is going to be not insignificant. Yeah, I think that... I don't know. I think there could have been faster uh, games by... or faster turns by Donovan as well with, like, Swiss Spear or something, so... Mm -hmm. So Ryan passing it back, and Donovan's already on his turn four. Well, Ryan is stuck trying oh, to get to... did he just draw? Yeah. What, and he didn't do anything? Yeah, okay. he, he's trying to get to turn three right now. I for a second. <clears throat> so... I wouldn't have waited on that path just because you're trying to hit, hit your. Th you have so many three drops. I think you use the path there while you have mana open. Um, I think the only reason why would be if you have no intention of using it soon and you're willing to soak up the three damage a little bit. In which case, you do hold that, on to that's it. That's an option as well, yeah. Uh, but as it currently sits, or it's because he. I think I think his game plan is once I hit my third land, it's go go go. Yep. And it's, once he has fourth, it's like it could be lingering souls, flashbacks, and stuff too. And are we seeing Donovan not search? Are we out of? Did Donovan Don't just not search? Didn't look like he searched. It's either <clears throat> so he either chose not to. It is amazing. Possibly, ability. did he keep a scry? Oh, <clears throat> he just kept a scry on top with that land. Yes. Yeah. So decides to keep that one and wants that card. It's a monastery mentor. Seems all right. Seems decent, especially with the amount of pyroclasm effects. Mm-hmm. Though, it ends up killing the tokens that come in, doesn't it? A power class would kill all the... Uh, the it depends if you play something else beforehand. True. But it would kill the one that gets created from the power class. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I so, also, right here, just side note, uh, I, don't, I don't like him getting uh, planes necessarily, because if he draws into an abrupt decay, he also can't play it. Okay. But apparently he's got a third path. That is very true. Which... Are we helixing in response just to get the token? Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. Okay. Uh, he's just trying to get a clock out there. You can see that how Ryan's obviously not doing well with the land drops. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think Donovan's just trying to get as much damage as he can quickly. And it's also going to trigger the Swift Spear. Yeah, and that's going to be able to swing in for two. He does have the Monk, which isn't going to do a whole lot of damage, but Ryan going down to 13, and Ryan still looking to just get into turn three. And something like, yeah, Lingering Souls would be so good on this board. Absolutely. I mean, that's not to say that Donovan doesn't have something like the, uh, the Pyroclasm. Pyroclasm. But then that will kill his uh, Monk possibly as well, so uh, I think you're yeah. willing to take that trade. But, um... 
There's that's a lot of path to exile from Ryan and a pass back. There's no third lane. Just see Drino. And uh, that is just such a rough spot to be in. But at the same time, it's not a fast clock. When spread. you're looking at an opening hand and you have no way to actually cast your cards, yeah, you something. do need to take a good look at it. Yeah, and Gorf's actually very good against this deck. Uh, path is the main thing to get it out of the way. It should be big enough. I would, I would assume. Could be wrong. So there's the path, anyways. And actually, <coughs> interesting choice by Donovan to go for that because it is putting Ryan up to the third land, which he ha probably. I think you do it at this point. Well, well, especially if you have a Johnny in your hand because you keep one of those lands down. Um, but you get double prowess triggers. <laughs> the Johnny keeping a land down, so it's like he never drew it, and you take it to where he's left with black and white with no green. Which is actually pretty huge. That's fantastic. So yeah, he he really wants that that land drop, the kitchen things, and the uh, lingering souls. And I think we drew into, and we're picking it up. Yeah. Just. I mean, when you're at five, you're dead on the board. Unfortunate. Not good. Not good. The last two games were pure craziness. The, and first, the two first two yeah, were sure. absurd. Uh, in the, sorry, I was just going to answer one of the questions. Please do. Uh, I think a Johnny's better in this deck um, because Nahiri's more for trying to ultimate, usually. I don't think Nahiri's necessarily bad, but uh, a Johnny being able to mess with lands and stuff can be pretty good. Yeah, and, and also... a hard time dealing with some of the bigger creatures as well, I think. And bo helixing your own swans feels pretty good. Yeah, I'm not mad about that. So, let's head back up to the booth. Uh, we've only got about eight minutes left, so if you want to see if there's maybe a game three, but otherwise... Uh, yeah, I'll go check real quick. We'll see what we can find for you. Stick around. Hello, and thank you for joining 312 people. I can't thank all of you enough for being a part of this. Or 319. That is so incredible. So if this is your first time, welcome. And I do want to ask you what I know. How did you find us? I know that many, many, many of you probably found us from the Twitch page. Which, I gotta say, it's only kind of recent that we've started being at the front, uh, or at the top of the Magic stream page. Like, this is still relatively new for us. I mean, I think it's just people haven't noticed us. And, um, but, uh, do we have no more? Uh, every game currently is in game three. Every match, I'm sorry, is uh, in game three. So okay. we will not be having any more games tonight, as far as I know. No more matches, but I am going to say quickly what our schedule is and let you know about Saturday. Plus, we'll be sticking around, answering some questions, doing all kinds of fun stuff. So stick around if you just want to have some fun and keep being entertained. I, uh, I'm ba I'm Bax. Or I'm, or I'm X or Lim X. I, whatever it is. But, uh, it is, yeah, someone found us from Reddit, that's awesome. Was it the Spikes uh, post that was on Monday? If so, I was pretty, uh, excellent. Oh, you've only been here for five minutes? We have, you're, you're a little late to the party, we had some craziness. Drib Ozyme, it's awesome having you. Thank you so much for joining, I apologize that you showed up right at the end, but we do do this stream four times a week. Wah. Plus special events. Yes, plus special events. Let's tell you about these things, because the one special event that you don't want to miss this Saturday, starting at noon, Pacific time, 10 hours and 33 minutes in the past, but on Saturday. So whatever time it is now, take off 10 hours and 33 <laughs> minutes, and then go to Saturday. I like how you just complicated it. <laughs> Sorry. Noon, Pacific time on that Saturday. Check it out. It's the Legacy Showdown. I can go for a full-on rant. It's going to be all kinds of fun. But it's going to be five rounds of Legacy action uh, in a Swiss pairings leading up into a top eight, which will lead into a finals, which will technically into a top four, which will lead into a finals. The winner will be walking away with a box of Eternal Masters. There will be a bunch of other fun little I'm prizes. I'm so stoked to win a box You're so stoked Eternal to Masters. win a box of Eternal Masters. That is if you do. We are Pacific time currently. What? It is currently 10.34 p.m. here in Snohomish, Washington at Geek Fortress. My name's TJ. And I'm Harry. Shameless plugs and <laughs> perfectly seamless. We do it every time. As a quick note, uh, yeah, thank you everybody for joining. And if you ever do see us on Reddit, look, keep an eye out for that uh, mm -hmm. post about the Legacy stream. Feel free to <clears> toss <throat> in some good words for us. I absolutely love it. Can I plug you... myself real quick? Absolutely, plug yourself. Uh, my Twitch channel's up top. Uh, I stream Kiki Cord on uh, Magic Online a couple times a week, so come check me out sometime. Those are eyes, by the way. But uh, definitely check it out. It's very worth it. He's a pretty solid Kiki Cord player. 
played my first competitive league yesterday. I went 4 1. Nice. Went 4 1 in a competitive league. He's been starting to stream a little bit more. So definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. And he's a pretty excellent person who uh, comes down to events with us. And, I try. And joins us in uh, the Fortnite shenanigans. Though he didn't do anything when he got to 500. Yeah, we got a, we got a good group here. Maybe yeah, we well, I, that was that was like that was like a late join to the Fortnite. So. That's true. I actually at least the streaming portion of it. Let me ask you this: uh, Now that you've done it once, you've done your first full stream. By the way, as always, feedback for this guy more than welcome. <clears throat> Ooh, our random viewer, by the way, Mr. Yakushi one two three four five. You are our featured viewer of the day. Thank you so much. It's awesome having you. Thanks for thanks for sticking with us and having some fun and doing all kinds of cool things. Big Daddy Baker, have a great night. But Mr. Kishi, it's always a blast having you. Now that you've done the stream once and, and beginning to end, you've got to meet some people. We'll, ooh, if people have questions for you, we can get to those in just a second. Yeah, yeah. Are you, um, are I don't want to toot my own horn, but I brought some pretty good games tonight. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like getting them on stream? Well, we, look at what we had out there. Like. That, that last round was a pretty amazing, and we had the Warped World matchup earlier and stuff, so we had some cool matchups overall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. And you yeah, did it was a lot of fun. Are you open to uh, coming back more often? Yeah. Excellent. Me and Ryan technically have a game three left. Oh, you do? Go a minute on. left on the clock. You want us on stream? Uh, <laughs> with a minute left? Technically. <laughs> you want to watch? Let's do it. Let's get another Ryan's match. Ryan's on Tron, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got another match. We, uh, a minute until time. Uh, they'll probably my question. They'll probably play through it uh, anyway. Am I single? I am. <laughs> That's the only question I had. <laughs> <laughs> so we have got Modern Zombardment going up against Ryan on Mono Blue <laughs> the minute, Tron. The minute on clock. Maybe they'll play it out anyway. Like even if they officially draw, they'll uh, they'll stick with it for us. They might something. as well. We like hanging out with our viewers. <laughs> I don't need to have sleep. I only have to wake up early for work tomorrow. So. Princess Marceline, it's awesome having you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's good to see you again. Let's head on down. Okay, so we're going to get a game three here. Modern Zombardment going up against Mono Blue Tron. Who do you think has the edge? I'm ga i got to give it to Tron. You got to give it to Tron? Yeah. You don't think Zombardment's fast enough? I don't think that Zombardment is fast enough, especially considering the amount of effects that can return things to Joe's hand. I'm going to be honest, I think it's probably going to gonna be a draw. Really? I love that the cat fact was a lion fact. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're the albino lion? <laughs> yeah, that like, made my day. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> bro, Akiva. Also, a fun note about Saturday and Saturday. 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 Be there. The, the noon legacy event is going to lead directly into Modern. It's going basically when the top eight fires, Modern is going to start. And we're going to stick with the top eight because that's what we'll be doing. But that means that we will then, as soon as the top eight finishes, be jumping straight into Modern. Yeah, uh, GP Columbus told us that they weren't going to be streaming their event, so we're like, you know what? We'll take the reins. Yeah, we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll put up something just as good. So when you're all thinking there, what am I going to watch for GP Columbus? Just come on down to the GP Snohomish on Twitch. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to be streaming for like 11 hours. I'm going to be playing for like 11 hours. <laughs> I'm for sure drafting after. I'm not going to be playing modern, but a lot of legacy. So it's going to be so much fun. I'm going to have to figure out the food situation and also how to feed my dog. I've, I've got someone set up for that. Your I dog's think. your co-caster. Ooh, Dumb. I love it. So a turn one faithless looting from Joe off of a blood crypt here. <laughs> Uh, the tail is oddly dark. I'm not sure what you're referencing there. Uh, hey, that's awesome to Max Kurgan. Thank you. Oh, the table is oddly dark. It's, that it's, is interesting. It's Maybe, getting later over here. It's possible that it's later, and that is one of the things is <coughs> we chose kind of our table based on which had the le least amount of glare, which means the least amount of lights overhead. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that uh, it's something that we can look into. It's possible that actually one of the fluorescent lights out there might have gone out. You can take a quick look if you want to. It's too much work. Okay, it's too much work to open a door. You know what would be beautiful? If, like, they for sure were playing, going to time, and he gets Greater Gargon on out and just beats him down. Yes. And, like, wins on turns. <laughs> I mean, he, ca he theoretically can. <clears throat> but uh, Princess Marceline, Green Red Tron, is awesome. Yeah, I, I, I actually, I know a lot of people dislike Tron. I like Tron. I like every modern deck. 
I kind of dislike Trump. I know. Well, every single one of my co-hosts seems to really dislike Tron. Personally, I'm all I mean, about cool I think things. part of that's bitterness from GPLA, where I was playing Black Green Tron, and I just kept getting all my counterspell slot Seas, and then Karns landed on me. Nice. <clears throat> so, the Gregor Gargadon down to seven. He just, does have a decent clock. He doesn't have much in his deck to deal with Greater Gargadon. Uh, a lot of, like, of bounce Cyclonic effects. Rift, but Repeal, you're, you're not paying for that anytime soon. Well, Even with Tron. I mean, with Tron, you get pretty close. It's a 9 drop, right? Greater Gargadon? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it's 10. Oh, man. Greater Gargadon is huge. I feel like it's 9 because there's that uh, the one card from original Ravnica that you could like search for it. We have had transmute for nine. It's a ten it drop. 10. We have had a in draw. this one show, in this one show, one show. Warp World, Greater Gargadon, and Blasphemous Act, all eight, nine, and ten. And lightning bolt. And lightning bolt. <laughs> uh, how do we track if a creature has any can? If it's anything done by a creature like a static effect, then it is done by basically memory. If it is done by a plus one plus one counter, we have counters for that. Uh, you desperately, you want to hear me do my best movie voiceover guy impression? I'm not really sure if I have a good one for you. So I'm, I'm not sure if I can really satisfy that. Why don't, why don't you guys give TJ a quote and he'll, uh, he'll do his best. All right. Like, in a world right. in which the spell skite stands readily upon the zombie infestation. Joe unleashes the horde. From his blood crypt, he has summoned the grave crawlers as well as their vampire overseer in the bloodgast. But just across the dark gray bar, a plan has been brewing for Ryan. I don't even want to comment. It's like, it's like, <laughs> too, it's like too good for me. Ryan, checking his legendary map, looks through and finds the key to his success. <laughs> I don't know, is that even any good? Yeah, I, w I was very, like, intrigued. <laughs> Got a little hotter in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so we get the mirror pool. Ryan going for the mirror pool, which he can copy creatures with, which is just so hilariously cool, and I need to do things <laughs> with my arms. I'm just so scared I'm going to get slapped in the face one of these times. No, I've really practiced, like, directionalizing it this oh, way. Oh, I'm sure you have. I just... Uh, to any... That's why I said on the side, I don't want to, like, mess up. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering, our sub button, we are working on getting a Twitch partnership, but we want to make sure that we do it right. Right now, we just have a follow button. You're more than welcome to hit that and join us in the future. And we are really looking at getting a, a sub button in the future. And uh, <laughs> look at that. We are heading... <laughs> that was a, that was a quick win. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to see a greater, gar gar greater Gargadon sacrifices just to win that way. <laughs> but I guess he had the spell scale. Greater Gargadon. The beast upon the sidelines. Never the first string player. But always willing to take one from the team. So yeah, it was nice to see uh, Blazing Shawl uh, banned in modern, but uh, the other sides of it still see him play over at Geek Fortress. I apologize for the shirt. Uh, to be honest, this is how I get to dress for work, and so that's just kind of what I've got. But if you'd like, I can start. Uh, I can start trying to bring in a replacement shirt. But uh, thank you. I do appreciate that feedback. All right, let's uh, let's go. Okay, so hello, we're back. That we got a little bit of extra magic. Someone's <coughs> saying, uh, Tron is the first match deck that you're building. Awesome. Tron's a really cool deck. Really nice for rewarding like knowledge about the deck in the mm -hmm. future, about making the right lanes, and uh, also just putting yourself in a position, because sometimes you have to play to the odds. I think it's a good starting deck, too, because you can kind of go different directions with it as well. Absolutely. Once you kind of have that Tron land base, the other things don't share as well, but it gives you like a starting point. Mm -hmm. And also, using a deck that interacts a lot with your opponents. And people say Tron doesn't interact. It does. I mean, when you're looking at Karn, Ugin, like, you have a lot of things that you have to keep in mind that you'll learn your opponent's decks that way. Yep. So, I think that that's it's a great like choice. board wipes, in a sense, but... Board wipes are also relevant, but just, you know, when you play down a Karn, knowing which one to minus, 
one, knowing like the mana basis of different decks and which colors will be most key if you're going to go for a land, mm. or which permanent uh, that they have is the one that's an actual threat to you. And there's a lot of time you can play yeah, multiple threats, so it's like, do I play Karn here, or do I play Ugin? Or do you go for the Worm Coil engine, because yeah. you have the egg. Yeah, it's oh, so, yeah. absolutely true. So, <coughs> I can definitely get behind that one. But uh, if anybody does have any questions for us, we're more than happy to answer them at this point. And I am absolutely thrilled that there are still 200 people here that... Yeah, I'm... Do you, we got, in just today's stream... This is this is fantastic. We got 47 new followers. How do you check these things? I can see where we were when we started, and oh. I can see where we are now. Alright. So we got 47 new followers, which... Awesome, guys. That is so amazing and the fact that like it, it's been continually growing is very exciting to me i don't want to say we need three more followers but we need three more followers <laughs> <laughs> uh man uh, and i will say um tron red green tron basically playing itself i disagree but not hugely i think what it is is that the deck has some lines that are very powerful and that'll take some it's similar to affinity in which playing the deck at a beginner level you will get some of the wins mm -hmm. but as you learn the deck fewer or I, i'm sorry as you learn the deck farther along then you start making more and more optimal plays. Yeah. And I I can agree that when you go turn three natural Tron, play a Karn, hit their land, next turn play a I mean, it always seems to happen to me, so I figure it happens. <coughs> Tron yeah. always has it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, There's the... one, two more. Thank you, James. That's James from Loading Ready Run. Loading Ready Run, You James. signed a tubal <laughs> for me at GPLA, and we were all wearing the same shirt. You may recognize us now. A special moment. We're having a lot of them on stream tonight. That's that's really cool. I'm thrilled by that. <laughs> so thank you. Unfortunately, we are out of matches for tonight, but it's awesome having you. And thank you for uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, and uh, red, white, uh, pyrohemia, Boros reckoner ended up taking victory tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is that not the coolest thing? Oh my goodness. I, I, I'm completely blown away by the fact that, one, I love that a brew was able to do that well. I, but I saw some beautiful things tonight. Um, is the Pyrohemia decklist available online? Uh, not at the moment. I'm, gonna, I'm going to basically bother Donovan until he gets me the list, add it to our tapped out account, and then I will post it on my, uh, on my Twitter, at RedBaronMTG. James, thank you so much. I'm glad that we were a little bit memorable. If you'll be in Portland, we'll see you there. But that's awesome. Thank you very much for the positive feedback. Yeah, thanks. You guys are the reason that we're able to keep doing this and have so much fun every night. Man, I'm I'm a fanboy about everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. But absolutely, you're you are 100 percent correct. Like, the only reason why we got a green screen and we bought an HD camera and then we got a uh, studio lighting system and then we got a better an HD camera for like over there and then we one step at a time like, but we're growing everything is just because the positive f support has been so so outrageously incredible that we're just trying to keep up with it because I kind of feel like we're the greater Gargadon we're just feeding off of their uh, <laughs> their lightning bolts and their follows and their happiness and we're and just on suspend until we hit Twitch yeah we're partnership just, we're getting closer and closer. Oh man, uh, I will likely never eat another tibble. Just, a, <laughs> just as a fun fact, um, Tron Beetle, it's great to never. see ya. But uh, yeah, I am. It's it's absolutely true that the reason why we do these things is because we're trying to make a good product for you. That's exactly it. Like, I, I honestly feel like we owe it, especially myself, since I'm just spending so much time here. But you give us so much of your time, and I really feel like it's my responsibility to give you the absolute best of ours. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think of what we could sac. Uh, we're sacrificing our sleep juice. Uh, I'm <laughs> sacrificing a lot of hours. <laughs> oh man! Ooh, and apparently Caleb like is doing. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> oh man! We're just gathering them so we can sacrifice. <laughs> No, we're just gathering them so that we can warp world and get, like... <laughs> yeah, just grow. <laughs> but, yeah, if you ever do want to check it out, I did eat a Tibble. It's really bad. It's probably the worst magic experience I've had in my life. Uh, Tibble did a complete I mean, dance to Maniac. My thing is, like, worst magic experience is still probably a pretty good experience, so... 
Yeah, it was a like it was such a good experience from the perspective of like we got to 500 follower or viewers at one time, and I was doing it. But I gotta say, if you watch that video, like if you can just look in my eyes and you can tell that that is probably among the more miserable that you will ever see footage of me. I haven't watched it. It's, 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 we're I have it across like 13 videos because I was doing it through uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna compile them all and just make a YouTube video, and then I'm gonna th think I'm gonna combine the YouTube video, combine Coleman's dance video, and then just combine the picture of Joe's playmat. Collage of greatness. And basically make a post that is just a collage of all those things. So I am so excited, and uh, if anybody has any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. Yeah, if you guys want to ask some uh, modern questions, I I feel like I have some modern knowledge, so I'm here tonight coming out over to have some fun. So yeah, I'd like to answer some questions before I head out. You, do you want to do six words or just regular questions? <laughs> if you want I'm to, sorry. put six Corey, words... Corey, the Scrub Swans guy, he has been texting me. He's been playing uh, Mur Eldrazi, Merfolk Eldrazi. Tell me more. He went 3-1 tonight, and he wants to know how good it is. Uh, it's amazing, first of all. It's slightly worse than... Uh, <laughs> it's it's slightly worse than uh, Bloodfish, which is <laughs> Merfolk with Lightning Bolt and Blood Moon. But, um... Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, but, uh... I'd have to. S I would say I would say Murdrazi is probably the best deck I've never played. <laughs> <laughs> send me a list, or get a list to me. If I, if, get a list to him, and he can send it to me. But uh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, though. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. So, like, what what Eldrazi are you looking at? I think he has like, like Sky Thought Seers and stuff. So, I'm oh, just know. casting him off of like. Corey, what do you have? Because yeah. you have the Cavern of Souls and the. Uh... Yeah, he plays like Eldrazi Temple and then he just still has Master of Waves and stuff. <laughs> he runs Eldrazi Temple and Merfolk? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Apparently, he went 3 1 tonight with it. <laughs> oh, man. That. I don't remember the exact list. I haven't played against him in a while. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> um, so, I will say there is a whole lot of variety in a lot of decks. And As we saw tonight. I will say this. Decks have different yeah. varying levels there of skill ceilings and skill floors. That's true. Burn has a has a low skill floor. You like to do decently well with the deck, you don't need to practice it a ton. Yeah, it's more of a sequencing thing than anything else. Yeah, but every single deck requires skill. Yep. In in one way or another. And it's just sometimes it's your your deck has the right cards. But almost every single time, it has to do with you making the decisions in mulligans and deck building, showing up to the table to put yourself into the position in which it looks easy. Yeah. Like, that, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, even the aggro decks like Affinity and Fect, uh, they both have a lot of different lines of plays and when you want to play certain things, so. Right. And every time that you put yourself in a position where it's like, well, they have one top deck that they can get me, that is likely the result of them making plays with the understanding that... Except for Burn, every top deck is a Burn's <laughs> But honestly, you make... I no, When I I'm playing Burn, I make a lot of plays where it's, do I go for the risky one that might pay off, or do I put it into a position in which, yes, I'm putting myself, mm -hmm. but I know that I have uh, nine Lightning Bolt effects left yeah, in the deck. I won multiple games at one life against Burn at GPLA. So. Yeah. You do the math, and you say, I've got nine of these left. That's the, my best odds of winning. I'm going to put them down to three, get empty-handed to do it by, mm -hmm. by removing their creature and swinging in for the four damage as opposed to it. Yep. It's it's about making the decisions that put you in the position to have an easy top deck. Yep. And so that... Right. We've got a lot of questions coming up now. What do you think of Coco decks? Answer quick. Oh, wait. What card would you unban in Modern? I would not ban on any at the moment. That's Maybe. actually the correct answer. Modern is probably the most healthy it's ever been currently. Um, if anything. I think it needs to shake up. Uh, not shake up more, but we need to stabilize before we think about unbanning anything at this point, I think. If anything, like if I'm required, green artifact land, because it wouldn't do anything. Like, it might do something, but I think it's the one that's the safest. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of a Coco deck that uses the Spike Feeder Archangel of Thune combo as a backup? I like it a lot. Coleman have I actually talked about that recently, and with the yeah. amount of Graft Diggers cages that were floating around, we actually put it into his main board for a bit. Yeah, I like it too. Um, I'm not necessarily a main board advocate for it, but uh, I haven't played it enough to really say one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Choosing to mole is a big choice for Adnausium? Absolutely true. Uh... Affinity and Effect have a lot of play to them. Burn and Try are eh. I'd, I'd say it's he's not wrong. It, it has less play to him, but you get, we all have you get more free wins, but every modern deck's really difficult. I would say that there's a reason why Patrick Sullivan continually does well with uh, Legacy Burn when other people don't. 
Yeah, he actually. Uh, have you seen that uh, highlight where he like baits him? Oh, oh yeah. That oh, that is that is the red deck Bible. <laughs> yeah. Figured so, you had, but. Oh yeah. So um, let's see here. Love hate deck more than any. Oh, absolutely. Tron is. Tron is very. Yeah. Very love hate. You either like big stuff or you, you go over the top of people playing other decks and they're not happy about it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man, there were actually surprisingly few questions that I, I know, thought there. I just saw lots of text, and I just Assumed. wasn't reading them, yeah. It's a lot of conversation about it. And everybody has their play preference. I will say that it's a lot more difficult for me, like, personally, mm -hmm. to play something like a, a combo deck, which I'm not particularly familiar with, mm -hmm. than it is for other people to play aggro decks, which is something that I am I am intimately familiar with. Yeah. Like, the, the mentality of an aggro deck is just something that is, I'm, I'm adept at it. But you hand me a combo deck, sometimes I'm not a, as... It takes me a lot more time and practice to get into that mentality of looking. What are my outs that two turns down the line? Based on like, it's just a it's a slightly different mentality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's another thing that can play a part into a we we all have our preferences. Like you said, I bet playing a mid range value deck for you. Yeah, I pretty much always play very interactive decks. So either Kiki Court or some sort of control. So mm -hmm. it's just preferences. <coughs> uh, six words: local sports team or not. They're my number two. Go Steelers. I want Seattle to have a hockey team. <laughs> I, don't know I want worse. Seattle to have hockey. Okay, I'll take it. You can shorten it to that. I was just sad. I didn't want to think about it. <laughs> it's, they're thinking about doing it. Uh, thoughts on Geist of St. Traft? Uh, the card is good. It's less good in modern because there are creatures. There are more creatures. And while the 4-4 Angel is incredible, uh, and the Hexproof keeps it hard from being removed... There's a lot of creatures that are bigger than 2-2 two, two that you're going to run it into. There's a lot of good decks that have creatures right now, too, like Abzan Company and Jundra, both Tier 1. Mm -hmm. um, you also have Tron, which can still go over the top of it with Ugin and stuff. Um, and then I don't know if it's necessarily better than having something quick like Infect yeah. or Burn. So. And actually, one thing that I liked about the card for a bit is that when people were starting to play a lot more with Retreat to Coral Home, mm -hmm. I really liked the decks that utilized Geist of St. Traft and Retreat to Coral Home. I do like that, too. Because what they were doing was tapping down their opponent's creatures to get in the swings for six. Just moved up to tier two, actually. Um, retreat deck. Oh, yeah. So I actually really enjoy that one to where they're able to use that Retreat to Coral Home, and maybe if they have the Knight of the... Uh, reliquary in there as yeah. an additional combo, but if you just have the retreat and a guy of same draft, you're able to get some value there, tapping down their relevant cards that would actually trade with you. Yeah, and honestly, the right answer is just play decks that you love. If you learn your deck well enough, anything can win. Like we had Merfolk and uh, Ad Nauseam, which aren't necessarily tier one decks at all points. Like they they creep up there every once in a while, but they won the last two GPs. So yeah, so, <clears throat> so it's a wide open format right now. Mm hmm. Um, let's see here. What else? Built in effect because you thought it would be an easy way to get into the format, but the deck is hard, a lot of lines. Yes! Infect is definitely one of those decks that takes a lot of practice because it's all about, like, finding the best way to find a protected way and when to take the risk. That's it's a, a huge It's one of the few, few aggro decks, at least, that it's like, I have the win, do I go for it? Right? You don't, you can't just instantly go for the win every time because you might just get blown out. That and Affinity are both very similar. Yeah. To where, like, sometimes you'll sit there with the Artbound Ravager and you have the win on board. Yeah. Do you go for it when they have one open white mana? Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you got to read the opponent. Sometimes you say, so maybe you win, but maybe I do. So, I like those ones. And, and figure out the time to call that, being aware of what their deck list is and what the odds are and how well, they were playing. Yeah, that's, that's part of the reason why knowing your own deck and all the interactions and knowing other decks in the format is so huge in modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, Death Metal Master, playing uh, Jeskai Control with a thing in the ice. Actually, I kind of like that. I mean, it's no brain in a jar slash beck and call, but I'm not mad about it. I mean, <laughs> it's control. Oh, love it. Um, thoughts on reprints only entering modern through standard? Would reprints in a more supplemental products other than modern masters uh, be, let's see, help or be more problem? I think it's really iffy, but that's actually a really good question, actually. Um, because... I think he's talking about reprints that are... Already not, modern. Uh, I was taking it as not in modern, saying can go through standard or through supplemental. Like, I, th I don't know. I guess you could take it either way. Oh, no, you're absolutely <coughs> right. In this case, I completely agree with them only entering through standard. Um, like, 100%. 
I'm think... on the fence. There's definitely some cards that are too strong for standard that could be fun to pour into modern mm -hmm. that are maybe not legacy staples, but cards that you possibly see in legacy or that are just older. But I build think around. when you cross that line, you really risk becoming legacy light. And like, at what point do you? Because if you're allowing everything, every supplemental set. Well, now no, we have to be they might have to... like a, a separate supplemental set that just adds to modern but skips over standard. That feels more confusing to me actually than the current system. Yeah, well, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. that, but there's definitely cards where it's like, oh, too strong for standard or whatever, or don't fit in. Like they might have a uh, keyword of certain types, mm -hmm. and they could see modern play. But I agree, but I'd rather see them kind of just put it in at a at a careful situation because every mm -hmm. card that we currently have. And no, I think, through standard. I think, yeah, and I, I think that's fine too. And I like the idea of maybe having sta like modern be a format that is built up of the previous standard eras, because mm -hmm. a lot of our top decks are ones that dominated a particular standard. Or extended. Or extended. Oh uh, yeah. So it's definitely um, definitely something that I am currently in completely in favor of them coming in through standard. I'd like to see counterspell though. I don't want counterspell or some, some, at all. Not, not exactly no. counterspell, but a better counterspell. Prohibit, I think, might be interesting. It's just, it's awkward where it's like all the counterspells are like bad late game, like that you drop once. I think something like an Inquisition of Kozilek equivalent. Uh, and I think that Prohibit might be yeah. a, a pretty close one there. But nonetheless, uh, I if they start designing cards for modern, I think that that's a bad road to take. Because that's how we get things like True Name Nemesis and how we like... Yeah. We've gotten a lot of cards that were basically designed for Legacy that have definitely had an impact on there and not always in the best way. Yeah, and I don't know. I think right now the uh, the format's pretty healthy, so I wouldn't want to change anything anyways. That's true. Um, so. I think if they printed UU counter-target non-creature spell, it would be pretty bad because we already have Negate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's <laughs> David. Uh, <laughs> David once had a moment on stream in which he actually proposed that very seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. <clears throat> Do you think the new Liliana or new Tamiya will be better? Easy. I think the new Tybalt will be the best. How about you? <laughs> I don't even follow standard. I didn't even know Liliana and Tamiya were going until just now. Uh, it's not confirmed. Okay. What um, type of cards do you want to see from the next set? Better burn? Graveyard removal? Counter spells? Etc.? Better burn. Uh, I, I would get into standard if there's better burn. Also a Tybalt. Yeah, I kind of already said I'd like to see a better counter spell. What that is exactly is hard to say, but, um... Yeah, something something slightly more powerful. One card I could see reprinted for each <coughs> format. Uh, for Legacy, I guess the Dual Lands, even though I'm kind of... I understand the reserved list, but yeah. if I'm going to say something. Uh, for I think the, the big one besides Dual Lands was like uh, the Port. Oh, Port, you're right. And uh, Imperial Recruiter. Yeah, and Flesh would have been nice too. And then for Modern, I'm going to go with Innocent Blood. For cards that come into modern, that are a reprint for modern, I guess. Otherwise, I go damnation. Innocent blood's not in modern. Right it now, is not right? currently. I'm not sure if they meant like into the format or okay. just for the <clears throat> format. But uh, I want to say damnation, but I had a bunch from when I used to play, so I'm not like too unhappy about it. And for standard, Tybalt or lightning bolt. Give me lightning bolt, sure. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, a very budget modern obs on allies and gone 2 2 two times we've gone in the tournament. What do you think is better, Coco or Aether Vial as an upgrade option? Probably. depend. It depends on your curve. Real, but uh, I would say Collected Company generally. I would say that early on you'd probably want to go with Collected Company if you're just going for the aggro game plan. I said. I don't know. One, it's a, it's, or four Collected it's Companies is like one Aether Vial, right, in terms of cost? Especially like price wise. Price, price. So you could always try it out. I don't know. <clears throat> Hard to say. It depends on the build slightly. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else have we got? Days in modern? Bad idea. I, I, days in modern would be way too good. Yeah. Free counters are extremely powerful. Suspect. I don't know. There's, I, I see like arguments for free counter spells sometimes, but I think you'd have to be very, very careful with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. We saw how mental misstep kind of broke and I don't know if, I don't think force of will is right for modern kind of thing right so yeah I think days is like probably one of the lower uh, power level um, free counter spells you could bring in something like that but it might still be too powerful I don't know mm -hmm. for a counter spell being too good in modern it's because you can ca cast it every single turn too no matter what mm -hmm. without having to make any kind of conditional uh, accommodations for the deck and then in the late game it's just as good 
And I think that if you're on the plane of control deck, being able to always sit there on turn two and go for a counter. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. Someone had on Reddit once, they had a good counter spell alternative. It was like counter spell, but it was like it cost like mm -hmm. X amount more or something if certain conditions weren't met. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's what they're going to have to do either way is a counter spell with conditions on it. And there's also not wasteland in modern to punish double blue. Like, double blue is probably more attainable in modern than it is in legacy. Because yeah. the game will go later, and you don't have Wasteland taking it down. Mm -hmm. So, I think that that's another notable thing. Um, let's see, if they announced that Dual Lens could always be proxied and enforced it, uh, would that not affect the price of the cards? I, it would likely... It I would, mean, It would drop it, but then that kind of defeats the purpose of having the cards in the first place, the, the real ones. And they'll likely never do it. <coughs> uh, aside from Tibble, what's my favorite Planeswalker in Modern? Uh, I mean... Realistically, a Lilian of the Veil. It's definitely the most powerful. It's. I'd probably. It's I to want to name. I want to say Koth, but Lilian is. I like playing with the Lily. Lily, she's really good. I like. Uh, I like a Johnny a lot. A Johnny is very cool. Not the most powerful, but still, still strong enough to see some play. Endless gamers. Uh, do you see Obs on Company returning in the meta? Absolutely. It's still tier one. It's still sure. very, very good. It got hit a lot because people were prepared for it, and they were also accommodating for Nahiri by going for a lot of graphics. Yeah, I think stage. it only dropped 0.4% in the meta game. I don't know. I follow. It, I go through Modern Nexus, and they do pretty good breakdowns. So. It lost a good day two showing though for a while. Yeah, like, I I think Tron is a lot stronger than people expected, which was part of the problem. Yes. As well. So, I have to go with that. Oh, Chandra Flamecaller. How could I forget? I'm still getting used to her because I'm here in Blue Moon right now. Mm -hmm. But Chandra Flamecaller is another really fun one for me. I like yeah, that a lot. We're actually seeing a lot more Planeswalkers than we were before. Yeah, and I think that's because they're... I mean, one... We got Nahiri added and... The uh, format is slowing down a bit. Tron wants to, still. Like, the format, it's still a particularly... It's kind of a fast format, but it's slowing down decently. Mm -hmm. And also, just the Planeswalkers that they're making are good, but not clearly busted. Like... They, yeah. they fit, right? They, they just fit. Nahiri just provided the things that Jeskai Control is looking for. A way to filter into the conditional answers. And he's playing Kiki Core for the same reason, too. Exactly. A way to remove Blood Moons or other just problem things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a way to con. take advantage of when you stabilize the board. Yeah. In a relatively fast wind con at that. Yep. So, I think it is probably about time for us to uh, call it past my bedtime. The fact that 155 people are still in here talking about us is so cool. Ooh, and we got someone. You made it to day two as Tron? Awesome, Gottlieb guy. Good job. That's super cool. Were you at LA? And if so... It says, yep, next down. It says GPLA. Nice. I, um... I made it there with, uh, Burn. Yep. So... Um, I didn't make it there. I mean, no. I was there, but I didn't make it. But thank you, everybody, for sticking around. What we're going to do is we're going to call it a night, but we're going to host you over to Caleb Durwood. Durwood? Durwood. Caleb D. Magic. D. Ma D. M. T. G. But uh, go ahead and enjoy that show. It'll be a lot of fun. And if you get the opportunity, let them know that we sent you. Yeah. I don't know. Is that a thing? Yeah. Spread that magic love, guys. Spread it. Whenever I play against other streamers online, I always go follow them. So. And and you are 100% the greatest, like, chat, the greatest just followers that there are as far as friendliness. Sexiest, at least. Oh, absolutely. I don't, we, can, I don't know if we can say that that's true, <laughs> but I went there. But if we can, uh, if we can spread, it, spread that kind of positivity to other streams, uh, then I think that that's a good thing. A Goblin Guide piloting a Tron deck and not burn? Yeah, slowly crashing at the worst GP. He had the absolute worst GP experience, but it got, he got it back at the end. Oh, he got the, he had the, the whole deck? The deck was returned on oh, Sunday night. Nice. It was turned in. Can I trade my Horizon Canby for a different <laughs> one? What my old Horizon Canby? <laughs> so, uh, That's awesome, though. I didn't, I didn't know that happened. I didn't if know you, got it back. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit that follow button. Also, just follow at Red Baron MTG. You'll know when we're streaming. And follow this guy, twitch.tv slash I underscore albino underscore lion underscore I. Yep, for some uh, Kiki Cord modern action. It's all kinds of fun. So we're going to host you over to Caleb and have some fun. It's been a pleasure, and be sure to check us out on Friday. We are still doing Legacy that day, even though we'll be doing Legacy the next day. Because clearly, I don't need a life. <laughs> we appreciate you guys joining us tonight. So, from Geek Fortress in Snohomish, Washington, this has been Modern. My name is TJ. Harry. Uh, better, I was, I was going, I was sometimes known as the Albino Lion. Yep, sometimes known as Nathan. And uh, whether it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, we hope it's a good one. We'll see you all next time.